interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. Most radio news sounds like this. An Oak Park woman goes before a judge. Her crime, growing vegetables in her yard. But on the Howard Stern Show, the news sounds like this. This doctor has found a way to lengthen the penis. So all these guys are rushing to Dr. Long, the guy's name. Dr. Long. Okay, come on, let's go. That's not a real story. It is, too. When I throw up a topic in the news... I imagine that there's some heat around it and that it will spark a conversation. She knew the right stories to get me going, you know. She knew how to hit my button. <laughs> this is a beauty. <laughs> yeah, this, this is a multifaceted beauty. Endless opportunities to goof. <laughs> That's the fun thing about Robin's News. You never know what she's going to say. You don't know what she's going to talk about. But that is also the fun part, too, to where you can just be creative, off the cuff. It's just kind of like, wow, let's see... What's going to happen today? This week, it's all the news that's fit to goof on. Look for my penis. It could be worth $80 million. That's $20 million an inch. It's a look back at the wildest. Somehow soon he enjoys my old Jewish penis. <laughs> Weirdest. An estimated 200,000 Taiwanese are drinking their own urine daily to cure disease, improve health, and... Uh, achieve longevity. I occasionally have a uh, duty sandwich, but uh, <laughs> never have I drunk my own urine. Most outrageous news stories in Stern Show history. I repeat myself. <laughs> <"Look on now." laughs> and that's what's happening. A Stern Show news retrospective. That sometimes is when I think the show is at its best. Starts now on Howard 100, Howard 101, and SiriusXM.com. Red is joining us for the news. Red, how are you? Good to see you. Okay. You all right? You want to know something? Yeah. Everybody sucks. <laughs> I know everyone sucks. I've said I that mean, a many I'll times. I'll tell you why when I get a chance. All right. <laughs> hey, how do you feel? I'm kind of curious. Red is an old friend of the show. How do you feel about the O.J. Simpson case? I've been asking everyone this. He's a poor bastard. You feel sorry for him? You bet your ass I do. Why? He's one You're... sorry son of a bitch. You know, a lot of feel people... damn bad for him. Well, how so? Here's a fella colored fella who come up from nothing right pulled himself up by his bootstraps yeah and we all know how freaking hard that is for the coloreds <laughs> oh, he, go on. he learned how to make it in the white man's world so he excels in football and he plays for what buffalo yeah he makes a name for himself gets a lot of tv deals and some movies and some money and he beats the odds and now look at him it's all over why why because he married the wrong broad <laughs> Cherchez la femme. No, tell me, tell me, tell me what. Do you really feel because a lot of people you feel bad for You think it's that OJ. woman's fault that OJ's in trouble? If you shut your fester and pie hole, I'll oh, tell boy. you. <laughs> you. Shut up for a minute, and I'll tell you. All right, go. Let ahead. the guy talk. I'm trying. He, he doesn't relate well to women. Let me talk uh, to him. Oh, Just, I told her to shut her up, and she don't right listen so. either. <laughs> now tell me why you don't like. He give her everything. Right. He took all that money he made, that hard-earned money he gave her. See, what? now a lot of guys feel this way. Go ahead. He gave her a $2 million settlement. $2 million settlement. He gave her the Ferrari. Right. The hard-working man. Right. He didn't have to give her nothing. Right. He gave her over that. He tried to make up with her, too. He tried to get with her. Right. Get back with her, you know what I mean? Yes. He was in that, that uh, the kids were in a play. Yeah. Kids were in a play. Yeah. That's your the night right. of the murder, the kids were in a play. In a recital. And, and you know what the rat and rat bitch did? She rejected him. <laughs> she turned her back on him. Yeah, that's wrong. She's so it drove him crazy? He's no good. I would, he, we're talking about the man. So you Everybody's been... worried about the poor dead people that died. <laughs> what about the guy who's alive? What about the man? Right. Just Wait a, a minute. You... A man. Shut your... Shut I up. wanted to ask you a question. Do you I don't think get into is... beating women myself. I okay. never, I never right. did. Battered women who... I don't know what goes on in them houses. You never know. But you got to know... You got to see the man's side. The I'm man. just asking, is it justifiable homicide to it's you? It's about passion, you jerk off. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you see another guy driving your Ferrari that you paid for. The O.J. Barton paid for that bitch. And you know, no wonder he, the poor bastard snapped. Right. Yeah, you, see, you feel bad. Well, let me say something. You feel bad for the woman who died, and you feel bad for the man who died, but you're saying you see O.J. I don't OJ feel bad it. for some good-looking son-of-a-bitch waiter that, that moves in and makes no, whoopee come with, on, come with on. my you guys, woman you guys, no, that no, no. I bought and paid for. They never said that the guy made love to the woman. See, he might not have... Had any relationship? No, with her you at all. feel bad. You feel bad for the people who died, but it's just that you say that OJ. How are you putting words in his mouth? Because what? I know he what? does. Shut up, both of you. 
One stubborn headed broad wrecks everything for the poor darky. No. And he Let tried so him. damn hard. He didn't look at now he's got less. Red's a little confused. He's got less Wait than a bit. zero. So what is your what <laughs> did he get? Less than zero. Cherche la femme. So should he be let go? Let him go. Oh. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> he can be rehabilitated. <laughs> he's much more what you call evolved than his constituency. You know, he he had <laughs> Uh, television and movies, so he proved that he, he's got half a brain. He can be he can be all right for himself. All right, a fan of the juice, and he feels that maybe juice could be rehabilitated. Everybody in this country sucks. They're gonna convict him and crucify him for being a man. <laughs> being a man. You know, I this is the first supporter of OJ that a we talked to. I, I saw Talk Maury, to me, I'll convince you. I saw Mar Maury Povich the other day. Three people were on there saying they they feel the same way. I'm is telling that right? you. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's a big uh, groundswell for OJ. <laughs> OJ paid for those phony implants, those breasts of hers. Yeah. And she takes them and flaps them in another man's face. Whoa. That was wrong. <laughs> wrong. <laughs> a Ferrari. And she couldn't hop in a sack. <laughs> <laughs> Well, she couldn't hop in the sack with him a few more times. <laughs> <laughs> Damn women. You know what she is? I'm going to say it in this no, shot. No, 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 I'm going to turn up. No, no, no. I'm going to turn up your mic. What was he going to say? No, oh, come on. She's a vagina. Ah, oh, no, no. You hate women. That's your She's problem. She's a vagunt. All right. I don't know what he's talking That's French. Vagunt. <laughs> No, you hate all I women. Word, you, I... you feel bad for anyone who's killed, I'm sure. True? I do, yeah. yes. Yes. Even this woman. Of course. Yes. You're just saying you understand guys snapping. I understand guys snapping. All right. That's just what I want to say. Kill so you I wouldn't kill had, it. Well, maybe I killed a couple guys at my bar. <laughs> but that's because they got in my way. But uh, rods, I wouldn't. I don't beat nobody. All right. Thank you. So you wouldn't have OJ spend any time in jail? No. At least give him a pillow. Give him a pillow, right. See, they that, won't give him the pillow in jail. You're that, against That bitch with the gavel don't, she wants to be cruel to him because she <laughs> thinks that, that he's, uh, she went, uh, he get back trouble. <laughs> okay. That's what he needs a pillow for. Right, O.J. wants a pillow. They won't give it to him. The they judge won't give, won't it, give it, to it to him. That's, that's cruel and inhuman. The sheriff. They're going to treat him like an animal now. Right. All right, so you're an O.J. supporter. That's right. You understand yeah. that he snapped because it's all his money and all this thing, and it, it maybe it, it maybe it caused him to go a little daffy. They're gonna take him down. And you feel he could be rehabilitated? I feel he could. So you do believe he committed the murders? It's not that you think he's been framed. I don't know what he did. Let him out. <laughs> Let him out. He's a good ball player. He could go back and entertain us. So on Friday night, you were rooting for him to get away from the cops. It's your ass, I. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Red. It's your ass. Oh, red, my. red. He puts right. a roof over her head. Yeah. He, he puts food in her mouth, and she closes her legs. Thanks! <laughs> Thanks! <laughs> Thanks! Like that. Thanks. That's what it sounds All right, like to right. OJ. All right, listen, Red is entitled to his opinion. It's America. As, 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 as horrible as his opinion is. Oh, who said it was horrible? OJ, I guess, deserves some support. He made Red happy. Well, Red, I'll tell you one thing. If OJ does get off, and it looks, it looks like he won't, but if he gets off, I'm sure he's going to want to reward you for your support. I hope so. Yeah. I hope he's listening to this program. In prison. This, this program in prison. I don't think he has a radio. He said, won't give him a radio either. <laughs> OJ is a normal man with normal feelings. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a sex drive and a few bucks. Big deal, he goes off a bit. <laughs> well, Big deal. He you... should never have been arrested. She was blackmailing him. With that booty. Oh. <laughs> booty. You're booty an old time. Blackmail. That booty blackmail. That <laughs> makes every man nuts. Booty and, juice. And, and you know it, and I know it. Well, that's true. <laughs> Thank you, Red. Hi. We're here at the O.J. Simpson hearings. And look, there's O.J. and his lawyer. O.J., tell us, what do you remember about the day that Nicole was killed? <laughs> was she when you first saw her? Well, she was just 70. How do you feel about people calling you a cold-blooded murderer? It ain't me. It ain't me. Well, we have a witness who overheard you while you were outside of Nicole's condo. Sir, what did you hear O.J. say? We have another witness from O.J.'s teenage years. What rumor did you hear about O.J.'s first date when he was in high school? That certainly is a lie. O.J., how did you talk to Nicole the last time you saw her? You make me want to get up in a scream. 
Maxwell's. Tell us, OJ, what's your favorite record? Bang, bang, Maxwell Silver Hammer made sure that she was dead. Is it true that the huge breasted Nicole made you mental? Girl, you really got it now. I heard you're so sad that you've lost your biggest commercial, Hertz. Why are you upset? Hey, there's Al Cowlings. Hey, AC, you were the man who helped OJ escape. What did OJ say to you during that police chase? OJ, it said that you wanted to talk to your mother. Just what did you want to say to her? Now, O.J., you must be confused, because your lawyer says you're innocent. Let's talk to an L.A. policeman. Officer, what were you thinking while chasing O.J.? There's a killer on the road. His brain is swerving like a joke. I see. O.J., what was the last thing your wife said to you? I know you're trying to get rid of me. O.J., tell us, if you get a chance for freedom, what's the first thing that you're going to do? You're always an up guy, OJ. Until next time, ta ta. <laughs> All right, ta ta to you. That's uh, Dickie Goodman Jr. <laughs> or something like that. Well, there you go. Hmm. A lot of OJ stuff there, Robin. I guess you have more in the news. Where's your. Oh. Here's your mic. I didn't have your mic on. Oh, I'm talking to myself here? You're yeah, like O.J. <laughs> Demonstrating a point. Speaking of O.J. cell, did you see yesterday they had it all over the news? Hmm. It's a tiny little cot. I like the stainless steel sink. I thought that yeah, was kind of nice. Yeah, stainless steel sink and toilet. Yeah. And they're even, you know, they showed you a picture of the cell with the sheet on the bed. <laughs> O.J.'s has no sheet. Right, so no he won't hang sheet. himself. Yes. Why, why they're on a suicide, no sheet. <laughs> you, know, you know, why they're on a suicide watch with this guy is beyond me. I mean, if he was going to commit suicide, he would have done it in the car with a gun. How's he going to kill himself? I'm, I'm sitting there looking at this. Out. How's he going to kill himself? He couldn't do it the easy way with yeah. the gun in his hand. Now he's going to be weaving sheets together. He's not doing anything. <laughs> All that stuff. I said, well, he could maybe drown himself in that stainless steel toilet. <laughs> do they put water in those toilets? I don't know. Or is it one of those, like, porto oh, sands? that would be horrible. <laughs> Drown himself in the blue water. Oh. Someone told me he tried to stab himself with his toenails, but that didn't work. <laughs> He's growing them out to make the yeah. weapons. Although, although he could always bang his head against that sink. Oh, there you go. Until he knocks himself out. And did you see the list of the foods they serve? Yeah. You know, it's not, uh, O.J. had a chef full time at his house. It's got to be a big, he's got to be saying to himself, what the hell did I do? And the funniest thing is, he's going to end up with, uh, of course, he's going to end up with life in jail, I think, or... They haven't said whether they're going for the death penalty or not, but... Yeah. I doubt it. But, I mean, the guy's got to be sitting there going, what was I doing? <laughs> I mean, I had all the women I wanted, all the money I wanted, all the fame I wanted, all the free time I wanted to play golf. One I, rash move. And even that cool stuff, like, you know, every once in a while I get a movie. He's got, he has a movie uh, coming. He would have had a movie coming out on this Navy yeah, SEALs. Yeah, now they don't know what to do with it. Yeah. I know what to do with it. I'd show it. <laughs> I think it'd be big. Now they've upped the total of people watching him on Friday night to $95 million. Everyone says that it would be in poor taste to show the Navy SEALs movie. And I'm like, well, why? He was acting. Yeah. But they do think that he probably learned how to kill his wife while yeah. working on that movie. Maybe movies do lead to violence. Working on them, I mean. Not watching them. Well, they always say, just because I played a murderer in a film doesn't make me a murderer, does it? Might. <laughs> but here's a guy who had all the women he wanted. He had all the money, all the free time. You could say this guy had it easier than Fred, mm -hmm. our own Fred Norris from Mars. Very few people do, but That's I right. think O.J. did. O.J. had it easier than Fred. Name one other guy who had it easier than Fred. He seemed to like to travel, and he got to travel a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Navy SEAL. It's a great role. And that's a great thing, you know, pick up girls. Hey, I'm on the set of a movie. Come on. Sure, I mean, the guy had it made. Me work. Had it made. And now he's sitting in a, a little tiny room eating jail food. And a guard is sitting outside and opens that little sh door. Hey, OJ. Every 15 minutes and just looks at him, doesn't even speak to him. Goofing on him. Yeah. And then he had that judge sitting there judging him. And like, Wouldn't yeah, give him a pillow. Yeah. I'm not going to give OJ Simpson a pillow. I will take the pillow under consideration. 
Yeah, that was great. I will take the pillow. <laughs> we ought to take that sound bite and play it. Anytime you're thinking of doing something illegal, just listen to that tape. You know they have motivational tapes? This would be a great inspirational tape. I have to consider giving O.J. the pillow, but I will not consider it at this time. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to go back into my chambers and think about that one. Yeah. And she looks like a load of laughs, that judge. Oh, got a good sense of humor, I bet. Yeah. What's with that little gray streak in her in her black hair? Well, you know, judges oftentimes do everything to make themselves unattractive. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah, like Sybil Shepard. But judges, in general, yeah. they, they wear the worst glasses. Yeah. They have the worst haircuts. They do that on purpose. They don't want to seem attractive to the uh, to the criminals. I guess. Maybe that's it. The reason I say Sybil Shepard, it's really funny. When she was young and beautiful, mm -hmm. she used to always downplay her looks, and she wanted everyone to take her seriously so she would never be beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I saw her in Entertainment Tonight last night. She's like 47 years old and looking really haggard. And I'm going, she got her wish. She's ugly. <laughs> now she doesn't have to downplay anything. Yeah, now, now, you, now she has to go around trying to look gl glamorous. <laughs> <laughs> it's really weird that way. Well, you get your wish eventually. Be careful what you wish for. Is I wish I'd say. get good looking. <laughs> Maybe that'll happen. Yeah. Um, and how much, how crazy is it? And this must drive OJ nuts. Because when you take a, a lady beater and the lady on the bench, it's a woman, is sitting there telling you you can't have a pillow. Because you know he'd like to go over and smack her right in the head. Oh, yeah, he'd like to really rough her up, I'll bet. Oh. Hey, Judge, what's the problem? <laughs> I'm talking about a freaking pillow. It's neat that it's a woman. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure they thought that out. Yeah, that's Who cool. Who we give OJ? It's good for the movie. A black woman. <laughs> Red, this has got to be driving you crazy because I know you're an OJ supporter. She won't even give him a pillow. No. That's that's just terrible. All right. It pisses me off. You love OJ. take a pillow and stuff it right down her throat, right up there on the bench. I'd come right over the bar. A typical broad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> typical she broad. she punish him. A man. Lotto, He's you, the man. Let me understand your point. You think women now, the tides have turned. In other words, the tables have turned. Women now control men too much? Free the juice. <laughs> women control men. Everything is different. All in the, your corporate structure. Yeah. It's, it used to be all men. Right. Now, women knocked him right out of the box. <laughs> <laughs> they, ought to, they ought to dig up his ex-wife and let him stab her 50 times more. Oh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> well, I don't think too many people share your opinion. A woman judge. What the hell's going on in this country? <laughs> what the hell? Will somebody tell me? Who ever heard of such a thing? Whoever. I never. <laughs> <laughs> You're an old guy. Red's a good friend of mine. He's the only old friend I have. Oh, I tell you the you truth certainly about know what I'm thinking, thinking about. What? I tell you the truth, though. Right. What I'm thinking. Well, you do. You One thing about you, you're honest. Even though it's it's not politically correct, you're honest about it how you It doesn't bother you that you're flying in the face of everyone else. Bring it. Now, he feels what Juice did was justifiable based on the fact that he gave her all that money in Ferrari. She should have slept with him and, and just, you know. There is she should have never... not rejected him because then he wouldn't have gone off like that. There's yeah, never we any... all do that. I have a couple beers, I get a little crazy. Yeah? You beat your wife? And judge O.J., uh, next there'll be female congressmen. <laughs> there are. What? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know there were people. There are even women in the Senate. Hey, Red, did you feel bad when the judge says, I, I am not going to consider OJ's pillow right now? Did that drive you crazy? It was a slap in his poor black face. <laughs> <laughs> a big slap in his face. That was an orthopedic pillow. Oh, wait a minute. He I might gotta... need that. How does she know what he needs and what he don't need? But She's a Red. woman. She don't understand a man. Oh, I, you like, can't even talk to him. I no. like to smother her with that pillow. <laughs> what about the beatings? Take that gavel and smack her in the head. Oh, <laughs> what about the beatings, Red? It sounds like he beat his wife all the time. You know, that they were ongoing, that the police... Well, you know what Red says. I know house. you're going to laugh at this. What? Red says that... Maybe it, she didn't listen. Oh, stop <laughs> it. I know you're going to take... You're going to laugh. No, Red has said to me off the air that he says... She should have got used to it by then. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can... It's like a muscle in your face. You can develop it. Really? So now, he said to me <laughs> that he... Tell Red, tell Robin what you really said. You said that you can't prove that O.J. beat anybody. I bet he rested up between the beatings. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know what? Don't listen Let to Red. Let me tell you, you what's listen in the to me. Uh, I'm sorry. Let Robin give you the facts. Bitch, you... Oh, shut <laughs> up. I got a word for you. <laughs> I got a word. What? Columnist but in the... Gent. Oh, <laughs> Jeez. Oh. Quiet down. I'm just Legit. trying to have a conversation with you. Andrea Pazer, columnist, Pazer, Pazer, Pazer he, whatever he, it is. He pays her in the beginning, and then she <laughs> turned on him. She's a columnist in the New York Post. 
Oh, another dumb broad. Oh. <laughs> she said. I'm going to beat you. <laughs> so shut up. She apparently has talked to a bunch of OJ's neighbors. Right. Out there in Brentwood. Nice and man. it turns out that they all knew. They all knew. They all continued to come to O.J.'s house every 4th of July for a big party. They all oh, continued they? to have I O.J. See. over to the right. house for all the right. big party. Well, then you got a point. They saw her walking down the street, uh, bruised and battered. What? Everybody knows everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to line up all you broads and kick you right in your fat asses. That's but, what I'd like to do. So you're saying they're like Gotti's neighbors. They just kind of ignored. Yeah, they turned a blind eye to it, and they just accepted O.J., and they, they sort of respect. whispered about the beatings, but they never did anything about it. They didn't offer her any support. They went with O.J. Hypocrites. Right. Hypocrites. O.J.'s friends. His neighbors were hypocrites. They eat his food, and they drink his drink. And then they snitch on him. <laughs> hey, let me tell you something. When that, when I was right oh, about the joke. Mother, fathers, you cock of spaniels, you sons of bitches. You can, you can suck. Oh, calm down. Oh, Red hates this story. <laughs> Broads, just shut up and stay in your place and there wouldn't have been all this brouhaha. What place this is that? This break is. <laughs> what place is that? Right in the house. Now doing, just... doing what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> doing what? Lying there. Just taking them. <laughs> <laughs> Taking them and making them happy. Let me tell you Massage something. Massage him with a warm towel when he get a head. Shut up already, will you? I tell you something, Red and Robin. Let OJ out and put the neighbors in prison. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you All go. Right, there's a solution. There's a solution for you. <laughs> Let OJ out of jail and put the neighbors in prison. <laughs> They're guilty. But what I said about ten the... feet from a sink. What? You shouldn't be ten feet from a sink. All right, whatever. listen, whatever. <laughs> listen, what I'm saying is this. The judge... I know what you're saying. <laughs> I know you know what I'm I saying. Know exactly what you want to say. I'm saying the judge is exactly what I said he was. But Red would say that the judge did the right thing. When when the judge let uh, the <laughs> when the judge let OJ out, was that good? That was good. Yeah, the first time when they arrested him. You see, I no thought the judge for the man and his body of work and the talent. <laughs> his, not only was he a great football player, but he got he was on TV. He was a newscaster. You think that's easy to do that on sportscaster? You don't no, know I don't think that's easy. He got a great body. It was a family matter, and the man knew. The judge knew. No. It was to stay out of their business. <laughs> that's the worst thing you can do is get between two people when they're having a row. All right. All right, Red. <laughs> Listen, let me take a break, Rob. Let me collect my thoughts on the judge. Yeah, because Red can blow anybody's mind. I'm going to smack Red in the head during the uh, commercial. Now, Red, you just calm down over there, all let right? Let somebody else get a word in. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you've got an interesting point of view, and I'm willing to let you reflect it, but... For God's sakes, let somebody else talk. <laughs> right? I'm tired now. I'm tired from yelling. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, take a break so Red can get a no, win. Broad's place is in the laundry room. What? Uh, I said a broad place is in the laundry room. <laughs> <laughs> the kitchen and sprinting in between. <laughs> sprinting in between the kitchen and the laundry room? Back and forth. You know what I mean? Just keep busy and you don't have no trouble with your man. All right. Let's let's uh, let's let's take a break. Well, there's some advice. Well, maybe he's right. Maybe things he have to go back to a taxes. simpler way. The, what? The, the bastard paid his taxes. He entertained people. And he ain't entitled to a little bitch slapping now and then? No. <laughs> Why not? It's wrong. All right, let's it take a wrong. break. No, You're not no going to get through to Red. He's an old timer. <laughs> it ain't wrong. All right, let's take a let's take a break. Go back to die, the old Red? ways. I want those old ideas to die. I want die. the old ideology in this country back again. All right. Okay. Red. Broads do laundry, make food, and hop in bed, bang them, and shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a break. Red believes in the simple life. Did you watch the OJ stuff that Robin's been reporting on here? The chase. Yeah. Yeah. I believe he, I, if I was if I was there on the scene. I would have been on that bridge cheering him. Really? You love O.J.? On the highway. He's innocent. Innocent? He's innocent. Huh. I watch animals screw. That's what you watch on TV? Uh, no, I watch that out the window. Oh. <laughs> I watch that I on TV. I live in the woods. Don't you listen to anything? All I get is uh, animals on TV and insects having sex. That's my channels. If he escapes from the jail... He, yeah, he could stay at my place. <laughs> <laughs> You'll put him up. I'll put him at AC too. AC. You know he's a lucky man to have that AC. Right, good friend. Good friend. Do you have friends like that? I wish I did. I only wish I did. Well, that's what they say a good friend is—a person who would die for you, take a bullet for you, do anything for you. I can't believe they're talking about letting this guy AC off. I mean, come on. Let him off. Ah, oh, be quiet, Red. What is it, Baba Booey? Do you know how some people capitalize on you know other people's tragedies? Yes. Yeah. This is maybe the worst T-shirt. Let me I've hold it up. To the, let me hold it up to the camera. <laughs> Look at this new T-shirt that just came out. Hold this up to the camera. It says, 
I saw OJ, June 1994, on the freeway, and it's a picture of OJ driving, <laughs> driving his car. <laughs> he I guess that'll driving. be popular. There should be a gun to OJ's head, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah he know? should be in the back seat with a gun to his head. I like that. Can you uh, get, put that in my bag? I'm going to wear that tomorrow okay. on the show. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like it. I did see on TV yesterday that the sales of his uh, trading cards... Through the roof. Through the roof, and the prices are going up. You know, I wanted to make this point about the judge, in all seriousness. This guy really deserves a spanking. He should be his job a should spanking? his Look job his job should be taken away from him. The judge had OJ's wife. He saw her face. She was in the hospital for two days. OJ was brought before the court. If the judge had thrown the book at him and given him a year in jail, because he could have given him a year in jail, mm -hmm. if he'd given him six months in jail, OJ would have had and time. And that group counseling, I didn't even realize that you have to sit in a group and admit that you beat your wife. Yeah, well, OJ, all OJ had to do was call in on a phone. Yeah, but I'm saying that what the uh, regulations are, yeah. you know, the things that the guidelines include, the year in jail, group counseling. Mm-hmm. And a fine. Yeah, some community service or something. He well, didn't even the give fine OJ. was up to $1,000 yeah. or something you could give him. They at least ought to give the judge community service, make him clean the blood off the sidewalk. That, I, now, I'm serious about that. And it's a funny thing. I said on the air, as soon as I heard about this case, I said to Robin, Robin, <laughs> this is weird. I said, this guy's got to have a hard on for celebrities. He probably invited O.J. to his bar mitzvah, his son's bar mitzvah or mm -hmm. something. You know, hey, O.J., I let you off. Can you come to my son's bar mitzvah? Show, sure, Judge. <laughs> Show sure enough. This judge really is despicable. And this is what... You know, you but can't... this happens to celebrities all the time. Don't tell Except me, me you don't get any perks. Oh, I don't have the same image as O.J. <laughs> I'm not loved universally. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, sometimes celebrity can work against you. I got the kind of celebrity Charles Manson has. <laughs> People tend to withdraw. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. You were continuing with the facts. Yes. yes. Uh, let me see. What else did I want to say about Argentina? Let me just tell you some of the statistics right. about uh, wife beating in this country. This is shocking. At least one in four women will be assaulted by a domestic partner in their lifetime. Right. A woman is battered in America every 15 seconds. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> Jackie obviously seen humor in that. <laughs> Domestic violence kills more than 10 women in America every single day. <laughs> and 60% of female homicide victims were killed by someone they know. <laughs> That's horrible. Quite a sense of humor to Jackie. <laughs> Even Red doesn't believe the humor on Jackie. Quite a sense of humor you do. So look at that. I mean, it's not unusual. And it doesn't go along any socioeconomic lines. This happens in all kinds of households. In fact, they say you're more uh, likely to feel that you can get away with it if you're prominent and you have a lot of money. Oh, yeah. So there. So there, Red. I ain't got no money. The other thing I thought was interesting is that uh, O.J. had a houseboy called Cato. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Hey, Cato. <laughs> now, come here, Cato. Oh, he guilty. <laughs> you know what's weird? I went out on the climb scene. Cato's probably a listener of ours. Cato, Cato is a blonde surfer type. Why yeah. don't you have a good-looking guy like that hanging around your house taking care of your children? I know. OJ had, like, a weird life because, first of all, I never expected that he had all that money. I, yeah. I forget he had money. I didn't realize he had millions and millions of dollars. Well, they also say that in the, in the divorce papers he was complaining about the recession hurting his income. Yeah, well, all I know is... The guy had some lifestyle. There's a woman who lived on his grounds that appeared to be... Did you see that woman on a current affair last night? Or a hard copy, was it? The woman who said she jogged with Nicole? Yeah. Did she live on the no. ground sometimes? No, she was a neighbor. Oh, she was a neighbor. Then there was Cato, who this really good-looking blonde guy who either assisted, he was like a gopher for O.J. or a gopher for the wife. And then when O.J. split up... He stayed there mm -hmm. and allegedly spied for O.J. And took care of the kids when they were at the house. Yeah, who would have a blonde surfer taking care of the kids? But they did. You see, but here's the deal. Here's the deal. Remember you said to me the other day, Howard, why would somebody ask the grand jury for... Immunity. Immunity. Yes. And I said, well, you know, it could be something stupid like... 
I don't know, either like they're an illegal alien or it could even be just people just ask for blanket immunity anyway. Here's what I think the answer is. Maybe he's the guy who asked for immunity because he has to admit that he used to sometimes accept money for spying on OJ's wife. Maybe that's he was worried that that mm -hmm. might be illegal. You know I what I'm see, saying? Yes. I mean, maybe. I don't know. I'm guessing. But whenever I see a guy who looks like that, real good looking guy, living on somebody's grounds in a guest house. Now, this is a gopher. Why do you give him a guest house with a good looking woman? And you tell him to go spy on your wife? I don't get it. If you, especially if you're jealous. Yeah, you nuts. <laughs> well, I guess you are. You're in jail for killing her. It could be anything too. It could be like, hey, maybe the guy got paid in cash and never got, never paid any taxes or something. So they ask it for It could be any number of things. Yeah. Now, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I just found it interesting that this is the dude you say watch the kids while they're over at the house too. I would get a real ugly guy watch. I guy. I get a real. I get a. You say don't ever have a guy taking care of your kids. What no, are you talking about? I'm not into guys taking care of kids. <laughs> I don't like guys taking care of kids. They should be out surfing. That is no housekeeper, if you ask me. <laughs> no housekeeper. No housekeeper. No housekeeper. <laughs> Not with that look. So Cato was kind of interesting to see, and he says, according to some of the news accounts, that O.J. was not at home. And that after they did split up, O.J. would, pay, I guess, pay him to or order him to spy on Nicole to see if she was with other men. Mm. The police believe that O.J. killed her because he was extremely jealous of her and other men. Yeah, and it makes no sense if you're that jealous of other men why you'd have a young, good-looking guy around your wife. I, I don't it know. Makes it's no just sense weird. At all. It's weird, but nothing makes sense in any of this. They think the murder weapon was some big serrated knife. They haven't found it yet. They wrapped up the investigation or the search of that field in Chicago because they said they just can't find it there. They did find a gym bag with some things in it and a tie, but they haven't said whether these things belong to O.J., but there was a report from some eyewitness that O.J. had gone out to this field that was near the hotel he stayed in in Chicago. Also, one of the stewardesses on the plane he took came forward and said O.J. sat in the chair with a bag over his hand hmm. the entire flight. Oh, that's interesting. Which may throw some doubt on his assertion that he cut his hand breaking a glass in the hotel room after he found out that his wife was murdered. Yeah, but Red wants me to remind you once again that Red always flies with a bag over his hands. So a lot of guys are into this. That's right, because beating women is as natural as breathing. Oh, jeez. You don't really feel that way. Autopsies. I feel bad for the dead people. Right. Yes. But I know the man is innocent. You feel deep in your heart he's innocent. He did said he was innocent. He's innocent. Oh. It's simple. Is that because he's the Jew? I keep my I keep my hand in a bag. You do? Yep. Why? So I can play with myself. <laughs> <laughs> and the stewardess don't know nothing. <laughs> you think that's what OJ was doing? Yep. <laughs> so you can I'm sure of it, because I myself have done it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. That's the most interesting <laughs> theory out of all the theories. See, you women don't know nothing. You don't have to put your hand in a bag to play with yourself. <laughs> Well, I, I certainly it's you're in a long old... flight to Chicago. <laughs> you know, you're, you're Red a... <laughs> could come up with an excuse for just about any activity. Red ought to de join the defense team. That's right. That's why Red's my friend. At least he's honest. The way I date, here's how it goes down. Yeah. Dinner, a little dancing, and then duking it up. <laughs> <laughs> so there's always a fight. Boom! Boom! <laughs> Effing boom! <laughs> Long, lonely flight. Well, anyway, that's what the stewardess said about O.J., and he, she sort Lion of bitch. indicated that he looked oh. a little strange to her oh, sure. during the flight. This woman that you talk about came along to say that she believes that O.J. has been caught in a lie. She can blow his alibi because she says she saw O.J. driving the car the night he said he was sitting at home waiting for a limo to come and take him to the airport, and he looked very agitated like a madman. He ran a red light. He was driving driving that white Bronco, and when he got to another stoplight, the only reason he had to stop his car was because there was another driver there sitting in front of him, and he started to scream at the driver and uh, seemed very agitated. In all fairness to O.J., you have to admit that on the plane, he never hit the stewardess, not even once. No, right, it seems that he saved all of his punches for Nicole. Why wasn't she busy? Why was she watching him? <laughs> Why wasn't she paying attention to her own stupid job with her dry roasted peanuts and her <laughs> coffee and tea and all that other crap? You're saying the stewardess shouldn't be looking at OJ. She should be looking at a job. That makes a guy uncomfortable when you're doing what you're doing. <laughs> Look at the bag over your hand. <laughs> they, they learned that in stewardess school.
Well, busy, who knows? Busy body idiot. Maybe Red's onto something. I don't she know. probably wanted him, and he rejected her. That's why she turned on him. Ah. Uh, See, I get it all figured out. Well, you Everybody's don't know anything. against OJ. Clickety, 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 click. They do say that OJ has received about a hundred pieces of mail, and they've gotten so many calls about his incarceration at this point that they had to set up a special box for him, mm. so that he could get his mail separately from everyone else. Don't you think he had enough special boxes? <laughs> so we got him into trouble. And there are people coming to the estate, putting up signs of support. And yesterday he did get a visitor. He can have one visitor a day besides his lawyer. Me. And yesterday that uh, Robert Cardassian, who was his personal lawyer, and his son Jason showed up at the jail. And this is a little bit of what Cardassian had to say about uh, O.J.'s condition. This guy Cardassian must be loving this. Yeah, he's a lawyer. He could use this publicity. No, are you kidding? This is great. O.J. is uh, still somewhat depressed and uh, had a tough time having to see his son uh, when he is uh, in the situation he is. He also says that uh, Jason and O.J. talked about their love for each other. No. But that O.J. is still very, very depressed, even according to his attorney. He's under medication and psychiatric treatment while in this little seven-by-nine-foot cell. That's a strange love O.J. offers to people. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'd say keep it to yourself. Yeah. Stop with all the love. That kind of love belongs in a bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On a plane ride to Chicago. <laughs> So O.J. may be in court today for a preliminary hearing where his lawyer will insist that they turn over all the evidence they have. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was about to tell you about the autopsies. The autopsies show that Goldman, the young man, the 25-year-old man, was attacked first. And because of the nature of the uh, stab wounds and the number, they think he put up a vicious struggle. And he was attacked initially from behind. He was still even clutching, clutching those sunglasses that he was bringing to Nicole Simpson. So wow. he never even got to turn those over. And Nicole then was hit and probably knocked unconscious by the first blow and then stabbed. And both of them had their uh, throats slit, from what I understand. But lots of stab wounds, lots of blood there. Looked like an indication that the murderer tried to clean up the blood. Hmm at the scene but mm. was unsuccessful because everything was such a mess mm. <laughs> and uh, again where were the neighbors? no one else is being investigated oh. where were the neighbors though during this that's what I care for well they heard the dogs but I guess when you lived in the neighborhood of Nicole Simpson you heard that a lot yeah I guess it's no big deal <laughs> yeah because there was even there's now a report that there was another report filed of domestic violence at her condo in this past year where she called police because of problems with OJ. And his first wife has been reported to Geraldo Rivera. Uh, somebody came up uh, in the Geraldo Rivera show on CNBC and they said that his first wife, Marguerite, said that OJ punched, kicked, choked, slapped. <laughs> so this wasn't uh, confined to his first mar or his second marriage. Wow. Hey, you know, I was going to ask you something. Do you ever watch the late night television shows? Because I mean, we're always in bed. But are Leno and Letterman like doing jokes about OJ, or are they just avoiding the topic? That's a good question. I don't know because I don't stay up to watch, and I haven't seen or heard anything about it. Maybe someone who I, I just wonder, like, aren't there certain topics those guys don't deal with? <laughs> they dealt with Michael Jackson. Oh, I they don't did. Know whether they're keeping hands off OJ or not? I'm sure they have to be talking about it. Anyway, if anyone knows, call me. I got to take a break here. We'll be back with uh, some more news right after these words. I am a big fan of Robin's news. Um, I'm sorry, I have a cold. Could you make that out? I said Robin's news. What else, Robin? How's he talking? I don't know. Let's just ignore him. Go ahead. No. Just imagine this, Howard. Well, I wonder if you'd do this. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even listening to him. I know. Go ahead. An Oregon <laughs> mother was willing to face the worst to rescue her son. What'd she do? I would never do that. He fell into an outhouse. Go ahead. And so the mother said, you know, like they needed, like it was 10 feet down. They could see him with a flashlight. Yep. And they, <laughs> oh, That's like a 14-foot drop, those outhouses. They said this was 10 feet. Right. Go ahead. And so 
the mother lower was uh, allowed herself to be lowered into the tank right with two people holding her feet <laughs> yeah so she could grab her cool. son i hope they were friends <laughs> wow she that. squeezed into the 10 foot pit and was able to grab the boy and the kid must have been covered in duty of course he was right. he was dirty and pee. but apparently otherwise unhurt God, you ever smell an outhouse, man? Oh, they're horrible. Every summer, my parents sent me to a camp that had outhouses. I didn't know they still had that kind of thing. Yeah, and they just throw lime over the poop, and then the next day, there's more of it. Ugh. Mm -hmm. Ugh. It's just one big pile down there. <laughs> Lies. And the kid, obviously, was okay because the fall is broken by all the duty. <laughs> Imagine falling into a pile of duty. What kind of life are you going to have? He was t he's two years old. He was chatting with another oh. camper while... Um, oh, come on, chatting? What? While she cooked breakfast. They were at a campground. You cooked in the outhouse? <laughs> no, she yeah. was cooking. He was chatting. Yeah. The next thing she heard was a scream oh. coming from the outhouse. He fell through the hole. She and her husband rushed in. Looking down with a flashlight, they saw their son standing in the muck at the bottom of the pit, his arms outstretched. Oh. Oh, imagine that. How cute. Now, the husband didn't let let himself be lowered. The, the wife. wife. Oh, yeah, that would happen to my... I wouldn't go low. <laughs> First of all... But you're taller. Yeah, but I weigh a lot more. <laughs> oh, yeah. And my wife loves the kids so much. Oh, I don't have dear. that much love in my heart to be lowered into an outhouse. <laughs> Women have more of a maternal thing. You wouldn't do that for your children. All right, let's no. say... No. I would throw them in a rope. Your four-year-old. <laughs> yeah. Fell down in the in the duty hole, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and your wife's not there. It's you and Fred and Jackie. I take my portable phone and call for help. <laughs> you kid... wouldn't go get your kid. No, in duty. No, man, I'm a celebrity. I can't be seen. Fred doing and that. Jackie can support you. No, I wouldn't do that. I throw a rope. <laughs> you don't have a rope. <laughs> I'd make one out of Jackie's pants. <laughs> I don't know. I think that was valiant of the woman, but I'm shocked that her husband was right there and he let his wife do the dirty work. Well, she couldn't hold him, so. Just sure she could. No, a woman can't hold a there man. Were two people holding on to her legs. She could have no. been one of the people holding on to his. No, get out of here. That's crazy. You guys are sick. He probably went twice. <laughs> oh, boy. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine just seeing him fighting. <laughs> what else is in the news, Robin? No, Anything? <laughs> oh, stop that! Imagine <laughs> <laughs> some guy comes and goes. Look, I have to go to the bathroom. Well, my kids on it. I don't care, man. I gotta go. <laughs> oh no! Josh, she slips into both of them. <laughs> 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 yeah, the husband drops her in. Whoa, drop them both in there and then take off. <laughs> See, there's all kinds of That's things. what I call a good weekend. I swear it slipped your honor. The kids and the wife right in the outhouse. Ghost of report them. Right. <laughs> all right, that's what's happening. Thanks, Robin. Hooray, it's time for the news. We were in the news, Robin. That's right, Howard. Last night, Bill Clinton made his appearance on the Arsenio Hall show as a saxophonist. And then he and Hillary sat down and talked. They're so happening. With Arsenio. First, let's hear what Arsenio had to say after Bill Clinton played the saxophone. All right. This is what Arsenio had to say. Yes. Card number four. It's good to see a Democrat blowing something other than the election. And, uh... That wasn't very nice. <laughs> and here's a little bit of what Bill Clinton... How many guys do you think it took to write that for him? Oh, they spent all afternoon on it. Yeah, right. Now, he's going to finish the sax. What are you going to say? You know what you ought to say? Finally crafted that for Arsenio. And I'm sure uh, Arsenio had a hand in it. And you can tell when Arsenio is reading it. You can just hear him reading. That was definitely a line prepared. Yeah. It's, di it's not, was not delivered in a conversational way. What did he say in that interview? I don't think one joke has been told on this show that I didn't have a hand in. Yeah, he had a hand in it, all right. That's like five words. His hand dips into the pocket, <laughs> gets the money, and pays the guy. 
All right, now, what did Bill Clinton say, Robin? Yes, what okay. did he say? Let's find out together. There ought to be a presumption in this country that we need everybody we can get to perform to the maximum of their God-given capacities. That's why I work so hard on a good economic program. That's why I believe so strongly in education. And so uh, I come from this in a different way. I want to include people. I don't want to exclude people. Right on. That's the right thing to say to Arsenio's crowd. He's, I was going to say, you know who he's, he thinks he's talking to. Yeah. <laughs> he's obviously he's looking out at a sea of black faces in that Arsenio audience, isn't he? <laughs> and uh, Arsenio, not one to dodge the tough questions, asked him again about trying marijuana. <laughs> hey, man, did you smoke a doobie? Yeah, trying to, all right, and this is what Bill Clinton said? Yeah. This is an answer. I did my best. I mean, I and I tried, but I just couldn't inhale it. I mean, I wasn't trying to get a good conduct medal for saying I didn't inhale. I was just nervously pointing out that it was another one of those things I tried to do and failed at in life. <laughs> wow. Great. <laughs> couldn't smoke dope. <laughs> Can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't smoke dope. I don't know which way the joint goes in my mouth. What's marijuana? It's hard to trust someone with that accent, isn't it? That southern accent, it just makes you sound so stupid. And really well, does. and when you say, I didn't know how to smoke a joint. No. Yeah. I, did, I just didn't know how to, there, Arsenio. I tried to. Yes. I just couldn't. Hell, we thought Burt Reynolds was a woman. <laughs> Tied him up and tried to rape him in deliverance. <laughs> I plumb forget to light the joint because uh, we didn't have no match. <laughs> Stupid hillbilly like Elvis, you know. Mm. Uh, Mr. President, I'm wondering if I could be on your special force to, uh, for, to fight drugs. <laughs> uh, right, okay. Officer Elvis. Yes, today you're Officer Elvis. You mean I can get one of those neat uh, badges that the uh, FBI has? It's DEA? Oh, uh, yes. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. I have to leave now because I have to dry heaves for my medication. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. Okay, Elvis. Pleasure to meet you. And go out and fight drugs. <laughs> uh, right on. Uh, okay. Two days later, Elvis pulling people over in his car. Got yeah, flashing that fake badge please call over this here's officer elvis <laughs> what did he do he had a he had a bubble put on his car yeah <laughs> elvis had and a used bubble. to go around <laughs> stopping people <laughs> i mean he actually did that please call over this did he have the big megaphone thing That's he what probably I... did have one of those they have a speaker right please call over this is officer elvis a law enforcement official the DEA. you you look like you might have some drugs in your car. Pull over. <coughs> Sir, roll down your window. I'm, I'm so high, your nose looks like a banana. <laughs> <laughs> you doing drugs? <laughs> <laughs> this is Officer Elvis. Now, step out of the car. Now, you boys have some drugs? Are, are you want to buy some? <laughs> Officer Elvis, put your hands up in the air. You, you fall asleep at the wheel? Take a few of these. <laughs> this is legal. <laughs> you know, uh, Elvis hasn't, that's me. I haven't moved my bowels. You imagine you, you roll down your window and it's Elvis getting out in his karate suit with his, uh. with the, with the, with the cape. And he's busting you. And by the way, he had no ability to take anyone to jail. He used to do citizen's arrest. Right. Where'd he take him, though? I take him to the Cheetos factory. <laughs> I'd like to get something to eat and then, uh, uh the police can come and apprehend him. <laughs> You seem to be swerving on the road there. I had to, I had to pull you over. All right, everything seems to be in order. Goodbye. <laughs> it's Officer Elvis. Drive safely. Drive safely. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I only wish I could have been pulled over by Officer See, Elvis. You should have driven down there during that time. And I'm going to have to confiscate this here loot. <laughs> I have to take him to test the purity. Hey, you're not a, you're not a law enforcement official. You're Elvis. Well, I just met with Richard Milhouse Nixon, young man, and I have a badge that says that I can pull you over. I'm an officer of the DEA. <laughs> Is it time for the news, Robin? Robin. Yes!
Pete Townsend is still in the news. We're trying to figure out exactly uh, what he's been up to. Oh, I think I have a pretty good figuring out thing. (laughs) Yes. They have now published excerpts from a letter he had posted on his website for some time. It's now been taken off, by the way, that letter. Uh, there's hardly a man I know who uses computers who will not admit to surfing casually sometimes to find pornography. I have done it. I remember years ago, we worked at a radio station where, uh, rock and roll station, DC 101, where, where our TV commercial was Pete Townsend strumming his guitar. Yes. And I'm thinking about how now... I would like to have a commercial for the Howard Stern show with Pete Townsend. It would be so great. Or like he'd be like the new Dell computer guy. You see Pete, the commercial opens up, he's downloading on his computer. He goes, hi, I'm the new Dell computer guy. Remember that little obnoxious kid? Yeah. I got naked pictures of him. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Dell had to find someone even dumber than uh, the Dell computer guy, and it's me. I used my credit card on the kitty porn website. How dumb am I? Dell computers. Their new slogan, any idiot can surf the net. <laughs> Take it from the world-famous and incredibly dumb rock star, Pete Townsend. Anyway, in this letter, he uh, says that it's incredible how easy it is to find uh, pedophilic imagery on the Internet. He was innocently surfing the web. <laughs> I don't he know. came upon it. I haven't found any pedophilic <laughs> imagery on the web, and uh, I've done a lot of surfing. In my time. Well, in the first statement, he just said pornography, and that's true. Right. You know. You can't avoid porn, but... Right. I've never seen... You know what? The only way you, you see pedophilic pornography is if you're looking for it. Yeah. I mean, really. His story is that he checked out child porn sites maybe three or four times and only entered a porn site once using a credit card. But in Great Britain, I think that's against the law. So, uh... He's got some problems ahead of him. I think he thinks that his career is uh, definitely damaged. Yes. Maybe down for the count. Oh, I, I would say so. Meanwhile, he does have some people coming to his defense. Mountain John said, I hope it's not as bad as it sounds. That's nice. <laughs> Did really? Pee Wee come to his defense? <laughs> it's the best thing Elton John could muster up, huh? <laughs> but, uh... uh <laughs> The one who was really vehemently behind him was Jerry Hall. She yes. says she has known him for a long time, and he is absolutely the antithesis of a pedophile. I love Mick Jagger's ex-wives. One's yeah. over in Iraq with Saddam Hussein. <laughs> the other one's defending pen- uh, uh, pedophilia charges of Well, Pete I thought it was interesting because this is a woman who didn't know she wasn't really married to Mick Jagger. Yeah. You know, he took her off to Bali somewhere and told her, this guy's going to bless us and we really don't need a license. Mm. And she bought that, too. <laughs> so, yeah. Certainly I'm going to take her word on Pete. You're listening to And That's What's Happening, a Stern Show News Retrospective. And those, I always felt like, were the more exciting parts of the show. You know, that freewheeling news starting coming up with stories howard saying shit off the cuff another person would say something somebody would write a joke we put a sound effect in there and then it would just kind of like morph into just like this fucking craziness which was the news now playing on howard 100 howard 101 and siriusxm.com all right robin what else is in the news another mob guy was found dead in brooklyn Yesterday, the reputed underboss of a New Jersey crime family who's closely linked to Godfather John Gotti Mm. was found uh, shot in his car with a bunch of fish in his lap. Why? (laughs) Yesterday. Oh, you know how the mob has these little secret messages they send to each other? Why don't they let us in on it? (laughs) I don't understand why the fish have to be there all the time. Better not you're dead, but you have fish in your lap? (laughs) How disgraceful. He must have uh, broken that mafia code where he was with uh, one of the guy's wives or something, so they put the fish in his lap. That's something I like, He did something that smelled like fish. Mm. So what, why would you... Why, do they mention why a guy gets well, fish? Well, I'm trying to think back to The Godfather, the movie, because they, they wrapped a fish and 
Did they send it? Uh oh, here's our mafia. Expert. Oh, here comes Gary. <laughs> Anybody with the name Delabate must know. You know yeah. Why is it that every Italian believes he understands the mob? No, but this all you had to do was watch a movie to figure this one out. I I think I have this one figured out. This is in The Godfather. Yeah, when you when you do when like a lot of fish are found in a guy's lap, doesn't that mean lesbian hitmen did it? <laughs> exactly, boss. Yes. No, I love how Gary like comes in anytime there's an Italian question. Yes. No, but this is, I mean, all you had to do is watch a movie. This means that he sleeps with the fish. Oh, boy, that's not all that. What's with these mob guys? Can't they be more creative? <laughs> that's what it means, though. It means now you sleep with the fish. But we know he sleeps with the fish. Yeah, but it's a, it's kind of a code. It means now he's dead because he sleeps with the fish. Right. Yeah, but the point is that he sleeps with the f I mean... <laughs> I mean, why not put dirt over him and say now he's six feet under? <laughs> it's symbolic. It's, it's a Sicilian symbolic type thing. No, okay. And what was the, um, I don't know. I, I just, I, you annoy me. <laughs> I, I, and I've stayed out of here. You notice I've stayed out of your hair. I guess no one in the mob is a rocket scientist. I mean, why? Yeah, they <laughs> you know, need to keep the symbolism is not all of that. <laughs> well, it goes back a long way. Yeah, right. So you mean some guy actually took the risk after he shot this guy to actually sit there and pour fish in his lap? Yes. Exactly. <laughs> That's you got to have some balls for that, man. I got to say those mob guys got balls. They do. They really do. <laughs> I mean, to sit there, I would be. I would. Oh my God! Shaking I better get out of here. Your boots, yeah. say, oh, I'll, I'll take some fish out, throw it in his lap, decorate <laughs> the guy, <laughs> yeah, make sure everything looks good. What kind of thing is that to put fish <laughs> on someone? Even that Uncle Simmons, at least he just threw everyone in a grave in yeah, Arkansas. Yeah, he wasn't decorating. No. Oh, let me go get some fish, for God's sake. It just it looks so bland. <laughs> There's something missing. I mean, everyone knew the guy was dead. That's enough of a statement. You don't start putting fish in his lap. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you're shot 200 million, 50,000 times, they figure it's a mob hit. Plus, isn't it hard to recruit guys for the mob now? Every time you turn around, some guy's getting killed. I mean, you know, why can't they just have guys deposed? I mean, all they do is kill guys when they want You know, what is this? I mean, it's, it's the kind of thing, you know, who would work for a radio station where you get killed if you screw up in the radio? Yeah, there's no natural attrition. You don't retire yeah. in the mob. Well, what do you think the guy did? Did he, uh, anybody have a clue? No, no they, Gary they, does. Oh, Gary does. Yeah. Oh, could have been, it could have been, he could have, uh, yeah. he could have kept some money mm -hmm. that what didn't belong to him. He could have ratted on somebody. You know, to the police. Right. <laughs> was, it's a mob rub out. Right. It could have been any of a number of things. Well, let me just say that he was a very high crime figure, according to this uh, account in the paper. And they're surprised. You know, he was very well thought of, very powerful. He probably wanted to deal heroin, and the other guys don't want to Yeah, that's heroin. always the question, isn't it? Yeah, the mob guys are always debating one another. <laughs> it's like a big debate. They, they went to Harvard debating school. So I think that uh, we should go into heroin. Heroin. We can't go into heroin. We can. We'll do anything. We'll rape your mother, but we can't do heroin. <laughs> well, you know how, like in in politics, when there's a power struggle, you know, yeah. somebody wants to move up the ladder and someone right. doesn't want them to do to do it. Well, in the mob, they just kill them. Yeah, I see. You know, see, that's been... more pro. That's probably uh, more likely to have happened in this case. Gary, of course, has never met anyone in the mob. He knows about as much about the mob as I do. He thinks he knows. Yeah, but because he's Italian, he believes he knows something. <laughs> I love the explanation. And they all say it with such conviction that you believe, hey, maybe yeah, yeah, they're connected. He, knows. he must know somebody. <laughs> but he knows nobody. I know another Italian guy like you. He always, every time I, I go, say, Howard, heard you talking about the mob on the air. Don't, don't talk about the mob. I go, well, why? Do you know something that I don't know? He goes, no, don't talk about it. I'm telling you, you don't know these guys. I said, like, you do? Just because you're <laughs> Italian, you think you know these guys? I know, I'm telling you. Well, I'm just explaining it. I have nothing bad to say about them. Right. I, I have nothing bad either. I, like I the have mob. nothing bad to say about anyone. Just I'd like to live next door to mob guys. That's the best thing. You know that? Either the mob or the Hell's Angels. Yeah. <laughs> you know that there was this one mob guy that I know about? Uh-huh. He, he was having some trouble. I think he, he wanted to deal heroin, and the other guys didn't want to deal heroin. <laughs> and um, he knew that they were coming after him. Uh-huh. His whole block, he sent on a trip to Hawaii. You're kidding. I'm talking about, you know, where he lived. He said right. the whole block. He says, all you people, get out of here. Here's your, I'm paying for your tickets. Everyone go to Hawaii. Wow. I know it for a fact. 
true mob story. That sounds a little far fetched. And a little I was going to nice. say, where does he any, hear these? Stories? He didn't want any trouble on his block. He didn't want any of his neighbors getting killed accidentally. And I, yeah, like a mob person cares. Right. I never met a mafioso in my life, but if I did, I don't think he'd be oh, quite oh, that nice. Oh, so, so again, you assume that you know. No, I said I never have, but wouldn't you think, have you ever met a criminal in your life who was that nice? Yeah, well, there's all these mob stories going around. You know, I was talking to a guy about the mob, and he goes, I'm telling you, man, we lived on a block with the guys from the mob, and uh, they sent everyone, they sent us all to Hawaii. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> but there's a million of those stories floating around. Yeah. But anyway, so he's dead, and he sleeps with the fishes. <laughs> you probably sold crack to retarded elementary school kids. That's when they the mob has a code. They, you know, you, they have a line. And there are things you don't over. do. Yes. No, we're not going to sell to retarded elementary school kids. I don't care what you tell me. <laughs> we sell crack to college kids, not retarded kids. <laughs> and I mean it. Yes. You embarrass you every family. But Gary with his Italian information. Well, he I, always rushes in. Oh, yeah. All I said is I know that it means he sleeps with the fish. That's it. That's good. That actually is a good explanation. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, remember that guy I was telling you about yesterday, the uh, latest mafia rub-out victim? Yeah. Jimmy Rotondo? Yeah. Well, now they're saying it was a jar of squid in his lap. Oh, so what does that mean? They say that was probably dinner. <laughs> oh, so you mean he, he wasn't going to be sleeping with the fishes? No, they were, it wasn't the Godfather sign. <laughs> oh, so you mean he was just out for dinner, he had some squid? And he went out to, you know, was, I guess on his way home or something, picked up some squid. <laughs> I was going to ask Gary, what does it mean when a guy has squid in his lap? <laughs> That's what he had for dinner. Yeah. Oh, Whoops. boy. All those wacky mafia guys. <laughs> Everything looks like it's a... Uh... We've been watching too many movies. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, Everything looks like a sign. jumps to conclusions. You know, mob guys aren't that creative. <laughs> and just like you said yesterday, Howard, who would take the time to go back and put some fish in his lap? Exactly. What was this guy doing, eating the squid in his car? No, maybe it was closed and he was taking it home for dinner like it wasn't out. cooked or something. Oh, like Craig from the Window Factory, Mr. Takeout King. Yeah. Always has a, he always has food. All, you, you know that guy has a Jaguar, a $40,000 Jaguar, and he's got spaghetti stains all over the carpet of the oh, Jaguar? no. Because <laughs> he's always at La Palma Restaurant, <laughs> and he goes and he goes in there, and he like he spills bags of like um, Italian sauce and stuff all over his Jaguar? Yeah. I mean, the guy was eating, uh, the guy was eating squid. What do they call squid? Cal 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 Calamari, yeah. Calamari? Calamari. Okay. I feel a little stupid about yesterday's... Uh... What, sleeping with a fish? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it certainly sounded like I think that only happens in the movies. I don't think regular mob guys, like, you know, take the time to send signals like, uh, you're going to now sleep with the fish. Well, I could only comment on what was reported. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of cool. They found squid. Who the hell eats squid, man? That's the most disgusting fish. Oh, it's, it like, it's like octopus, right? Yeah. yeah. It's rubber. It's like rubber, is right. <laughs> One of the guys that works here you know, is very Italian, and on Christmas Eve, it's a big... Well, who's the guy? Guido. Yeah. It's so, <laughs> yeah, he is very Italian, yes, with a name like that. So. And, uh, and he told me that, you know, his fa he told me for a week before Christmas Eve, yep, my father's got the octopus ready. And it was, like, Ooh. very exciting. He's, you mean he bought a whole octopus? Right. Like, instead yeah. of a turkey, you buy an octopus? Right. <laughs> Jesus had that in mind. Yeah, right. What he had an, his father had the octopus? Oh, God! Yeah, the he octopus cooked it up for the whole ready. house. Have you ever seen, like, a dead octopus? No. There's no way you'd eat it. Well, you cut it up. It's not like a turkey. His head looks like Lex Luthor. It's like Brainiac 5's head. Yeah, they are cartoon characters yeah. like octopus. So what does he do? He, like, I mean, he has, like, a an octopus for uh, Christmas? And what does he do? Like, like they just... You cook it and cut it up. <laughs> they don't stuff it, though, right? No, no, no. no. <laughs> All Italians have seafood on Christmas Eve. It's a big tradition. All right. I Who see. Who gets the leg? Who gets the leg? There's no problem getting the leg. Really? Everybody yeah, does. Everybody gets the leg. It's who gets the head. Well, anyway. Ooh, they eat that? Do they eat the head part? I don't what? think so. 
I got a feeling they do, and you're just not saying I'm it. Not, I'm not sure, because I've never actually seen it prepared. I mean, they're really, really tiny. <clears throat> I've never actually seen a, uh, an octopus prepared. Because isn't that where that ink part is in the head? They got the inks, too. The head's the best part. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Yuck. Oh, man. He's disgusting, that Guido. Really? You know, I mean, you know, at some point you have to assimilate into this country. What's up with all the Italian customs? Well, you've seen that stuff. It's all spotty and it's got tentacles. That is disgusting. You know, I personally think, you know, some stuff that, like, blacks eat is pretty disgusting. But this takes the cake. I don't know, man. I saw a jar of pig's knuckles one day. It was pretty gross. <laughs> I mean, actual knuckles. You mean ham hocks? It said on the jar, it said pig's, pig's knuckles. knuckles. Ham hocks, though, is pig's knuckles, right? Is it? No, I thought no. that was like the knees or something. <laughs> yeah, that's like a pig's knee. <laughs> <laughs> you got to understand something. When uh, blacks were, on sl uh, were slaves, they were forced to eat pig's knuckles. <laughs> You're no longer forced to do that. <laughs> you, acquire, you acquire a taste. Same thing for the octopus. You mean, so if, if you eat enough crap, you acquire a taste for it and you got to have it? Don't you at some point say, I don't want to have this anymore? I mean, don't you say... Well, there is one little itty bitty piece of meat in a pig's knuckle that is very tasty. Really? <laughs> really? I mean, I wouldn't eat pig anyway. Pig anything? Because pig is. I mean, it's pig is disgusting. Yeah, but if so, if you were born and in your family from the day you grew up, they fed you something, you would acquire a taste for it. You wouldn't know that it didn't taste good. Yeah, but the, the, we're no longer living in a slave. On a, you know what I'm saying? There's no reason to even bring anybody up eating that kind of crap. Oh, look at Jews. Look what they eat. <laughs> they eat uh, uh, unleavened bread, which is like like eating a piece of cardboard. Just because just because a bunch of Jews couldn't find their way in the desert. Couldn't they add a little salt and a little... <laughs> yeah, a little something to make that a little taste. Well, now they got like uh, egg matzah and uh, all yeah, that kind of stuff, yeah. which makes it a little more palatable. And gefilte fish, what the hell is that? What the hell kind of fish is that? I have never seen any or heard of anyone catching a gefilte. It's the most disgusting <laughs> thing. Uh, it is disgusting, that gefilte fish. And that jelly. Come on. When you look at that stuff. It's not from any sea I know about. What is that that's swimming in? <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. That guy, st that guy has an octopus for... God, that's disgusting. Fat. Gee. Gee. You've had it in restaurants, though, haven't you? Sure. Accidentally, yeah, <laughs> I've seen it. But once you, when you see it raw, and you ever see those like, rubber tips on the bottom, like those suction cup things? Well, that's what I was gonna say. It's like those things you hang those uh, baby on board signs. Yeah, <laughs> you eating that? <laughs> oh, he's disgusting, the Guido. <laughs> Ugh, I hate him. <laughs> oh. Listen, we got to take a break. You know what he's been doing. Yeah, really. <laughs> well, anyway, I just thought I'd clear up the thing about the fish in the lap. It was a bottle of squid. A bottle of squid for you. <laughs> All right, listen, we'll be back right after these words. Now it's time for the news with Robert Clemens. The family of terror suspect Osama bin Laden reportedly is bankrolling two fellowships at Harvard. Asaba Ben Laden. Didn't he used to do sales here at the our radio station? I don't think so. I was Be Ben Sam Ruby or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Sam Ben Ruby. The Boston Globe says Bin Laden's family has sponsored two fellowships at Harvard since 1992. Both are in Islamic studies and are named after the prominent Saudi Arabian family, which is worth about five billion I know. dollars. This guy must be so mental. I mean, he's got five billion dollars and all he's worried about is blowing up the world. Yeah, Bin Laden was suspected of uh, masterminding the uh, bombings of U.S. embassies in Africa. His family even has disowned him. I know, but where does he get his money? He got about five hundred million dollars from the family before they disowned him. Wow. And had he stayed with the family, he would have been, been richer. And you know what we ought to do as Americans, find out what products his family makes and begin boycotting them. And the uh, CIA ought to begin working uh, silently. Well, if the family has disowned him. So what? Uh, Let's just destroy him, his family, his four wives. Let's destroy his children. Let's sneak him in the middle of the night and kill everyone he loves. I mean, this is what we should be doing. This guy has declared war on us. This a is a war. A CIA analyst says he's probably not in very close connection to his family. So what? But let, let them. That's the only way to give this guy pain. 
you know. And Bob Guccione thinks his son's an a-hole. Imagine, imagine, uh, uh, imagine You're having this. Osama bin Laden. Yeah, Osama bin Laden. Your family's worth billions of dollars, and this weirdo goes out and starts killing people with all the money you gave him. Goes to war with the world. Yeah, that really. There's a way to take this guy out. If this guy was out, I heard on the news the other day. If this guy was out, out uh -huh. of the picture. Uh huh. Uh, so much of world terrorism would yeah, not be he, able to be financed. To be, uh, yep. building his own little army. Yeah, you got to really hit these guys where it hurts, and the only way it hurts is you know anybody who's close to them, even if he's not in touch with his family. The fact that he's causing them personal pain will get to him because everyone's you know everyone's tied in with their families in some way or another. I don't know. You're talking about a yeah. crazy zealot, Howard. Mm. Yeah. Well, anyway, there's ways to get to him, and and quite frankly, drag him out in the middle of the night and kill him. And How that's you, and you know, and you and, and you need a, an elite team. I even said, like, you get a guy like Chuck Zito who knows how to handle himself so beautifully. You ask him as a favor to the United States to go in. I'm sure he knows his way around Afghanistan. You put Chuck on it with the Hell's Angels, <laughs> yeah. like five of the elite Hell's Angels with Chuck. He would do this country a favor. These guys love this country. America. Americans. Yeah, a little unrealistic, but... Well, it's my plan. <laughs> Nevertheless, I don't see a plan coming out of you. <laughs> Robin, what else is in the news? We're doing the news, Robin. That's right, Howard. Joan Kennedy, guilty. Oh, oh no. Here we go. Wait a second. Let me take a slug of water. <laughs> yes, she was in court the other day on those drunk driving charges as a result of an accident she had earlier. And she decided that I think it's safe to say that um, there's sufficient evidence here to find me guilty. So I'm not going to contest this court trial. Uh, uh, what are you, nuts? <laughs> uh, uh, oh, it's you. <laughs> Why did you call me now? Now's not the time to call. I just pleaded guilty. Uh, who, is, who is your attorney? <laughs> Robin, who is her attorney? Um, I don't know who her attorney was. Oh, Patrick Butler was her attorney. Era Patrick Butler? <laughs> Who's that? What, the Kennedys always have to have the best attorney because you don't use that attorney? Uh, you still carry the Kennedy name. Yeah, uh, uh, everyone knows you as Joan Kennedy. <laughs> era, what's wrong with you pleading guilty? You never plead guilty, Era. Uh, uh, that's what you get for not aiming at a lake. You know, I can't believe you just said that. That girl Mary Jo Kopechny died. Era, she was just a secretary. Oh, right. I'm expected to believe that, that you were not having a love affair with this girl. Era, you saw the report. The report, it was a total cover-up. I'm not covering up anything, damn it. I just want to say I'm guilty and get the whole damn thing behind me. Era, era, guilty. You pleaded guilty, era. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I bet you need a drink worse than Jack needed a football helmet. <laughs> oh, my God, are you that callous that you can make fun of the holes in your brother's head? I read if he'd been winning, wearing a football helmet. I read that's why the Kennedys always played football. Oh, my God, good Christ almighty. I read don't use the name of Jesus. Whose name should I use? The girl you slaughtered, Mary Jo Kopechny? Era, look, I just called to say that I thought that what you had done was wrong and that maybe I could talk to a judge up there for you. Are you going to fix it? Are you going to fix things for me like you did that whole cover-up on that, that girl who died? Era, she was a secretary. Let me go through this again. Era, for the last time, this is what destroyed our marriage that you never believed me about the Kopechny gal. <laughs> never believed you? Who? The whole country doesn't believe you. Era, I, I, you know, the whole country might not believe me, but I didn't plead guilty. Era, era, you pleaded guilty? I guess there's more than one retarded Kennedy. Oh, gee. Oh, look, okay. Now, come on, I'm going to hang up this phone in a minute. Era, okay, don't hang up. I just want to make one point perfectly clear. Perfectly crystal clear. I want to say, and go on record, just go ahead, I don't care what you say. I want to go on record and just say one thing. Era, when I took that girl home, I was giving her a ride. She was not in the back seat making love. Era, I was giving her a ride to her home. Her home was in the completely opposite direction. <laughs> That's not true. And you're not a Kennedy. Because a Kennedy would not have pleaded guilty. 
You know I'm going to cry. Didn't you even try to take the fifth? Or did you drink that too? <laughs> oh, God almighty, I'm trying to get that whole drinking thing together. Oh, you're doing a real great job. Did you, do you want to know what she has to uh, go through now? Sure, tell me and torture me. <laughs> she has to pay a $677 fine, sort of. Ever how much? $677. Yes, that should be real tough for me. Yeah, with all that Kennedy money, $677. That should be a real deterrent to your next drunken driving binge. She's lost her license for 120 days. That should be a problem. Uh, chauffeur. <laughs> How are you going to take a drink if you're not behind the wheel, honey? You know, listen, I am sick of this. Don't you think $676 hurts me a little bit? Don't you think it's a little embarrassing? <laughs> She's also on probation for a year. And she'll have to take the Massachusetts Alcohol Education Program. Era. <laughs> Era, that's really going to work. It will work. I'm going to take the program. I am going to be very determined and very serious. Era, why did you hit that fence? Era, <laughs> why did you hit that fence? <laughs> Ask not why you drive a car drunk, but why did you hit the fence? Oh, you're some poet. Why didn't you step on the brake? Era, are you missing a leg like Ted Jr.? Am I missing a leg like Ted Jr.? Yeah, your breaking leg? <laughs> you know, you have just no sensitivity to this whole thing. I'm guilty. I'm going to... I pled guilty. Era, yes. But it's all over the papers. Don't you think my mother... Don't you think my mother, if she still had her eyesight and could breathe, that she would be upset by all of this? I could give a damn about your mother, okay? You're such a damn mama's boy. Ever I am not. My mother is the matriarch of our family. She sired a president, a senator, two senators. Huh, some senator. Some senator you are. Ever, please, leave me alone. Go pay your $676 fine. $676 fine. More money than that falls out of your shaking hands at the supermarket. <laughs> That's why I divorced you. Even a Kennedy has his limits. Every time you took a drink of money, your money hands would shake. <laughs> and I've had it with you. Well, I've had it with you. And good luck to you. Good luck to you. Goodbye. Oh, thank goodness they're off the phone. Yes. Well, Kennedy told the court that she had not been drinking in a public place. Uh, it wasn't a public place, you know. <laughs> Ever like that makes a difference. <laughs> well, you know something? You know something? I might have had a, had, a, had a little trouble with the Kopechny girl. A little trouble? You killed her! I didn't kill her! It was an accident! I have a clean conscience! Kopechny was clean, too. After all, didn't she wash up on shore? Oh, oh that's a good joke. Who's writing your material? Oh. The Z-Mooning Zoo? <laughs> well, maybe they are. Oh, boy. Anyway, uh, on July 5th, when she had to surrender her license because uh, she was picked up for drunken driving. Right. Uh, she refused to take a breathalyzer test. <laughs> yeah. And that is an automatic, mandatory, 120-day oh, yeah. loss of license in Massachusetts. Yeah. <laughs> so, there you have it. Well, there you go. Cora Jones. Harry, you should have taken... That's actually the smart thing you did. You didn't take the breathalyzer test. Harry, <laughs> that was smart. Well, thank you. At least I did something right. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry I yelled. Good luck to you in that uh, alcohol program. I really hope that era uh, works out. I'm sure things will work out. And I don't know what went wrong in our marriage. Era, I'll tell you what went wrong. What's that? You got old. <laughs> oh. Thanks. Sorry, we all can't be 19-year-old bimbos. Era, don't you call Susie Chafee a bimbo? <laughs> She's a professional skier. So that. Uh, tell you, I wouldn't mind myself a young stud. Oh, God. Ara, you have no cooth. Oh. Ara, what a family. Jack took shots. Bobby took shots. And you drink shots. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot. Ted Jr.'s skiing career is shot. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Bobby Jr. took shots at heroin. I give up, damn it. Era, 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 uh, 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 I give up. <sighs> You're a failure too, Ted. I am not. 
You kill a girl? Well, you're not president. <laughs> and no one has ever taken a shot at you. You lose. You're a loser. Or a shot would have been good if someone took a shot at me. I would have been a hero, too. Nobody even bothers to even take a shot at me. <laughs> you are a loser, you know that? Well, maybe we're all losers. Who knows? Or I can't take this. I'm getting depressed. I'm going back on my yacht with that 19-year-old girl. <laughs> oh, good. Goodbye. Have a nice life. And that's the last time I'm calling you, too. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Whew. What a fight, huh? I'm telling you, they wear me out. Yeah, those two are always fighting. <laughs> well, Maybe anyway. Maybe we better take a break yeah. and recuperate. Take a break, I'm going home. <laughs> it was hard to get a disc jockey to talk to you about anything that had nothing to do with music, so his interactions were welcome. You know that company IEG? Yes. It's feeding all of our uh, desires to know what uh, celebrities do in their bedrooms. Right. They're the ones who put out the Pamela Lee video. Yeah. And then they got the Dr. Laura picture. Yes, I like that. <laughs> I like those guys. Well, now they've come up with uh, something called Sex Lives of the Stars. Uh-oh. So they found women who slept with different famous people. Right. And they get them to tell their stories, and sometimes they reenact it with models who look incredibly like the people they're talking about right so they're gonna do this uh, thing on their website I guess where you can and they're gonna have some uh, sex expert sex therapist analyze everybody and tell you you know what their uh, sexual techniques are with their good lovers oh. bad lovers, and what it all means. Well, I would like to see that Yeah, it's interesting they come up with things like uh, Leonardo DiCaprio is practically hairless that's good to know but is well endowed and oh. an attentive lover. Oy vey. Oy vey. <laughs> you know, Fred is practically hairless. For those of you playing along at home. Is he an attentive lover? Right? An attentive lover. Yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> according Bend to over. a Los Angeles or according to Los Angeles prostitute Divine Brown, right. actor Hugh Grant would never have been arrested uh, had he not gotten so excited as she performed sex on him in his car that he repeatedly stomped on the brakes, alerting police. Oh my. <laughs> Charlie Sheen is a little selfish as a lover and could not locate the sex organs of one of his uh, girlfriends. Really? Yeah. Will they have a reenactment of you and that soap opera star at the Grateful oh, Dead concert? I didn't hear about that. What, didn't some, an incident happen there? <laughs> yeah, she's making out. Well, what about Larry, you with that guy in the bathroom in San Francisco? They don't have that either. Oh, they got to have Larry that. Larry King. they got to find the person who will talk about it. Right. <laughs> Larry King. Larry King, had, this is going to make you sick. I'm going to vomit. Has a special oral sex approach. <clears throat> well, of course. That earned him the name... The Larry Lip Technique. Oh, please. Oh, God. That's ben hideous. White is Come on. An adventurous bisexual. Really? Who's dominant in bed. Oh, I love that. And gets awesome pleasure from her sexual fulfillment. Oh, I love that. Oh, I could use that. <laughs> Michael Jordan is extraordinarily well endowed. Oh, my God. And an artful and caring lover. And doesn't he have uh, super-sized rubbers that he has to wear? I mean, remember that girl <laughs> I came in? the rubbers. Remember that girl came in? I'm telling you, he's got something right. to put in it. Yeah. Wow. I think it's that same girl who'll be talking about him. Mm -hmm. And they reenact that whole thing for you. Which Axel Michael Jordan? The guy from CBS Television? Oh, or, uh, the basketball. Okay. What's up with that? Axl Rose of Guns N' Roses. Yes. He enjoys using a whip, a ball gag, and other sexual paraphernalia. Wow, he's sick. <laughs> Matt LeBlanc. I'm not into any of that, like with chicks. I mean, yeah. I'm just happy to be banging them. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm nuts. He had a one-night stand with a stripper who says he was a flabby sexual disappointment. Who's this? Jackie. Matt LeBlanc. Oh. Oh. Matt LeBlanc. He doesn't look too happy, Matt LeBlanc. She said that he had no erotic effect on her at all. Mm. Jack Nicholson enjoys women who put on a little girl act and likes to dash around his car naked in residential neighborhoods. I love that guy. And have sex leaning against the trunk of a car. That guy's living the life I should be living. <laughs> he can do no wrong. Here's another one right. that's going to crack you up. Jerry Seinfeld stripped like a Chippendale dancer before having sex with oh. the woman who wrote the famous Sperm Bank episode of his television show. Right. And Sylvester Stallone has a penis. What is he, a chick? <laughs> is, is Jerry Seinfeld a chick? <laughs> He stripped like a Chippendales yeah, dancer? Yeah, he did a little sexy striptease. You've seen him in, in, in working out in tights. I don't get it, but... All right. <laughs> I guess the women see dollar signs when he's sprinting. Yeah. 
And what about the Sylvester Stallone has a penis pump. Get out of here. <laughs> a pe who's saying that? Uh, some woman, I guess. Oh, my God. A penis pump? And he what even asked mean? one of his dates to step on his privates to prove that he's indestructible. Oh, there is a God. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone has a penis Does pump. Does she mean an inflator or one of those things that's supposed to make you larger? Longer. No, I think, I don't know. You, it could have been the Flip Wilson thing. I don't know. No. I don't know. I need more explanation. I have to go on this website. That's right. Wow, that's terrific. So Larry King know. does oral sex. What woman would all spread her legs and allow Larry King to do oral sex? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Adrian, pump me up. It is a A penis pump. I, th I don't think he has one of those pumps. I think he, like, uh, probably meaning he can. Like that Johnny Watt Holmes thing? Yeah, like he can hold someone up with it or something. Right. I, I don't believe that. I, just, <laughs> I don't believe it. One of them. No, I want to believe it. <laughs> well, they will feature um, such stars as George Clooney, Sean Penn. Great. And old Engelbert Humperdinck and Tom Jones. Oh, I need to know about them. <laughs> <laughs> David Hasselhoff. Fantastic. <laughs> well, that sounds like a good idea. Oh, I don't know why. Sex Lives of the Stars are so interesting, but mm. got to read that stuff. Yeah. Hold your interest. Very interesting stuff. We love flying by the seat of our pants without a net. The census was taken in the year 2000, and uh, they're now analyzing the data. And what they have discovered, Howard, is blacks and whites don't live together. So uh, You know what else they've discovered? What? Uh, and I don't know if this is true. I think it might already be true in California. That white people are a minority, I think, in California. In California, but not right? in the entire country. Yeah, well, see, a lot of white people don't like that. I can't wait to be a minority. Oh, There's you a lot want of stuff I've been wanting to do. Right. I want to roll up in my car and annoy people with my music. <laughs> I want a guy next to me going, turn down that Neil Diamond, man. What's up with that? <laughs> I have a dream that one day I will stand up in a movie theater and go, run, bitch, the monster coming. <laughs> Can't wait to be a minority. <laughs> You're looking forward to it. You're going to stand up in a movie theater when you become a minority. Bitch. You got a good point there. I got Howard. I can't wait to be a minority. Finally, street hookers well, I can talk to. Right. Look, it's not going to happen <laughs> soon. Put a girl in an ankle suit, <laughs> drinking a Starbucks, and you know, talk to her about the stock market. Do you know how many white people are in this country? How many? You see, you don't even know. No, no. how many? Not there enough. Two hundred. <laughs> 70 million white people. Oh, we're never going to get country. to be minorities in this and lifetime. Do you know how many black people there are? How many? 36 million. Wow. But, black so, people, but black people aren't the only minority, though. No, but still, they're 270 million. <laughs> the of only here. one I care about, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, so don't think it's going to happen so soon. I can't wait. Well, you were saying that they did a study. I don't know how much money they wasted on this. But they did a study to find out. That black people and white people aren't living together. No matter what you do, you can't get black people and white people to live together. Well, my entire childhood was spent trying to live in a black neighborhood uh, and trying to convince white people to stay, and it's impossible. Once a couple of black people move in, that's what it. What is that? Well, I'll tell you what happens. Because I saw it firsthand. It's a white community, and then all of a sudden, a black guy moves in on the block. Yeah, the why guy, does that cause a panic? Okay. The guy living, the, the two houses next door to the black family, uh -huh. I'm sitting there going, wait a second. <laughs> I got to sell my house now, and I'll tell you why. I'm never going to be able to sell it because there's blacks there. But and it's gonna, one black. No, 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 it doesn't matter. It, the house right next door to the blacks. I'm telling you what happened, okay? Don't say all it's right, right or wrong. All right, there's, there's some faulty logic here. I know. The logic's way faulty because yeah. if everybody stood ground, no, wouldn't be, would it would be an integrated community. But what happens is you go, okay, if I sell today, I got the black. It's still a white community. No problems. I'll sell. You go and you sell, and then they show another black family the house because they can't sell it to a white guy. White family won't go won't in, move next, won't door, move to next door to a black because right. they figure, well, you know what? The price is going to go down on the house and they'll be able to resell. And no, I'm telling you, that's the way it is. I don't care what community you move. You go to Roslyn, Long Island, one of the wealthiest white communities in the world. You see, uh, there are black families living there. No one will buy the house next to the black family because they're afraid it'll go down in value or uh, never be able to sell Robert, it again. He just described my block to a T. Okay, now wait, now wait, because I lived through this. So then another black family moves in. Now, once you sell to the blacks, I'm talking about the second family mm -hmm. now. They can't tell any of their white neighbors because the white neighbors will go berserk. Exactly. 
So they sneak out in the middle of the night. In the middle of the night? <laughs> you wake up and there's you black lied. people no, living yeah. next door to you. Right, please let me tell the story, because yeah. I gave it to tell the story before you, before you even spoke. Yeah. Where I grew up, right, the houses were very close together. It had this little hurricane fence about three feet tall behind us. There was an old guy who lived there, um, probably about 70 years old or so. Nicest guy in the world. Nicest guy. My mom gets up in the middle of the night uh-huh. to get a drink of water. I'm talking 3 a.m., and there's a moving truck in the driveway. 3 a.m.? Right. 3 a.m. How do you get a moving truck to come at 3 a.m.? Because you pay extra because you don't want your, because he you doesn't don't want, want your neighbors, neighbors to, know. to know. Because if, if the neighbors, they're all going to He sold to blacks. He sold to black funny. family, but it was the funniest thing. No, like the whole, he didn't, nobody knew he had sold the house. No. No. They don't even put up a first name. No. It was a sign for his house. Right. And then after he left, you know, my mother was the only one that knew. And the rest of the neighborhood didn't even know anybody had moved. <laughs> So then that's this now. Now you have a community with three blacks, let's say. That's it. That's it. It's all. Everybody starts to say, <laughs> oh, my God, they sold to blacks. If I don't sell right now. Now, but everybody acts like there's going to be a big. Yeah. It's a mass psychosis. But, but there's a if head nobody for the hills. else sold their houses, nobody else could get in. If they just stood there. But nobody stands their ground because whoever is next door to the blacks thinks that their house now is worth less. So and, little by little, everybody next door to yeah, a black house. And you're dealing, and by the way, you're dealing in communities where the average house, at least when I was growing up, was worth 14000 when the people bought it. Right. And now the property was worth 30000 between 28000 and 30000 So these guys would sit there and go, oh, my God, I'm going to lose my, all my savings. Yeah, my everything's my equity, gonna be gone. Gonna gonna going to be gone. My equity. <laughs> so it's not a race issue; it's a real estate issue. Well, it is a race issue, but it's and, also it's real cool. estate. Yeah. Yeah. You know what, H- Howard? In in my neighborhood, we're talking about a block and a little dead end, another little block of twenty. I'd say twenty to twenty-two houses. By the time the first black family moved in, the only there were three white families left in the neighborhood. My happens par- overnight. My parents and like two other families. Yeah. It, it was in three. It years. happens overnight. I used to go to friends' homes. Friends, friends of mine. I would ring the doorbell to go play with my friend Larry. <laughs> Black people would answer the door, and they go. Wh- wh- Yesterday, Larry was there. Yeah, I go. Wh- where's Larry? They moved out. Head oh for Z Hills. Goodness. Well, did you ever, did you ever go see somebody who you could see all the obvious signs that the house was for sale? Not a sign, uh-huh. but other obvious signs that the house was for sale or had mm. been sold, and they would vehemently deny it. Oh. You'd go in and you'd see boxes, right? And the furniture had you know covers on it, and you knew no one was living there. And you'd say, "You guys moving?" "Oh no, no, we're not moving." Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, you had to keep it quiet. So anyway, that's how it happens. Well, uh, they are now saying, you know, because there's been so many efforts at uh, integration, they are amazed at how segregated the country still is. Well, because, I had the one. Uh, I had the one parent who said to me, "We are standing our ground. We are staying. We don't. Care. We're not afraid of black skin." I said, "What do you mean we are not afraid of black skin?" <laughs> what do you mean we, white man? Mom, you're not afraid of black skin. <laughs> Where I grew up, they were blacks all the time. And wah, 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 wah. You know what I meant to ask you about that? I know yeah. that your parents were the last family. To yes. Live. Why did they eventually leave? Because finally, they saw for the first time, I don't know what made it click for them, they saw that I was the one white kid in an entire sea of black people. And they saw that I was unhappy. It was the first time they were willing to look at the facts. My mother saw nothing wrong with putting me through that. Now, maybe she's right. Maybe it made me a better man. But uh, she had rose-colored glasses on. I mean, there was a lot of problems. Ahead of her time. No, she still hasn't found her time. She's still ahead of her time. I'm telling you, it's not working. Her time is about 20,000 years ahead of now in a time machine. They should put my mother in there and send her off in the space shuttle. You know, I I felt so bad. In my neighborhood, a black family, you know, moved in, and people, like, you know, paint through paint at their house and and tortured the kids, and they had to move out. Yeah. You know, it's... You know, well, that's the way it's typically done. You know what the weird thing was? <laughs> you know what the weird thing was in my neighborhood? My neighborhood yeah. was a very, like, middle-class, blue-collar neighborhood. And for the most part, when a family moved out close to a black family, for the most part, the black family that moved in made the house better. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. My family in. finally moved out when they saw that I was literally one of three <laughs> white people left and that, that I was not happy. But I would never complain about it. So you couldn't live with black people? I couldn't. And my mother even said, I'm not moving. I would stay here. It's because of you. <laughs> no, I was the failure. <laughs> and my father was like, well, I'm, uh, I'm going to get a lot less for my house. And I paid $14,000. <laughs> and these new houses we're looking at are $50,000. And I don't have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, oh, gee, I feel great. That was, you know, that yeah, was, I didn't feel like too much of a schmuck. That was my dad's deal. My dad's deal was just... 
You know what? Just let's, you know, everybody stay calm. It's all going to work Wait itself out. out. Wait out the storm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Keep yeah. waiting. You, know what? you ever see when, when like, the, uh, well, the, my the dad, yeah. circle? Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> my, dad, my dad was so proud of the fact that all the other people who left got under $14,000 because they, they had a fire sale. Uh, we were able to get, I think, 26000 for the house because oh we God. held out. Oh I just thought of a great plan for the black people, Robin. Yes. They're based on what Howard's saying. A bunch of black people who want to move up into a different neighborhood uh -huh. all chip in and buy one house. <laughs> and then knock down the value of all the other houses, move in and take over a lot. Well, well, that's what the happens. The blacks didn't think of it. No, there actually. Were speculators who thought of it. Yeah, there were, the, the, the people really? they blamed in Roosevelt were the realtors because yeah. they would target communities right. to and do this. And then they would only show houses to blacks. That's right. Because they knew there'd be tremendous turnover right. if they could turn a community yeah, they, they black. Ideas are taken. There's yeah. nothing to sell in that community see, anymore. You're not that original. Yeah, That's the good thing about you know raising kids in, in, in Manhattan because they go because you know my kid goes to school with blacks and uh, Puerto Ricans. Well, I don't know what Indians. school that is. Her father's but... Puerto Rican. <laughs> what? Her father's Puerto Rican. I know, Rican. but that's good. I, I I think that's a good thing. There's diversity in her own home. Exactly. You don't think that's good? Uh, the, what diversity? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm not no, a big fan. Not, of it. <laughs> Come on, I've been I've been involved in diversity. Yeah. It's not right. good. Didn't you go to college with with, with you know all different? Uh, no, no, no. Boston, they don't have blacks in that college. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Get out of here. No. Diversity worked for me, John. It didn't work for me. For Robin, it works. Because I went to NYU, there was every race. I believe team. everybody should just calm down. That's all. Well, Everybody should get along just with, with themselves. By themselves. Everybody say? should have their own community. So you're for segregation? No, I'm not for segregation, but I, I believe that uh, you the against, races don't get along. But are you, you're not for segregation, but are you against forced integration? No, I'm against that. It's not. It never works. I'm against all these parades. <laughs> What's going Thank on you. Parade? I am too. He's against everything. Yesterday, I'm against parades. Was it the Puerto Rican parade yesterday? No, no, no you that. missed that one. You'll know. You'll know it's Puerto Rican That's parade. No, it was the Puerto. A, no. There was some parade going on here. You'd always know when the Puerto Rican Day parade. Yeah, these yeah. parades, they close down the whole city. It's, the Puerto, it's, all parades should be banned from Manhattan. I live in West Hollywood. They have a gay parade. Yes, they got that here. Do they have oh, it here yeah. too. Yeah, it's Halloween. Sure. It's in Halloween. I just yeah. feel so left out. There's like you know, I don't. There's no parade for my sexual preference. <laughs> Why don't they have a masturbators parade? <laughs> right. I could be up there waving with one hand. You'd be the head guy. You got it. <laughs> you know, what kind of, what kind of costumes float. do you wear for that? You know those parades start in uh, those parades on Fifth Avenue start like I think the first week of June. It is the Ukrainian parade, mm -hmm. the Israeli parade. The Irish parade. I mean, it just goes. It's, there are you, groups I never knew existed. They have parades. Ugandan parade. Yeah. It's like right. stuff you never even heard of. All right, let's listen. We got. Well, we got. I was trying to make a point here when you just jumped off with your discussions about how a neighborhood is really trying to teach you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let me just hear, have this guy speak. His name is Carl Hobb. He actually studied the numbers, oh. and this is what he has to say. Who paid for this? <laughs> the, he is actually a part of the private population reference. Bureau. What's the guy's name? Carl Haub, and it's uh, number 10. Okay, I got it. Because he has something important to say. Oh, this is so funny. In many, many cases, we have simply left our cities behind. There's been some gentrification, but when you think about it, the U.S. is really one of the very few countries of the world that builds great cities and then basically walks away from them. Not true. That's exactly true, and he says oh. one of the best examples of that <laughs> is, you know, Detroit. Oh, that's true there. Detroit is a yeah. black city. Every suburb around it is white. Yeah, somebody, somebody told me that Detroit is like a big donut. Yeah. The outside of it is all white. Yeah, I, I live there. Donut. I mean, it's yeah. it's pretty frightening. I I worked in downtown Detroit, and it's, uh, it's a scary neighborhood. <laughs> but was that ever a great city? Uh, yeah, yeah, one point, yeah. There's but you know what's point. weird? Yeah, all the motor guys were there for it. Detroit, you, it's one main road like you go through, and there's all these burnt-out buildings and yeah. everything, and I had my radio station was there in a house. You go... A couple of blocks outside of Detroit, literally there's a line, and then it's called Gross Point, and it's lily white and one of the wealthiest communities you'll ever see. Yeah. Isn't that sort of like, um, isn't Washington, D.C. pretty similar? Yeah. You could go, like, Georgetown, all white, everything, but, but you go down, downtown. But two centers. Yeah. It's like the very center of the city. You know, like, it turns, it's like the Wizard of Oz. You know, like, <laughs> you cross a certain line, it's like, oh! 
Beautiful. It's Everything turns white and beautiful. Yeah. And then you have to run to the far outskirts in Maryland and Virginia. Yeah, you head for the hills. <laughs> All right. Does, what else does this guy say? Anything? Uh, I'm just saying that he said Detroit was a, a oh, perfect okay. example of that, where it has a majority population of black people now, and all of the suburbs. It's almost a completely black city, and all of the suburbs are white. So right. he left out the part of why they abandoned him. They don't just no, get no, up no, no, one no, day no, no, and go, no, no. let's all leave. It, you can't, you can't leave and then expect everything to stay fine. Yeah, he's all right. saying white people build cities and then run from them. That's all. So you got to stop doing that. We're okay. abandoning our cities and building cities in the suburbs. I'll have a white people meeting. Please, please, call the white people together. When she would do the news, she knew the right stories to get me going. You know, she knew how to hit my butt. What else is in the news, Robin? Whew. <laughs> I know, I'm pretty exhausted. <laughs> oh, boy. And I've got to go to the bathroom like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> you mean you've let out everything that was ahead of it? Yeah, I, I've been holding it in since Cindy Lauper. Anyway, what else is in the news? Well, people have been um, requesting that I do this story. You mean you don't want to do it and they're making I, you do it? I have it? been trying to avoid doing this story. Well, then don't, don't do it. People keep uh, asking me to do this story. It is an interesting story. All right. This was, um, now I'm not going to remember what state this ha happened in. Make up a state. Let's do it like Mad Libs. <laughs> uh, Wyoming. I think this might have been in Texas. Texas, fine. After breaking into a Fremont nursing home on uh, this particular morning, because this has been a while ago now, a man stripped, smeared his body with human feces, and then raped and sodomized the corpse of an 83-year-old woman. A corpse? Yes. Police okay. arrested Archie Whitehurst, who is 28, after they discovered him at about 1 a.m. in the woman's room at the Mission Boulevard Convalescent Home. Why did he smear feces all over himself, do you think? That's a wonderful question, Has Howard. anybody interviewed this guy yet? And no one has interviewed him to find out why the smearing of the feces. I can understand stripping. I can understand the 83-year-old corpse here. <laughs> I mean, as weird as that sounds, I mean, not that I would make love to an 83-year-old corpse. But the feces, I don't understand. Her family was greatly troubled by the whole thing because they had, you know, had this wonderful experience of standing around the woman's <laughs> bedside that evening while she drifted into... Yeah. Death. And she got away with you living know, a long life. It was a very life. spiritual moment for right, them. Right, and, right, And because the nursing home couldn't uh, make funeral arrangements uh, to get the body out of a hospital, the convalescent home that night, right. they simply covered the body right. and closed the room. Apparently, somebody had left a window open, however. Yeah, that's what you, but who, you'd figure who would have to worry. Yeah, you know, they just said, you know, hey, let's leave a window open, mm. cover the body. You know, they completely covered her, including her head. She's probably like up in heaven going, I can't believe I got through a really nice life. Nobody ever bothered me. I've never had any, I was never molested or raped. As a woman in our society, it's very difficult to get through life. And I got through the whole thing. I even died peacefully. Uh -huh. My whole family was around when I died. Right. I, it wasn't Very painful. Nice. It was just, it was easy. I died of old age, like everyone wants it in their sleep. And now this. Look now, at what's happening. Here's a guy smearing himself with feces, making love to my corpse. <laughs> it's just not right. Well, um. As the, Sam Kennison said, Robin. Yes. It never ends. <laughs> oh, oh, it never ends. That's oh, right. He, that's what he said. Oh! <laughs> Well, what was interesting to me was the nurses discovered this whole thing when uh, the call light in the woman's room, the woman was alone, the call light came on. Now, yes. Of course, a corpse can't ring the nurse. Exactly. So they walked down the hall, a whole bunch of them walked down the hall to see what was going on. And when they opened the door, they saw that her body had been moved. It wasn't the way they left it. So <laughs> then they ran back and they called police. Police came, broke into the room, and there was the guy laying there in that condition. He was euphoric. And had he actually made love? I mean, had he finished? He was done. He was sleeping. Wow. He was like a baby. <laughs> and when the police burst in, of course, he awoke and he tried to fight them, so they had to subdue him. Just hey, imagine you. the fun they were having. Uh, subduing a guy <laughs> smeared in feces. Yeah. And initially, now, this man's defense was that the woman had consented to sex. Oh, is that right? Yeah. He thought that she was just sleeping. He didn't know she was dead, apparently. Oh, okay. And he was in the room for between 15 and 45 minutes. He was unemployed, and he did have a relative who used to work at the hospital. 
Do you think the cops keep the handcuffs that they cuff that guy with, or do they get rid of them? I think they, they're they metal. They can be sterilized. Really? Yeah. So, uh, now you can stop faxing me that story. I've done yeah, it. Yeah, we've done it. <laughs> we've done it all right. <laughs> Thought she was alive. Oh, goodness. But, uh, you know, it, you're right. It just never ends. No, it doesn't. You can't get out of here without some adversity. Maybe that's how I'll finally get you, Robin. <laughs> You're going to wait that long? You think they'll wash her before they bury her? I hope so. I hope so, man. You don't want to be buried in that condition. No. Yeah. <laughs> Got to scrub down. Oh, dear. So let's see what else is going on. That's cold, man. That's a horrible thing to have happen to you. <laughs> really is. You're listening to, and that's what's happening, a Stern Show News Retrospective. I didn't want to plan anything. I knew what I had to do. I just relied on the other people to know what they needed to do, and Robin knew what to do. Uh, and that's why, to me, Robin was always with the show and key. Now playing on Howard 100, Howard 101, and SiriusXM.com. By the way, uh, sitting here is a mystery guest, Robin, who's come in from <laughs> far away, come off a rock tour. Really? Mm-hmm. That's right. And wants to say hello to you and offer you a gift and mystery uh, voice. I didn't say anything about offering a gift. Oh. Uh, she should buy a gift? I was going to come down and give her something for free. Well, now you gave, you, now you gave yourself away. Gene Simmons of Kiss. Oh, boy. Hi, Robin. How are Hi you? Hi there, Gene. How are Looking you? Looking sexy as ever. Well, thank you. Unbelievable. 23,740 mm -hmm. women that I slept with. Never once with Robin. <laughs> Why is that? She could have been 23,741. I don't know. She never gave me the chance. I don't know I why. I never like that number. I've never. <laughs> Are you waiting to be 25? Are you waiting to be special? 25,000? Well, it's good to see you. And also here is Craig Gass of, uh, of uh, Comedy Legend. Since when did the two of them start palling around? Gene yeah, Simmons in the room and... together. Yeah. <laughs> They're attached to the hip, those guys. And somehow Craig got himself on Sex in the City this Sunday night. What are you doing? I'm dating, I'm dating one of the girls on the show. No. Which one do you date? Whoa. Uh, Miranda. And that's as much as I is can Is that tell. the redhead? Yeah. Ooh. Oh. And that's like the... Uh, it's a, The ugly one. I wanted to tell you what, what happens on the episode. She's cute, man. Yeah. I spent a lot of time with her. She's but she's cute. pregnant and you do a pregnant chick? Uh, she just had a kid on the show. I mean, yeah, she just had a kid and you do she her? She just had a kid on the show and... Uh, and no yeah. kidding, so that's a big break for you. Oh, it's... it's Are you the fat guy she's into? You saw the episode, the uh, preview from last I week? saw the preview. Yeah. That's you? We made a Weight Watchers <laughs> meeting. <laughs> Wait a minute. How oh, are that's you great. getting fat guy roles? <laughs> I, you yeah. know what? Every guy that auditioned for this thing was a huge guy. <laughs> And then the, I came in and, and read for it, and then I started putting on some weight. And then they took a break because Sarah Jessica Parker was pregnant. Oh. And I put on another 20 pounds during the break. <laughs> Good move. <laughs> so you're, you're Hollywood fat because you're fat yeah, enough that you look right. fat on TV. Right. right. Thick. Yeah. And it's not disturbingly fat where we wouldn't believe it. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm New Jersey fat. <laughs> you know, Artie, you might be too fat now to get the to fat, get guy, the fat role. guy role. You're, too just, you're like Dom DeLuise fat. Uh, you know what I mean? They have to build a whole vehicle around you. God damn it. <laughs> a couple other quick phone calls, too. Um, uh, okay. This is for Robin. Go ahead. Who is this? This is the ghost of Robin's father. <laughs> the ghost of Robin's father. Robin, wow. Yes, Dad. I'll never forget the day I changed your diaper. <laughs> I can still smell you on my fingers, girl. Oh, oh, man, that's so sweet. Oh. Happy birthday to the Robins. <laughs> it's that booty I be knocking. Oh. You like fresh watermelon without them seeds. And oh. I crack your black ass until it bleeds. Oh, yeah. Oh, my so God. You are disgusting. Horrible. Sounds like Sal to me. <laughs> You're a racist. <laughs> now, very sweet. Robin's first, her dad calling oh, in. That's a, a lie. <laughs> well, that's true. He didn't go that far with you. <laughs> oh, my God. But he only got the third base. He only base. got the third base. <laughs> Sometimes this show is a little too edgy. <laughs> Even for you. <laughs> Artie's a ball. Robin's, <laughs> Robin's first. Just because you don't get the fat guy roles anymore, don't take it out on us. Yeah, sorry, I'm a little irritable. <laughs> <laughs> And what's this? You run around the station to say you turned down a development deal for hundreds of thousands of dollars? I didn't run around. I just told John. Oh, that's like running that's around. It's like, no, yeah, I'm finding what out. What do you about mean? That. Why would you turn down a development deal for hundreds of thousands of dollars? It wasn't hundreds of thousands of dollars, but it, uh, it because I got it would have meant that I couldn't work with any other network. HBO wants to do a couple movies, 
What, yeah. what, what, what are you suddenly talking? you're the hottest guy in show business? No, I, I can't just find no. Job. There's just I, I, <laughs> no. There's just I've been I've been offered to. There's other things that are in development. And Look this would have been I would have had to go with this one network and and there's other stuff I want to do. Turning stuff down. Look at that other stuff he wants to do. Isn't that weird? I, and you know it's funny. It's hard to believe when a guy who's working at Uncle Funnies is gonna uh, turn down a hundred grand. I know. I I lived with a guy in New York, uh, Mitch Hedberg, who turned who you really want to admit to that. <laughs> well, he's a great he's a great comedian, but he right. he got offered like five times what I was offered for right. for his holding deal, and I know that it's not a lot of money, you know. Is that right. a holding deal? He had a holding deal. Oh, a uh, development deal. It was always a development deal. Okay. Mine was a holding deal. Look at these guys talking show business. I don't even know what a holding <laughs> deal development. When I came deal. in here a year and a half ago, I'd never made more than ten thousand dollars in a year. Look at you. Ever. Now you're on fire. I didn't even I didn't even know I was broke. I didn't realize that was that was poverty. Well, you're turning stuff down, and that's good. Uh, Robin, what's in the news? Okay. And there's more callers for you, but I have to weave a beautiful web. Ah, this is a song for you. I think this guy is putting on his dancing shoes. <laughs> his dancing shoes. I think he's pouring a bowl of cereal over his head. <laughs> Turn on the tube. These guys turned down a development deal with the same <laughs> network that Craig Gass turned down. Well, they have other things they want to do. <laughs> they have other things right they want to do. They want to go to Uncle Funny's. All I get it. <laughs> I get his calls from Gay Ramon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Not even Dave. regular Ramon. It's an exciting day. Dave Awful. Chappelle is here. That was another holding deal. Wasn't Isaac it? on the hate boat and Gay Ramon. That's my. <laughs> Gay Ramon want to propose a holding deal? <laughs> <laughs> Robin, what's in the news? Okay. Did you hear about the people in uh, New Orleans who fell into the shark tank? No. no. Oh, this was a great story. I'm surprised you didn't know about this. Uh, being up on sharks the way you are, of course, they have, uh, you know, one of those aquarium type places where they have the, the animals performing. And these people were standing over the shark tank on this platform. Hmm. And all of a sudden it just gave way. And about 10 of them actually fell into the tank. Luckily, it scared the shark. <laughs> And the sharks, you know, swam over to the other side of the pool, and these people were rescued. There were some injuries, uh, none of them serious, so uh, the people did get out alive. But sitting there, you know, watching your loved ones paddling around in a pool of sharks, <laughs> I'm sure is not the most fun. I never get to see anything cool like that when I go to these uh, yeah, animal World shows. Never came I went to watch dolphins, nothing happened. Well, nothing's going to happen with dolphins. I know I go to see sharks, and all I see is sharks. The thing I love about to uh, dolphins is everybody talks about how smart they are. They're not, by the way. <laughs> I, I did that thing where you swim with the dolphins. First of all, I was freezing my ass off. I had the only cold day. And it, it really, they didn't seem that smart to me. Well, they'd be really dumb if they were humans. I mean, no, no, no. They say, everybody tells you, dolphins are smarter than humans. No, But they don't not. do anything to prove that. They're not smarter than humans. <laughs> Can a dolphin make a hook rug or something like that? <laughs> what else you got in the news, Rob? So anyway, those people fell in and they got out. And then, of course, there was the story of the woman, we talked about this earlier today, who had to drink her own breast milk. And now she's suing <laughs> because that was so wrong. That's odd. She says it was embarrassing because she was made to drink the breast milk in front of the other passengers. The security at JFK made this woman drink her breast milk. Uh, she was carrying a baby, so it wasn't like she shouldn't have had breast milk. Yeah, well, why don't she just give the baby the milk and save herself the milk? That's what I think. You feed the baby. Why don't they let the baby drink the breast milk? <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, we're still de trying to determine whether uh, we should um, bomb Iraq, go to war with them. That's a yes. I, I, I vote yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're going. Yeah, because... Nobody's listening to your vote. No? No. Uh, I can make a phone call to the KISS Army if you'd like. Yeah, let the KISS Army go get them. <laughs> <laughs> we can send our... We can deploy our troops over there if you'd like. I, I, I vote yes. I think it's time to have some fun. 
Well, the whole problem is that uh, they think Saddam Hussein is developing weapons of mass destruction. Right. And even our uh, Secretary of Defense says, you know, now we're not talking about even the killing of a thousand people or ten thousand people. We're probably talking about mass destruction on the level of hundreds of thousands if this man gets to develop what he wants and he would use them so what are we sitting around for waiting we have to do something to stop this threat well shortly after Rum donald rumsfeld made that statement saddam hussein held a speech of his own and uh, he refers to the united states indirectly and says that if u.s troops come into iraq they will fail in their mission and die. See, the Why does he taunt us like that? The forces of evil will carry their suffering on their backs, die in disgraceful failure. Don't they know they're supposed to lower his voice and the interpreter's <laughs> voice is supposed to be... One at a time, you guys. Yeah. Who can understand that? What he is saying is... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Obviously, the Iraqis did this tape. Mm -hmm. yeah. He also says uh, that uh, U.S. troops will die on Iraqi soil. C4. One of the lessons of recent and distant history that all empires and bearers of the coffin of evil, whenever they mobilize their evil against the Arab nation or against the Muslim world, they were themselves buried in their own coffin. <laughs> okay. Buried in their own coffin. So, uh, Does that really say that in that Bible? <laughs> I have no Sounds idea. Like I don't see history going that way. It's on page eight. <laughs> I say we buried their ass. Sounds like they taped it over an old copy of I Love Lucy. It's like an old crappy recording. Hi, everybody. Craig Gas is coming up with funnies. Jesus. You're going to be laying that stuff out for us? <laughs> no. <laughs> the comedy story. Apparently story. not. Uh, I think so the development anyway. deal just got dropped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd grab that 100000 <laughs> uh, Israel has uh, continued to uh, bear the brunt of uh, most terrorist activity. Yesterday, a young Israeli woman who survived last week's bombings at the Hebrew University that killed seven people, including five Americans, came forward to make a passionate plea on American TV. D1. Yeah. The whole world is being quiet about all this. Very disturbing. About all it. About that whole Israel thing. You know, no one's really rallying to their cause or, you know, the United States is... Well, let this woman make a plea. Why should we do that? <laughs> She's not Pam Anderson. <laughs> In this show, that's all we want to hear yeah, from. Is this chick hot? She topless. If I had come back alive from this hell, it is because... By the way, I saw her picture. She's hot, this chick. See, she is hot. She can make a statement on this show. Yeah. Yeah. The picture they originally had of her in the paper, she had she'd just been through an explosion. Her face was a little messed up. Yeah, she had been bombed. But they dialed her up for this picture, boy. She looked good. I want to tell the world we have to fight against terrorism. And I have not come here to ask for pity. And uh, here she talks about living in Israel and how it can be extremely difficult at times. D2. What's her cup size? Oh. <laughs> can we fart on You're her? afraid of going on buses to go to eat, to go to the supermarket, to do shopping. 34C? Things would mean to resign. And I, I don't know how anyone can live in Israel with what's going on. They're not allowed to fight back. If they fight back, the whole world condemns them. I don't even know how the hell you do it. That's got to be crazy. Robin on the phone. Happy birthday from Mystery Ooh. Caller. Go ahead. Yeah, this is Daniel Carver, the KKK oh, guy. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> I, I, I'm calling to wish Robin a happy birthday. Oh, stop it. Now, that's nice. What do you mean, stop it? <laughs> he must have something else to say. I know the N-word's going to slip in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, very no, no, it, uh, Howard told me the reason he pushed me on so much is because Robin likes me. So I just this week for a happy birthday. Daniel, I, you know what? Well, I you see. Know, uh, if you're just saying sweet. happy birthday, I'm going to accept that. Well, let me say something, Daniel. And this is the What's first that? time I think in our history of having you on the show, I feel like you like Robin. I guess, well. I Oh, right. You're trying to make me say the N-word. <laughs> <laughs> come on. <laughs> Don't wait a second. You're trying to make me say it, ain't you? Now, Daniel. Come on, Dan. Come on, Dan. Please. Give I, us some love, Dan. She ain't never done nothing to me. What? 
she ain't never done nothing to me, and they, and they say she's the one who wants me on there all the time. So. Well, here's the dilemma. If you're a Ku Klux Klan guy. I know. He's torn. If you're here's like, a here's a dile one dilemma that I can see. Here's the quandary. You're a guy, you're one of the top guys in the Ku Klux Klan. Top guy. You're a top guy, you've met with a lot of success, you've certainly uh, been uh, responsible for many recruitments and everything. You're a top fundraiser. Here you find yourself liking Robin. And if you're going to throw all the black... That doesn't mean he wants to keep you in the I like, hey, I like uh, George Jefferson. You do. You know, <laughs> had him on our time. But I like him. Yeah. You know that's Eddie character, Murphy. Right? Eddie Murphy, you like? Yeah. People, you, you know, know earn their own living. Even though Robin's riding on your bike, she's probably all right for a black girl. Right. Daniel, Daniel, you know people are going to start calling you names if you keep this up. I don't. Hey, I ain't never cared what people call me. Are you afraid that uh, the KKK themselves will come down on you? I ain't, hey, you? I ain't afraid of nothing. I'm but, old enough. I ain't got to be afraid no more. But aren't you afraid that if the Ku Klux Klan finds out you like Eddie Murphy and Robin? <laughs> oh, they lock them, too. Daniel, it's, and George Jefferson. Daniel, it's come to our attention that you saw Pluto Nash over the weekend. <laughs> well, could you lose your robe if they, in fact, found out that you are wishing Robin happy birthday? No. No, I can't lose nothing. So you really feel this you way? You will not be stripped of your hood. Yeah. No, I, I can't lose nothing for, for for being honest. That's what everybody ever do is, is be honest. I mean, if I want to wish her happy birthday, that's my business. All right. Now, would you let? Now, let's say tomorrow, getting rid of all the black people in this country meant Robin would have to be gone. Yeah, she'd have to go on with them. Her and Eddie Murphy, <laughs> her George and Jefferson, him. all of them have to go on. They'd be better off over in Africa. Daniel, you know George Jefferson isn't a real person. <laughs> yeah, he is. I met him. Yeah. Oh, you met him. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, Daniel, I think what you're saying is if Robin had to go back to Africa, you would write to her. No, I wouldn't write to her. You would not. I, I'd, I'd hope she's doing well over there with her own kind, but I wouldn't write with her. Right. She'd be better off than we would, too. I you know what? I'm going to call this progress. Now, you say Robin would do Thank better you. in Africa. But so she would be with her own kind, you but, know. Yes, but how would I'm she? I'm over see? here with my own kind. Well, she, <laughs> she wouldn't be better off financially because you're keeping her up. But, but but how would she survive in Africa? She doesn't I know how to kill a, kill a lion. I mean, come on. Well, they're, they they always returning back to their their natural ways, and then she'd learn fast. What if one you what, turn a lion back loose in the jungle? He learns real quick. Jesus. So you're saying uh, right? she's domesticated, but once she goes back in the jungle, I so return to the. Wait a minute! Remember that lion, Elsa? She had trouble readjusting. <laughs> but she did. <laughs> but it's come right back to you, huh? Yeah. Now, Never. what if a person is only one eighth black? Would they uh, have to go? If you've got one drop of black blood in you, you need to go on back because you're considered a black. Well, let me ask you something else, Daniel. What's that? There's a lot of famine over in Africa. There's a lot of uh, disease. You might could help them over. There. You might. You you being educated and everything, you might could learn them to plant the seeds instead of eating them. <laughs> you could learn them that. Yeah, now, Daniel, what do you mean your fantasy is to see Robin and Wheezy get it on? <laughs> I, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. So, Daniel, I'm impressed at the progress that you, as a, as a key member of the Ku Klux Klan, one of the driving forces behind the organization, would call up and wish a black woman happy birthday. That's truly progress in our country, is it not? That's progress, ain't it? It sure well, is. Well, I have to ask Daniel. I never thought I'd live to see the day. Happy we birthday, Nick. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if I can't say it, you will, huh? Yeah. Happy birthday, you Nick. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you Nick. You, 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 you black. <laughs> Let's see your he, he better not say it. He'll be out of a job. By the way, Robin, in your honor, this is yes. the first appearance where Daniel Carver so far has, has not, not used has the N-word. Yeah. So, uh, you know, well, your this birthday is... got you a one way ticket to Africa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Enjoy your trip. And hey, take please. two Jews with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this has got to be killing you, Daniel. Oh, my goodness. This has got to be killing you. I mean, this is. Are you biting your tongue? No, no. Around here, we got such a big problem with Mexicans. We. We got the blacks on the back burner right now. Oh, right. we heard that the other day. The nigger replacements are really cold. Hey, she said it. <laughs> 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 hey. She knows. Even if I don't say it, she still knows, huh? I have a new show, Having Fun with the Clan. 
<laughs> the colored said nigger. You know what? We got a new TV show here. <laughs> Welcome to Half Hour of White Power. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to get a development deal. <laughs> <laughs> and turn it down. Well, oh, Daniel, me. I am impressed with your phone call. I'm impressed with you today. And, and I'm going to accept your good wishes. Isn't that nice? And uh, here is a black a black woman a black and, a white. and a white a black and a white talking on the phone and doing it civilly. All right. Fifty years old is Robin. Daniel, what do you make of that? <laughs> She's fifty. Well, I'm fifty two. I'm older than her. Okay. <laughs> what can she expect as a fifty year old woman? Is this well, is this I don't know. The life expectancy of, of blacks, she can't expect to live much longer. Much longer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he laughs when he says that. Part. Yes. So, so. No wonder uh, he's so happy about. My hey, life. did you know I met Fred Sanford once too? <laughs> well, Daniel, you're 52. You're going strong. Robin's 50. She's going strong, and. A lot of people said they never thought they'd live to see the day where you would call up and wish Robin a happy birthday, and it's happened. Yeah. Well, Daniel, you've done this show many, many years, and you've never wished me a happy birthday. Oh. Never have. Yeah. Yeah. All right, then. Maybe I'll get another one of them Emmys for that or something. I guess so. <laughs> well, this Emmys. is groundbreaking, what you're doing. Today. It truly is. Well, Daniel, thank you, and... Uh, I'd like to say good luck to you, but I don't know what you're <laughs> what, up to. Yeah. <laughs> Would he be getting the good you wish luck? the good luck off there. I wish you, 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 you happy. You don't have to push yourself on the spot. You, you, you wish me all the luck you want to in person. That? Daniel, I never thought I'd see the day where you wish Robin a happy birthday. I'm almost thinking you're calling from the Martin Luther King Center. <laughs> no. no, I'm over here on top of the house trying to make a living. Right. Listen, Daniel, good luck getting rid of the Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, how do you... Yeah, well, good them, luck Mexicans, with that. them Mexicans are going to destroy this country. So you can they already it. outnumber the blacks around here. Yeah, all and, right, uh, let's not get them going. Right, right, Jesus, uh, it was so nice. Know, it's ridiculous. You're ignoring the black population, and we're hurt. Yeah, I mean, you know, while you're busy with the Mexicans, the blacks are getting away with murder. Well, they've always got away with it, like oh, OJ. All right. Well, <laughs> we're planning our comeback, buddy. <laughs> while, while you're busy with them rascally Mexicans. They ain't coming back. Once the, Mex <laughs> once the Mexicans and blacks start fighting each other over a little bit of welfare, we stand back and watch. No, nah, we're teaming up. <laughs> we're coming right? out you, the you can't team up. You ain't, there ain't enough welfare for OJ. Oh, uh, yeah. Well... Listen, uh, Daniel, Daniel, you're breaking up. Daniel, let's leave it as happy birthday, Robin. <laughs> yeah, let's not get okay. into the politics, All right, Daniel, okay? thank you, and Good. go back to having fun. <laughs> All right. All right, Daniel. All right, bye. Yeah, Daniel uh, Carver, I got to say, Robin, wow. he did not say the N-word once. Now, there's a surprise. <laughs> yeah. Now, that, you know, come on. I know you. You know we're looking for progress here. I think we just saw something Let's happen. Let's look for it. Baby Let's steps. <laughs> baby steps. <laughs> Glimmer Let's of hope. Baby grab steps. Grab at every. Oh, 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 oh. I have to tell you though that once I think Tanya was so happy with the performance of the show and yeah. when the cameras went off, we were doing the Channel Nine show. He almost jumped up and hugged me. Oh. <laughs> See, that would have been immediate excommunication from the clan. And I said, Daniel, don't forget your. Yeah, that's like. The, you know, oh, oh, happy birthday. No, 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 no. <laughs> happy birthday. No. I mean, Robin. Uh, this is a clan. That is the first time he's actually referred to me by name or anything. Oh, that's Sir, you are in the clan? Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, what the hell is wrong with Daniel Carver? <laughs> we shouldn't be wishing her a happy birthday. I'm... All he should be doing. It's congratulating you on keeping that nigger in the cage for so many years. Well, let me tell you, Klansman. <laughs> uh, Mr. Klansman. Mr. Klansman. We haven't won him over. Don't ruin the good spirits of the day. Robin, what else is in the news? Oh, my goodness. I am just overwhelmed. <laughs> What a show I have. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Overwhelmed. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That was a moment for the archives. Yes. By the way, this just in. Louis Farrakhan just kissed a white woman. <laughs> Police are looking for a teenager who vanished with a two-year-old boy. She was babysitting. <laughs> Stop that. George C.K., come on. teen had been arrested for a similar incident last year. So why? Why would someone else leave their child with this woman? The mother, who was 21, returned to the park at 1 to find her son and this woman missing, but it was not immediately clear how long this woman, you know, how long she had gone. 
And I think the mother took quite a little while to call the police as well. They are still looking for that teenager and the little boy. I'm a little distracted because I keep thinking that Daniel just hung up the phone and he's probably saying the N-word over and over because <laughs> yeah, he didn't say it. Because he hasn't said it for like 10 minutes straight. <laughs> I'm behind on my quota. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is probably in the house yelling and screaming. <laughs> Honey, one second, wait. Nigger, 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 nigger. He might fall off that roof. You watch out for Mexicans. I'm going to go yell for a while. <laughs> yeah, you keep watch. Uh, watch outside that window. They're snaky. <laughs> we need to take a break, Robin, okay. on your birthday. I yes, because I need to regroup. That well, was amazing. I was hoping we My would have... My favorite was planting the seeds and then eating them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're going to take a break, and we'll be back right after these words. How lucky are we to have Dave Chappelle sitting in the studio... How lucky am I? America's number one comic. America's sweetheart. Eyes America's are sweetheart. Hate both, baby. When are you doing a TV show or something? When are we going to see you on some? Man, actually, I just got me a job. I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna have a show on uh, Comedy Central of all places. And what are you gonna do on that? It's a weird show, man. It's like uh, it's hard to explain. It's kind of like I'm illustrating my joke book, not cartoons, but like I'm doing weird stuff, like I'm roots comes out with a DVD, so we show the bloopers from Roots and all this crazy stuff like this. <laughs> so what do you got to do? Just go in there and record stuff and like not even really be a part of it? No, I'm in it. It's like uh, it's like it's like shorts though. It's like uh, I'm just doing shorts. Not I don't want to say sketch. I hate the word sketches and skits and all this crazy. It's yeah. like shit. I don't understand this new show you're doing. It's sketches. Yeah, it, it's hard to explain. Sounds man. like you hate it. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> It's me and my buddy, man. Me and my buddy writing every episode. Me, oh. Me and my buddy row half baked with. All right. And I've been just having some fun, man. So that'll be on starting, I think, in January. I start shooting in September, so I'm going to... Where are you going to shoot that? I'm going to move back to the city for this one. To oh, Manhattan? Cool. Yeah, yeah. I want to come down and watch you shoot it. Yeah, man. As Invite a matter of fact, all. I think we're going to start uh, doing it. Like, we're going to show them once a week just at a club, you know. Like, right. Like Carolina or something. Well, let me know when you do oh, it. Cool. Yeah, I'll definitely let you know. We like to watch people do shows. Yes, yeah, it's, it's dope, man. It's fun, man. Before they come on television, that's yeah. when we like to. We don't like to. We feel if we see them on television, we're like everyone else. <laughs> no, I'll give you the advanced copies. <laughs> and Dave is the funniest stand-up alive right now. Yeah. Yeah. Which character is saying that? <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> I was just saying it. Too. <laughs> How about Sam Kinison saying that? <laughs> you know, I love Dave Chappelle. He's the best. <laughs> there you Chappelle. go. That's now, better. Yeah. Oh, now we care. I'm in hell! <laughs> Jesus Christ, what am I ever going to develop my own act? You got a website? Now I'm building it, actually. Yeah, there you I'm go. meeting with a, a plethora of computer geeks, and they hook me. There you go. Yeah, I'll, help you. I'll help you out with that. World Wide Web. Yeah, I'm trying to get on that web thing, man. <laughs> Just heard about it? Yeah, that, that web thing is really making moves. Well, it's hard for Dave. When he's home, he has to tend to the crops. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mel, there's a guy. You were talking yesterday mm -hmm. about eventually retiring to a farm. Yeah. He's got a farm, right? I keep eating the seeds. <laughs> <laughs> when you people going to learn? Plant them. Don't eat them. The seeds, the seeds don't, don't eat them. them. We'll have to teach you how to plant them. <laughs> I'm having lunch with George Jefferson. <laughs> this is a conviction this guy had. Like. You going to give up the farm life? Nah, I'm keeping my farm. Like, I mean, it's only 12 episodes a year. I figure I have the rest of the year kicking on the farm. But I miss New York. You know, it's like... New York, I get my dose of culture, and then Ohio, I just go out there and chill, you know. Right. And but he's like the black version of Green Acres. Yeah. I really am. So I ain't got no pig. I <laughs> uh, see. I think you ought to do a reality show. You know, the black Mr. Haney. <laughs> now you think I'd be? It'd be a pretty boring show. You watch me play PlayStation. You don't grow any crops. Nah, man. But you've been out in Ohio so long. I got to figure you're scared of all the black people in New York. It's gonna be hard for you to assimilate. Nah, man. He's rather tough. As Daniel said, you get right back in. Uh, yeah, so you'll revert. I fall right. You'll fall right back in. Yeah, you'll revert. Once I get back around my own kind, man. <laughs> you'll start acting that way. I'll be riding lines in That's no time. That's right. You know, he is the most stable comedian I know too. That's right. He has a home life. He's got a home life. He's Who's not, like, talking? Most comedians. Can, you, can Sam Kinison say it? Please. Or Al Pacino. Have Al Pacino Please. say it. Al Pacino's baby. Yeah, Al Pacino is awesome. Yeah, I got to tell you. I, I didn't know when you guys were going to get around to me. Because uh, I wanted to wish Kelly Ripa a happy 50th birthday. Kelly Ripa? Hey, you're not Kelly Ripa? <laughs> I thought that... Uh, 
I'm sorry. Well, you got a nice rack, whoever you are. <laughs> I can have breakfast, lunch, and dinner right there, baby. How's things uh, going you know for you? You know what I'm thinking of. Oh. How's Al Pacino's things? baby. Who, how are things going for you? It's going great. I get laid all the time. You get laid all the time? Yeah, I got to ask you, though. Do you uh, really know what that is? Uh, I know that there's uh, something happens. All right, you caught me. I don't know. What it is. <laughs> but tell me what's going on with you. Tell me what's going on with Robert De Niro. What Just do you mean? Me that. What's his deal? What's with him and the black girls? He loves black women. Has he ever dated a broad who wasn't black and all his kids? What? <laughs> my voice is starting to crack. All right, you know, why don't you rest? And, Robin, do the rest of the news, please. All right, Ozzy Osbourne. Everybody's now taking responsibility for that show, Howard. That's become the new thing. I told you the other day that there's a guy who's suing Ozzy saying he came up with that idea in the year 2000. Now there's a company called Threshold TV Incorporated, and they claim that the family stole the idea for a show identical to the one on MTV and that the network knew about it. Isn't it funny that I actually came up with the idea for that show yeah. and presented it to Ozzy on the air, and I have tape of it, and these guys have the nerve to sue over that? I yeah. guarantee you I can uh, get rid of those cases in two seconds because I'm the guy who came up with it. All they have to do is have you testify. Yep. And how about those kids? Those kids That's are really fugly, sorry. don't you think? Oh, what do you say? The son looks like a gay Pugsley. <laughs> well, you're jealous because you're Al Pacino's son and you don't have your own <laughs> show. see how you turn well, I, know I don't look like that daughter. I mean, she's got that, what, Papa Don't Preach? Yeah. She'll be singing a song like, hey, Daddy, how about some lipo? <laughs> wow. You are jealous of other oh, famous children, yeah, aren't you? Giant That's shoot. right. That's right. right. <laughs> Screw them. <laughs> All right. What, when they start shooting the new Osborns, man? It's already started, hasn't now, it? I seen the first episode when uh, Jack was watching um, Half Baked. That made me feel pretty bad. Yeah, your oh. movie. Yeah, it felt pretty bad. Gee, everybody zeroed in on that. Only Dave. Only Dave. Right. Um... Alec Baldwin, he was here uh, on the air the other day on uh, the phone complaining about the things that are written about him in the tabloids. And page six is uh, mostly his problem, but now page six points out that even the star is doing stories of um, an unflattering nature about Alec Baldwin. They say that he wanted this, uh, he was at a silent auction somewhere out on Long Island, and he had his eye on this Norman Rockwell print, but the minimum bid was 4000 and it was written on a little sheet of paper, and they say they actually saw Alec Baldwin scratch out the 4000 and put 3000 No. As the minimum bid, well, so that he could get it. I don't know. That doesn't sound right to me. <laughs> Ralph Sorrell is on the air. Do. Hey now. What is it, Ralph? Quickly. Hey, you know, I saw uh, Dave on. Uh, Dave was on Conan last night. Okay. Mm -hmm. He was hilarious there. It, you know, he he had done his bit, and then he's on the other side of the couch. And uh, Isaac Mizrahi, the designer, is on. Who's, who's oh, clearly yeah. who's clearly gay? You know, he's talking with an act. You know, affected and all this stuff. So he's going through his interview, and at some point he says something like, he, he alludes that he's gay, he's like as a homosexual man or something like that. And Dave, <laughs> and Dave falls over on the other side of the couch and goes, you're gay? What? <laughs> <laughs> Wish I'd seen that. That's but it was funny. on at four in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> it's really funny. All right, thank, thank you, Ralph. Thank you for telling us about it. <laughs> Ralph, oddly enough, was up to see that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how. But... Uh, how are you awake for work this morning? <laughs> I, I don't know. It's just, I'm not, usually not up that late, but... <laughs> That's right. You're so uh, disciplined. By the way, Ralph, uh, not that you don't have every day off, but today you have off, too, because I'm ill. What? Don't come over. Don't come over. Did you get that message? No. Oh, that's good. But my phone my phone lines are all screwed up. Yeah, well, don't don't come over because I'm sick. Really? Yes. What am I going to do now? <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, erase your answering Thanks, machine. Man. <laughs> you try to call Ralph, and the answering machine says it's full. Come on, he's so busy. When would he have time to do that? <laughs> Ralph, commence drinking. <laughs> uh, a woman who went in for a tummy tuck wound up dead. Mm. A New Whoa. Jersey woman who wanted a tummy tuck to boost her self-confidence died during Hey, the don't procedure. do this story on the air, because Why? then women who are going to get tummy tucks will be scared. <laughs> and believe me, they need them. <laughs> on July 23rd, Wendy <laughs> Nunez, a 28-year-old mother of three, Wendy walked Nunez. into an Elizabeth, New Jersey office, the office of Dr. Jose Lopez, a plastic surgeon. <laughs> That's not funny. What? what well, I mean... Happening? Dr. Jose Lopez screwed up? Are you what are you kidding? saying? Are you saying that anybody named yes. Jose Lopez couldn't yeah, be a good doctor? Saying. Please. That's that's hey, outrageous. Hey, 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 hey. That's so wrong. Right. Go ahead, Robin. Anyway. 
<laughs> they uh, say, you know, that uh, he put her under to do this uh, tummy tuck. <laughs> <laughs> But we say she's good looking enough to be in an open casket. I tuck your tummy. And I, I tuck guess. your tummy. Now I tuck you on the ground. That will be four dollars. <laughs> when they, uh, I tuck your tummy. I guess when they finished the operation and he tried to wake her up, she didn't. <laughs> yeah, wake up, please, please, please wake up. This is Dr. Lopez! This is Dr. Lopez! Please wake up! Uh, Dr. Lopez is saying it's not his fault. Your tummy is tucked, wake up! Dr. Lopez trained in the Dominican Republic and at Columbia. <laughs> <laughs> But said uh, she had the heart attack before he started to operate. Yes. So I took out her heart. <laughs> well, not every, you know, listen. I'm sure, uh, who knows? Maybe hey, he's an excellent doctor. Happens. We don't know. Yeah, it it happens. happens. People do die in surgery. That's it's right. Not his fault. <laughs> a Florida family is overjoyed, but uh, more than a little amazed to see their lost dog again. Because he went missing six years ago. <laughs> wow, and they found yeah. the dog. Wow. Uh, according to the Miami... Does he need a tummy tuck? <laughs> yes, I tuck t dog tummy. Uh, the Miami Herald says that Pooh Bear disappeared from the home of this Panama City, Florida family in 1996. Oh, my effing God. <laughs> it's always heartbroken. But even they stopped hoping for the pooch's return after it was gone for more than three years. Then a woman in Cincinnati took pity on this matted, dirty, and tired-looking stray she saw recently and took the 13-year-old Pomeranian to her vet. That's where the vet found a small microchip implanted under Pooh Bear's skin that listed its owner's name and address 620 miles away. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Pooh Bear reportedly howled with joy when reunited, <laughs> when reunited with its family once again. So there you go. You no, know, I'm, I'm fascinated. I'm fascinated with these stories about the animals. I find animals very fascinating. <laughs> you know, they say that man evolved from the monkey. They say that. That man evolved from the monkey. But if that's true, then what the hell is Baba Booey still doing on Earth? <laughs> also in page six to today, they say Jennifer Rubin, who is an actress who's been in some, you know, decent sized movies, and she was a model, is now the hostess of the Tribeca Grill. Oh, my God. Those are sad stories. Yeah. 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 And sometimes she has to usher former colleagues to their seats. They say this happened recently when Peter Weller and Joey... Uh, Pantoliano came into the restaurant. They had both worked with her in films, and there she was showing them to a table. <laughs> oh, that's not that's that's fine. Like, I've, got, I've got sad stories. Oh, but it'd be like, you know, I, I, I'm not showing you to a table. Um, I'm just acting. Uh, yeah. I'm researching a part. I'm, I'm researching. researching a waitress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You want to hear something sad? I'll tell you a sad story. Okay. I had to get famous before I could get laid. Back in the day. I don't, I don't like to admit this. But I was actually so desperate once, I actually made love to an inflatable doll. <laughs> and her inflatable husband came in and kicked my ass! Wow. <laughs> That's a true story. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see that in the new E! documentary. All right. Reenacted, of course. With ben some fat guy. Diesel has a new movie out. It's called Triple X Opens, I guess, tomorrow. I can't wait. <laughs> And he was asked if he's ready for all the fame that will come when this movie hits the screen. A1. He's all prepared. I have no idea. I hope I'm ready. My life will be a roller coaster. <laughs> um, I, I think if I keep it about work, I, I, I'll... Uh, work. Like, I'm going to keep it about work. Yeah. 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 Suddenly he's Meryl Streep. <laughs> Can he go to Dr. Lopez for some surgery? <laughs> Better prepared for anything. <laughs> oh, dear. <Damn>. Shut up. <laughs> and he was also asked if he considers himself an action hero. I approach each role, whether it's... Each uh, role. He said one role. Uh, <laughs> whether it's an ensemble piece like background oh. guys, or it's... Uh, like what? Background guys? Knock around guys? Is that what he uh. said? Huge action 
piece like triple x with the same conviction ba, 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 ba. he's still gonna go through the same she's done enough ba, stuff ba, ba, to be ba, 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 this ba, ba, serious a piece ba, 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 the last movie was comical i mean what was it called fast and fast furious and fast furious. and the furious well he did a private <laughs> run they gotta boost your ego i mean come on he worked with spielberg. yeah first time out he works with spielberg he's working with spielberg that's, that's how you get but, but before that he was a doorman i mean he's a little serious about his craft for a guy who's on Fast and Furious. And speaking of that, uh, the reporter asked if his background as a nightclub bouncer has had uh, any helpful effect on yeah. his movie career. In fact, he's going to uh, be a hostess at Tribeca Grill in a week. <laughs> <laughs> it helps so much. I think the bouncing actually hurt me in, in the early <laughs> of Hollywood. <laughs> when you bounce, you speak with a certain strength. When you bounce. Oh, listen to him. You bounce. Oh, someone's got to set him straight. Everybody please. boycott you know this movie, what? please. At one point, I was hard. rooting for him to become the new action hero and not The Rock. When you I'm bounce. I'm switching my vote. What is bounce? Is that like an art form? What the hell is <laughs> yeah, it's a Bon Jovi song. <laughs> right. When you you know when you bounce. It's hard to <laughs> leave that strength behind, even if you're trying to be amiable or pleasant. When you so bounce. You come up to a room and say, hi, my name's Vin Diesel. Your name isn't Vin Diesel, dude. It's Vin Douchebag. Douche. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. you made that name up. And Can you at least you talk like Sam Kennison up. when you do this? If you don't like me, I'll punch you in the face. As one who once worked the door. Oh, no. You know, you bounce. Obviously, doesn't know how to say anything interesting. I got something interesting to say. I like to uh, dry up my uh, teddy bear. Right. Does that mean I'm in a bestiality? What's going on? I don't know. Something wrong don't with know me? What to say there. <laughs> Blood work Thanks, in the Dad. new Clint Eastwood movie. <laughs> yes. And we'll also be in theaters on Friday. In this cut, Clint Eastwood was asked if it's easy to if it was easy to adapt this novel. In he said, "I'm 80 freaking years old. Nothing is easy." <laughs> it was good. Uh, we we changed the the screenplay. It takes a little bit different direction uh, t towards the end than the book does, but. Uh, the basic uh, character. Okay, who else is in the news? Uh, righty then. <laughs> Jeez. Arnold Schwarzenegger is doing Terminator 3. And uh, he sat down with some reporter the other day. And he was asked if the fans of the film and the demands of the part are uh, what he thought they would be. B2. First of all, I was looking forward to doing another Terminator film ba, 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 because there's such a demand out there. I mean, everywhere I go, ba, 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 every country that I go and promote my movies, it doesn't ba, matter ba, ba, what ba, ba, movie it is. The first question ba, 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 that I always get is, hey, when are you going to come out with another ba, 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 Terminator? We're looking forward to Terminator ba, 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 3 and stuff. I wonder if that's how people really walk up to them and go, hey, we're looking forward to another Terminator. When are you, you going to have another Terminator? We're looking for Terminator 3 and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think so. <laughs> the demand, you have to always look at that in, the, in that direction. In, and here is Arnold on the female Terminator. All right. She has big genitalia. She's a wild character. That's all I can tell you. Her name is Labia. <laughs> yeah. um, the, the actress that Jonathan hired is an extraordinary looking woman that uh, absolutely is perfect. And It'll be nice to squeeze her ass. <laughs> She Say, kills you with her thigh. When Maria's not there. <laughs> she's a perfect specimen, and she's always asking me about uh, her eggs. <laughs> Who is that, Sam Kinison? <laughs> <laughs> right, go ahead, Robin. And is there going to be another tagline in Terminator 3, like, I'll be back? We don't really plan on saying, this is the line, that let's make this the line, the Aston La Vista baby line. Let the audience <laughs> decide that. There will be plenty of lines in there. There's plenty of dialogue. Plenty. And there's interesting things that I say and funny things that I say in intense. Oh, boy. You can never predict uh, true genius. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? Claire Danes is in Terminator 3, and here she is. On playing an action gal. Yeah, good she went back to college for acting. <laughs> I thought she was a bellhop now at a hotel. It's great. It's, um, I, I was shooting a machine gun all day long yesterday. <laughs> oh, my body's me. still vibrating. Oh. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's wonderfully empowering. It's so great working on Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. I was sharing some schnapps with Uncle Ted Kennedy, <laughs> and uh, he took me for a drive, and... And a swim. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, that's what's happening. Folks. Well, wait a second. Wait a second. Uh-oh. 
It's Robin's 50th birthday. I right. think if there's going to be a special day that I can see those knockers, I think this is the day. You wanted to take over top? Robin, Sam, it's your special day. You're dead. <laughs> no. If you don't get anything. For your 50th birthday, it's a special day. If you don't show me the knockers, I'm going to tell everybody your real age. Come on. <laughs> 50 my ass. You hey, a couple other people want to get in on this. Uh, Blaze, Robin's horse is on the Blaise. phone. Go ahead, Blaze. Hey, Robin. Blaze, your horse. How are you? I'm just fine. How are you? Uh, I'm Okay. <laughs> Going and, to the glue factory. Thanks for sending me there, you bitch. <laughs> and here is a mystery phone call. Who is this? And now for those millions of fans oh. who wish they could get their hands on those fabulous 50-year-old cans. <laughs> Happy birthday to the undisputed queen of the Stern Empire, the lovely, the sexy, the incomparable Robin Quiver. Wow. Michael yeah, Buffer. We love you, Michael Buffer. Thank you Thank for... Thank you, Michael. Happy birthday. I thought it was a movie phone. No, that's Michael Buffer. That ain't movie phone. <laughs> Happy oh. birthday, chlamydia victim. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. <laughs> that's the only, only thing that would be more special. Yeah. 50 and still tight, she tells me. Yes. Tight. Tight. <laughs> Quite tight. Give me a piece of it. <laughs> All right, let me... Um... <laughs> oh, this, the, the guy who called in wants to give you flowers. He's here. Let him come in. Let All it right. be the Make final moment. He's a nice guy. guy. Yeah, he's a nice guy. You met him already? Yes, I met him outside. I didn't. With I'm all thinking... the other celebrities. <laughs> <laughs> he was, he was asking... in the green room with the other celebrities? Yeah. It's funny, in the green room, he was asking me about the Terminator 3. Oh, no. I thought... Oh, there he is. Ah. Oh. Oh, Handsome guy. Oh. What's up, guys? How are you? Hey, man. You Good. called in earlier? And... Yes. What's your name? Mike. Mike what? Do I have to give my last name? Uh, unless you want to be arrested, yeah. <laughs> no, you don't have to if you don't want to. Unless but. you're a made member of some family. <laughs> yeah, right. Go ahead, Mike. Say what you want to say. I just want to say I think you're like one of the loveliest women ever. Oh, Are you married, man? I, no, I'm single. Oh, well, wait a second. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I, I got sweaty palms. I'm a little nervous, but uh, it's fine. Wipe them on Casey's crotch. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. It's free. His crotch is sweaty, too. Insane. You're insane. <laughs> Go ahead. But um, Get close to well, that microphone, please. Okay, sorry. We don't want to miss a word. No, okay. Well, I just wanted you to know that I just appreciate this show, and throughout the years, it's, it's what keeps me going this radio show it's no joke and um you know for your birth i was at howard's 98 birthday show and i'm wearing i was going to say i thought you were a wealthy guy because you're dressing in free radio station t-shirts <laughs> the first time i'm wearing this thank i saved you. it for four years to come on to the show thank you all right so you have flowers for robin and yes. that's nice of you and i want to thank you for doing that on behalf of all listeners i think right thank you yes Thank you for thank doing that. Thank you. I appreciate You're welcome. that. Fat Tony, Tony wants to ask the, you. The, oh, Fat Tony? Fat Tony, go hey, ahead. Hey, Robin. Happy birthday. I just want to know, is uh, Mr. X going to give you a little anal tonight for your birthday? <laughs> what about some anal tonight? You know, tonight? he hasn't revealed the, the complete plan. Will you make love to Mr. X tonight? <laughs> I love Mr. X, and I'm sure we will make room for love tonight. Oh, will he take you? Oh, yeah. well, that's <laughs> With a shoehorn? <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to move the chair? Because you're very tight. Well, everyone uh, wishes you a happy birthday, Robin. Uh, yes, I want to thank, did. first of all, Dave Chappelle for coming in here. Yeah. Yeah. Dave, you made pleasure. my birthday special. Man, wouldn't miss a world. Happy birthday, Robin. I am a big fan of Robin's news. Um, I'm sorry, I have a cold. Could you make that out? I said Robin's news. Also in the news, in uh, Great Britain, they have created a frog embryo without a head. I told you. All kind of things going on out there. <laughs> this is one that was created, Howard, not something that came out of the sea. Why did they make a frog you without a head? You know why they're doing this? Because they want to consider the concept of human cloning. You know, everybody's right. against that. So they say, well, what if we create a human clone without a head? Right. Then we could use it for spare parts. Right. Why can't they make me a girlfriend like that? <laughs> <laughs> Chick with no head. Uh, well, how, I just, what does that do? What does what do? A body without a head. Ask Tom. <laughs> <laughs> He'll tell you. I never considered that we have an expert right yeah. here. Right, you don't know he can be in radio. <laughs> can run a radio station. <laughs> Well, now I've got my answer. As long as you got a good sales department and talented air people, really doesn't need to do anything. Don't need a head? No. 
You play golf and uh, run a radio station. No, okay. no, that's great because what it says is is that if I need like a spine or something or a you know like, oh, like a Christopher heart, a heart, or a lungs or basically a new set of legs. All, all we're doing is growing body parts, and that's cool, man. I'll tell you, I think that's terrific. I think cloning is great, and I think I hail those scientists and what they're doing. <laughs> if you're laying in a hospital and you got no heart and you need a heart transplant and they can clone you one, yeah, I'm, why wait for somebody to die? Yeah, I don't want no monkey valve or pig heart. Waiting for someone's eyes bowl, eyeballs or, you know, penis. Well, if whatever. they grow them without a head, though, you won't have any eyeballs. Well, you can grow the eyes on their ass. I don't care what you do. <laughs> grow a head, too. Transplant. I need a transplant on that. I, you ever see my face? <laughs> There's a Polish guy in Jersey waiting for a frog's leg. <laughs> They're going to sew it on. It's fantastic. I love cloning, and I'm behind it, and I support it, uh, and God bless cloning. Oh my goodness! It will lead to the evolution of man, a, 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 a revolution in in evolution. What do you think of that? Thank I'll you. Make up your mind. Whatever. <laughs> make up your mind. I'm gonna shag you rotten. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah. Uh. I'm gonna clone Tommy Lee's penis and put it on my body. Oh. You're listening to, and that's what's happening. A Stern Show News retrospective. And those, I always felt like, were the more exciting parts of the show. You know, that freewheeling, news starting, coming up with stories, Howard saying shit off the cuff. Another person would say something, somebody would write a joke, we'd put a sound effect in there, and then it would just kind of like morph into just like this fucking craziness, which was the news. Now playing on Howard 100, Howard 101, and SiriusXM.com. Well, of course, the big news is just let's recap that Woody Allen is yes. now being accused of being in love with Mia's 21-year-old Korean adopted daughter, Suni. Oh, hello. Hello, Woody da Daddy Song. You got yellow fever? You got yellow fever? Oh, Woody Song. Imagine how low that guy is. I knew that there was something seriously wrong with that guy when I watched his movies. I knew it. I used to say to Robin, I always thought maybe he had worked all that stuff out and that was just, you know, he, no. he still knew that stuff, but he was a cool, happening guy who no. everything was all right. He's, the cool and happening did not belong in the same <laughs> sentence with Woody Allen. So I, I was always very sort of turned off to Woody Allen movies because they, they depressed me. I always saw him as a very depressed and sad Well, individual. over the last couple of years, I've really gotten sick of him. Yeah. You know, I mean, that whole thing with the, the Goyesha girl and yeah. my mother and, oh, my God, just give it up. You don't like Jewish girls. Yeah. <laughs> You're going for the Viet Cong. You like everything but. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure Jewish girls didn't like Woody growing up. Boy, what a mishkite, huh? Oh, well, ladies and gentlemen, Woody Allen, biggest mishkite on the planet. <laughs> He just turned out to have money and talent. Yeah. <laughs> Mishkite's an Italian word for ugly. What a Mishkite. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Mishkite, Mishkite, Mishkite. Woody Allen. Yeah, Mishkite, Mishkite. Let's do the Mishkite song. Yeah, Mishkite, Mishkite, Mishkite. Woody Allen's a Mishkite. Mishkite, Mishkite, Mishkite. Woody Allen's a Mishkite. Goes for Chinese girls. Mishkite, Mishkite, Mishkite. All right, very good. But, you know, dating within the same household. You know, he's dating yeah. the mother, and then he starts dating the daughter. Yeah, banging Yoko Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Him and John Lennon. Hey, let me tell you something. Uh, this guy, you know, you don't know if it's true or not. This is Maureen well, O'Sullivan. Well, according to the Post, they're saying yeah. they have an independent source that has let them know that it's true. Yeah, well, I'll tell you something. Uh, I don't uh, say a man is guilty until uh, proven guilty. Well, how and are we going to prove this? I don't know. But um, Mia Farrow's mother, Jane, from the Tarzan movies. Tarzan? Tell them, tell them, get over here, you mishkite. Tell them, I was so worried. Mia, what are you doing with that mishkite, Woody Allen? Okay, don't hurt Tarzan, I'll be your guide. Mia Farrow's got some interesting taste in men. Uh, Frank Sinatra. And, you know, you got to think back to a 21-year-old Mia Farrow. Right. Who wore a see-through dress yeah. to entice a 60-year-old man. Yeah, yeah. Like mother, like daughter, maybe? Yeah, but they're not even genetically linked. Who? 
Me and her daughter. Well, she grew up in the same household, though. Well, imagine this Woody Allen. He could have any girl he wants, which is remarkable, considering his appearance. He's the really ugliest guy on the planet. And uh, real, uh, really, if you if you analyze his movies, if any of this is uh, coming from him, if he's writing this stuff, which I assume he is, he's a very disturbed man, a very sad individual. Really, a really sad individual, a depressed, sad man. And this is the lowest thing you could do if this is true. I mean, what did he need? He only had people calling him a genius. A wonderful man. Nobody ever followed him around or hounded him. Right. Nobody. Everybody just left Woody Allen alone. They were very happy for him to just make his movies. But he couldn't. He couldn't take it. He couldn't take the nice press and being ignored. Yeah. He had to get himself into the headlines. And and what does he do? He's with his daughter. Well, it's not his daughter technically, but I mean, he's there as a father figure. He's got three of the kids are his. And, I guess it's not easy to get girls, huh? It must have been getting harder and harder, I suppose. Probably took two chocolate bars to get her. Oh, no. Get the, uh... Chewing gum and some cigarettes. Hey, Woody, you got chewing gum? You got chewing gum and chocolate bar? And plus, you know, it's not good for a 21-year-old girl to have her name in the paper linked to Woody Allen. Unless she wants to be some kind of actress or something. Yeah. I mean, this certainly, you know. And the whole point is he continues to want to work with Mia. Let's go tonight to Michael's Pub, see him play clarinet, <laughs> see if there's any Oriental chick sitting really? next to him. Yeah. And, uh, you know... But could you imagine the, the psychological torture of him continuing to hire her mother yeah. oh, to well, work in movies? And what about the fact that, um, you know, well, I mean, what is he doing to the Mia Farrow? I mean, he, you know, here the woman... Twelve years she gives. Twelve years, and then she starts dating one of those Vietnamese girls that he, that she adopted. Well, you know, Jane does have a point. That Mia's only ever wanted to be a mother. Well, yeah, <laughs> in spades. She is and really now a she's, mother. He's ruined that whole thing, and he, she, Maureen says she still is devoted to her daughter, and, and yeah. just blames Woody as an evil man who has misled her. One of Woody Allen's friends said, you know, you can't control who you fall in love with, but I, I disagree with that. I think you can. I think you can sort of stay if away. If I saw myself beginning to have feelings... Very special feelings. ...for the child right. of the woman I allegedly love, yeah. I think I would take myself out of the situation. I told you, stepfathers are no good. Oh, daddy son, you play crown. That's so very good. I spread legs quickly now. <laughs> Who even knows if he slept with her? I don't know. I who don't even know. knows? Who even knows if this is true? Everybody's comparing it to that whole uh, that thing in Manhattan where he was right. with uh, Mariel Hemingway yes. as his girlfriend. And I rem never mind. I I don't know for certain, but I remember reading interviews, or I think I remember reading interviews where Mariel had a lot of trouble with Woody on the set at the time. Yeah. And she was a kid. Well, this reminds me of Jackie Moore. Uh, Jackie dated his niece while sleeping with his aunt. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about keeping it close to home. That's right. No, Jackie, you never actually did that, did you? You were just pulling my leg. I really don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but I just find it awfully interesting that Woody would do something like this with his penchant for privacy and never wanting to be splashed in the tabloids. Robin, I'm very, I'm very shocked as you are. This sounds like, you know, a real breakdown. Yes. You know, like an emotional, like he can't even control himself anymore. Right. <laughs> that, it, that illness, whatever he's got, is really getting bad. And now he's just got to let the world know what a wacko he is. Hey, that's why his name is Woody. He always has a Woody. I guess, so. I guess that's still apropos. I guess when you're an ugly uh, Mishkai growing up, like uh, Woody Allen, you just... Uh, well, you know, you could compare yourself. You know, he's angry at the world for everybody, you know, pissing on him when he was young, and now he's going to get back at everybody. You didn't nearly have such a bad life as Woody, I suppose. No. And and look at how angry you are. <laughs> yeah, and I'm angry. I'm really angry. But he's angrier. So he's even more angry than you. Uh, Hooray, it's yeah. time for the news. You know, I, 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 I get, uh, whoever they get, why, why don't we have a janitor work in the damn place? There's a good chance I won't be in tomorrow. I'm so sick. Let's just do the news. Well, this is a fun spirit to do the show in. I'm out of it. I'm, I've been out of it for about six months now. I'm out of it. 
I'm fed up with the whole thing. I'm working with Andre the Giant. He's a giant because he should be chasing dragons into a cave. <laughs> I'm back there laughing. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's good. That's what I want to hear. You don't was, know what you're doing. It was a pretty red button. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I, I was hit hypnotized. It. A new guy comes into the company two months and he's and he's in charge of me. Have no idea if he knows anything's funny. No. Oh, freaking situation. I don't even know his name. Andre. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of working here. I've ha I've been here long enough. How long have I been here, Robin? Uh, let me see. We came here in 85. How long would that be? It's, it's enough with the radio. I'm off the air. They nine win. Years. Everyone wins. The FCC wins. The government wins. The Im the imbecile in Vegas wins. Everyone wins. So, so, all the old ladies who wrote into the FCC, you will all win. I want out of here. I want to go. I want to clean up the airwaves. <laughs> I want out of here. I want to leave. I've had enough. How do I make that clear? I've had enough. I agree with the guy in Vegas who files against me. I'm too dirty to be on the air. I, I got to get off the air. Get me a bathroom, give me some heroin, and let me just go off into the sunset. I can clunk my head on a toilet bowl and pass out in bliss. <laughs> that heroin must be something if that many people are addicted to it. Oh, dear. It's got to have something to it. <laughs> I hear it's like one big orgasm. And believe me, I need one of those. <laughs> the great Barry White. He was honored last night. Uh, on the Poor Barry game. White. He's got to catch me in this mood. Of course. Uh, Magic Johnson uh, was the one who uh, announced his great award for lifetime achievement and gave him a big bear hug when he came up to the stage. Oh, Magic Johnson. Yeah, that. <laughs> so. What do you want? Your mom's on the phone. What does oh, she want? <laughs> Don't eat. She doesn't even know what she's getting into right now. Hello? Hello? Yes? Hello? Yeah, what do you got to say? I got to just say, Howard, that I want to remind you that being on the air was your lifelong dream. Yeah, well, the dream is over. And 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 I, I didn't bargain for what's going on now. I, Darling, I didn't bargain for what's going on now. You don't know what's even going on here. When I'll explain it to you off the air. It's too painful to me. You can handle anything. No, I can't, Mom. Yes, you can. Not this, I can't. Stop it. You know, it doesn't make Nah, sense. I've had enough. You don't understand. I'm, I, I've had my dream. I've been on the radio. Now it's time to clear away for the Grease Man. This is your big dream. I want the Grease Man. I, Rush I mean, Limbaugh Howard, forever. I told you to write it down on a piece of it's paper. It's time. I've done my job. your dream. And you got your dream, and I don't like hearing this. Let me, let me put it into let me put it into uh, realistic words for you. What? Your dream in life was to sleep with Dad, and you haven't done that since 1965. <laughs> you had your dream. So, so you had your dream, and you gave it up. I had my we dream. Don't talking about your don't dream. Don't talk about me. I need to sit home. The subject. You're, oh, you're so a everybody gives up their the dreams. Subject. I'm not a master. Yes, you are a master. You're taking the subject. The subject is your job, and you're bellyaching, and you're complaining, and who wants to listen Even to you've been replaced by Mrs. David Letterman, and um, David Letterman's mother now. They're, yeah, they're, they're hailing him. That. They're hailing him. As, good? They're hailing, no, she could not have a word to she say. Can't hold the candle right, to you. So yeah. the they hail him oh, as a genius. I've been putting my mother on the air for years. I'm a bum. <laughs> no, here's the deal, Ma. Let me tell you something. What? Uh, the FCC is after me. This company is buckling under. Uh, the, the, the FCC and I don't blame them. I don't know that I'm any braver. It's too big to fight. It's too big for me to fight, and I am not going to have my show tampered with by Andre the Retard. Andre the and Reed. Tom Chiasano, the biggest yeah, nitwit on the planet. Tom Chiasano's a wonderful man. Yeah, Tom Chiasano is as empty-headed as as the a teddy bear. Why, he's out of town, you could talk about him? No, I'll talk, I tell him to his face he's a nitwit. Oh, Howard, that's And nice. so are his lackeys, and I'm tired of it. I'm tired of being subjected to it. i got to get out of here. It's enough already with the radio show. I've done the I've done 100 million shows. Count up the hours I've done. Howard. It's enough already with this Howard, garbage. you better come to visit me. You need a trip. I don't need to visit you. A psychiatrist? Yes. How me, dare you? Me. Yeah. I'll straighten you out. I'll remind you of Dr. how Ray. upset you were when you didn't have a job yeah. and you wanted to be I have a job. I job. You I did it. Job. It's enough do with the job. job. I did the job. job yeah, I'll do the job when everyone leaves it alone. When everyone like, leaves my show alone. sounds like a patchwork. You, you 
just do the job. You're capable of that. Well, that. good for you. Thank you. All right. I just wanted to read. You're an inspiration. You so down when have you ever done a job? You haven't had a job uh, since you were 17 years old. To raise you. As, yeah, and you did some did great I do job. A good job. Yeah, great. Look at me. I'm some man. Oh, well, you're so satisfied with yourself. It's wonderful. Yeah, I'm, I'm some. I'm. Some, believe me, the human race couldn't live without me. It's true. That's what a lot of people tell me. You raise some son. He can't even function. People tell me they adore you. <laughs> I go Ten out, minutes ago, you were really? lauding her as a great parent. Now. She was a good parent. I don't know where she went wrong. She did good with my sister. With me, she I screwed did up. Good with both of you. Everybody likes. My you sister both. seems to be a functioning human being. That's right. And I'm so not. Are you. And you show that side of yourself. You know, it was like I'm watching Jeffrey Dahmer's father on TV the other night, and he says, you know, I don't know what I did wrong. <laughs> 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 Whatever it was, it was well, a doozy. I can tell you, I watched you every step of the way, Howard. No. And I see the good results. You tried, you and tried. And you know the good side of yourself and the positive side. How do you like my beard? You see Howard, that hair on his I face? I think your daughter told you, yeah. right? My, to my daughter told me I look like a rat. I think you have too much free time. That's the problem. <laughs> I need more free time. Well, free time is good, but not to grow beards. I want to be like Don Johnson. I want to be an You're Aspen, chasing Melanie up. Griffith. What are you hiding from? I'm not hiding from anything. I thought the beard. Be maybe I'm hiding from you. You hide your whole face. Nobody can see what you look like. Yeah, well, maybe I'm not exactly attracted to my own face. Maybe my genetics weren't all that strong. Well, people say when you uh, when you show your face, you look good. Yeah, who are those people? Helen Keller? People I know. <laughs> the sickos. The old timers. Yeah, the, the, the ones with cataracts. All right, go ahead. All go, right, Howard. Go have fun. Listen, do your job. Right. Okay. I hear you. Bye bye. My mother hasn't worked since she's 18 bye years old. Bye bye, Howard. All right, thank you. <laughs> I don't even know the pressures of a job. She do not know from anything. My poor father. He gets lectured like that at least 500 times a day. 500 times a day. That's what he hears? <laughs> yes, mother? You yeah. keep that job. You wanted that job all your life, and now you have it. Yes, mommy. Yes, and another thing. You need to come over here. I'll straighten you out. <laughs> you know why she wants me over there? She wouldn't have to talk to my father for a few Aww. minutes. Because they fight all day. No, they don't. Sure they do. I've never seen them Ooh. fight. Oh, please. My mother lectures my father all day and night. I'm ben, a pull your pants up. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since I left the house, the two of them are miserable. They don't have you to be the... No. I used to be the the, the oh, scapegoat, the buffer, yeah. yeah like my whipping boy. My mother used to go, you know... Like, my father would yell at me, and then you'd hear my mother go, What's wrong with you? <laughs> you know, she'd jump in, too, because as long as they were yelling at me, they weren't yelling at each other. <laughs> Who are they kidding? Uh, my mother prays for the day I come home. They love you. Round and round. Round and round it goes. They have your bedroom as a shrine waiting for you to return. <laughs> When are they going to get Alzheimer's where they don't remember me? <laughs> Howard who? Howard who? Who are you again? Hello, who is this? <laughs> My, you called me. Who did I call? <laughs> Howard. Howard who? Ben, uh, go rake the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Ignore the snow. <laughs> Put on something warm. Polish the garage. <laughs> Count the silverware. <laughs> and I hear that voice in my head. Like, Mommy? Mommy? <laughs> what, what do I do? Uh, what would Mommy do? Mother? Mother? Come back to your room. <laughs> Don't go outside. It's cold. You'll get a cold. Wear a hat. You have too much free time with that beard. Matching socks. I told you, matching socks. Mother, should I grow a beard? Mother. You look like a rat. <laughs> and what's with all those hiding earrings? your face. Who are you hiding from? Oh, boy. And you don't need a tattoo. You don't need that. And why are you hurting me with that tattoo? <laughs> don't you know what that does to me? And another thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still Howard. your mother. Howard. Stop it. I got to stop the voice. Mother, stop the voice. Stop. Howard. 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 Oh, mother, that's better. Now you're quiet. 
<laughs> Mother, here, sit in this chair. I'll dress you. <laughs> now I don't hear the voice. <laughs> Mother, sit up. It's impolite to our guests. <laughs> Mother? Mother, I'll launder your clothes now. Ben, tell him to shave. <laughs> ben, make your own bed. Ben, wear an apron and vacuum my street. <laughs> ben, I'm saying it. Make your own freaking Rob Roy. <laughs> All right, Robin, where were you yes. in the news? I, I was apologize. about to tell you that uh, Barry White... <sighs> Got Very a good. Lifetime Achievement Award at the Soul Train Awards last night. So here is Barry White making his acceptance speech. I am very <laughs> deeply honored. What's with that guy? <laughs> and he's about as privilege. big as John Candy. How is he? He's I'm not the dead. black John Candy. <laughs> Women love me. <laughs> Stand here tonight before my peers. <laughs> Retail. What's his story? Won't you be embarrassed? Uh, and that's an all on affect. I stand here. I think he gets mesmerized by his own voice, don't yeah. you? He's one of those deep voice guys that gets hypnotized by his own. Yeah. What is it? Do you want to talk to a clinical psychologist who wants to analyze your relationship with you and your mother? It's, believe me, she's on your side. Flop on floor, Lee. Yeah, tell everyone. Go ahead. Hi, Howard. Um, you know, I, I can't believe, and I, I go through cases like this all the time, that a man as accomplished as you, of course, as accomplished as you are, with everything you've done, has to have your mother call in, and I and I work with this all the time, yeah. okay, and put limitations and barriers up to what your achievements can and can't she be. She doesn't understand. If I didn't stand up to authority, I never would be doing this show. I, you know, I understand, and you know what? I understand your frustration. Y you are, you are a very creative person, well, and you cannot be limited. In You've never heard a mother like that, right? I, I think it's ridiculous because you know why? She doesn't listen to you. No, she doesn't hear what I'm saying. When you say, exactly, are you saying she's hard of hearing? Her. No, what she's saying is right. In other words, I have a legitimate problem here. My mother's like, just do your job. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But see, that's a limited type of thinking, and you're not that kind of person. No, if I was limited like that, I'd be like my father. Exactly. Sitting at home. Exactly. You're an expensive person. <laughs> you wouldn't have invested. And, and I think yeah. it's detrimental that, you know, don't let any of that you know, play into your head at all because right now you're feeling trapped. I mean, you've been through, you're exhausted. I'm exhausted from this. You are exhausted for the past six months. Me and Jack Parr. Out. That's right. You know? That's right. So I'm just saying, you know. I, mean, I want to sit home with Jack Parr. I, I listen to you all the time and I just want you to thank really you. be thank, aware of that. Thank you, doctor. Okay. All right. Bye -bye. That's a uh, doctor. Would you like to sign up with her? You need some help. She doesn't sound like she knows a thing in the world. <laughs> I feel like going to drinking with Don Johnson. Yeah, there you go. That'll yeah. straighten you out. I'm right. sober today. <laughs> <laughs> Although I accidentally put Jack Daniels on my face and downed a bottle of Aquavelva. <laughs> Melanie! Where's Melanie? <laughs> Strip for me. Strip. Strip. Is it time for the news, Robin? Robin. Yes! There was a another gun battle here on the streets of Manhattan involving rappers or rapper entourages the other day. A uh, little Kim and her posse right. was leaving Hot 97 and uh, the posse of Noriega and Capone or Capone and Noriega was also either coming in or going out, who knows, but they uh, encountered each other on the streets of Manhattan. The posses clashed. Guns were drawn. I'd done no wrong. And uh, shots rang out. Now, here are these people. They're finally making some money. They're, you know, getting paid. Why would you want to stand in the middle of the street and shoot at each other? Yeah. Just don't understand it. Not anyway, when you're making money. They now have identified one of the gunmen, they say, through a videotape. That's, oh. Uh, I guess outside of the radio studios. And uh, they have witnesses, eyewitnesses, looking at these videotapes, trying to identify others. They have invest. Uh, they questioned little Kim. I wonder what she wore. <laughs> For the questioning. <laughs> and uh, Capone. The police have questioned both of them, and they said they uh, found out nothing. So neither one of them is coming up with any information. 
And so they're asking people to call that tips hotline if they witnessed this to try to help police figure out what was going on and who had their guns drawn that day. Even though little Kim is tiny, I heard she has a big posse. Oh. oh. And uh, her posse got licked. <laughs> when did, did they lose? I think her posse got licked. <laughs> and uh, evidently when the posse... We, we, the story on her posse is that... Uh, I mean, I've never seen her posse. I just want to make that clear. Even though she wears very <laughs> revealing outfits. <laughs> <No. laughs> no. <laughs> now you understand what I mean. I wonder if her posse shaves. <laughs> she just a shaved posse. A well-groomed posse. A well-groomed posse. <laughs> but I understand her posse smells good. No! Her posse isn't as tight as the other posses. But... Uh, you can go on all day with this. Yes. Oh, do it. <laughs> do it. I dare you. Let's see how... You want to go home at some point, don't you? I'd love to be in her posse. I'd love to enter her posse. Oh, dear. I would. I'd love to enter little Kim's posse. You haven't seen her posse. You said that. I think I'm too big to be in her posse. <laughs> so you don't know for sure how big her posse is. I don't know how big her posse is, but once a month I'd leave her posse. <laughs> Take a couple of days off. <laughs> Take a few days off from her posse. A couple of Three days, days each month her posse is very cranky. Right. <laughs> there was an earthquake. When the police were investigating, did anyone finger her posse? <laughs> no one was fingered. During the questioning. No, Posse was not fingered. <laughs> anyway, get the idea. What else is in the news, Robin? And there have been no leaks. From her Posse. <laughs> there was an earthquake. Uh, in fact, uh, some of the guys in her what? Posse wear their hair in the Afro style. You could say it's a hairy Posse. Oh! <laughs> How's your posse? <laughs> I think the new one. Robin's the only one in the room with a posse. Oh, uh, nice one. <laughs> you haven't seen my posse. <laughs> I've heard about your posse. We all think about it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Thank you. There was an earthquake and... Uh... <laughs> Mr. X sees your posse. Oh, he's in it. <laughs> Isn't Mr. X in your posse? I must... <laughs> this has changed Often. my mood. <laughs> Having Mr. X in your posse changed your mood, didn't it? Oh, yes, a different world. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is in your posse? It's like I stepped into Oz. There have been different people in my posse at different Over the years. Oh, yeah. Did your father want to be in your posse? Oh! <laughs> it's true. But I don't think that's right if a father is in your no, posse. No, you can't have your father in your posse. <laughs> doesn't work. It's just not right. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had to fight your father not to be in your posse. That's right. I huh. had to uh, tell him, no, no, you can't be in my posse. And he said, but I'm your father. I should be in your posse. No, he agreed once he heard the no. He right. took a no, but he then said, you know, you're probably right. Didn't you and your posse once get in the shower and someone filmed your posse? <laughs> It's dripping. <laughs> Once my posse was filmed without my knowledge. Yeah. Your dad's hands were too big for their posse. You, evidently, <laughs> for your posse, you have to have small hands. Well, my posse was smaller at that time. <laughs> yeah, I'll say. All right, go ahead, Robin, please. Yes, enough of this ridiculous the posse talk. Yeah. And uh, let's move on. Now it's time for the news with Robin Clemens. Nassau County Community College has lost its anti-pornography case. <laughs> you know they have, that, <laughs> they have that sex course out there that all the children have been taking with no complaint for 17 years. And then all of a sudden this anti-pornography activist comes along and gets upset. Yeah. Because the kids, you know, do field trips in this sex course where they have to go and meet prostitutes or go to a gay bar or they're instructed to go home and look at themselves in a mirror or... or you get to pee in a mirror. Uh, yeah, right. Who instructs you to do that? The people in this course. These go are home and pee in a mirror. <laughs> hey, John took this course. Did he actually pee on a mirror? I don't know. 
which one he decided to do. I think you get a choice. I guess it's so you can watch. You get a choice. <laughs> I want to do everything. No? You to take There's it. nothing like the smell of burnt penis pee? in the morning. Did, you, did they tell you to pee in a mirror? No, no, no. no. You, oh, you got to sit, uh, you know, have a mirror underneath you, and then you, and then, and then, and then you draw a picture of, of your... Uh, wait, 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 wait. What are you saying? Like the girls would would sit on a mirror and draw a picture of their genitalia. Ooh. And and, um, <laughs> and they. How do you do? You do you do that? <laughs> See, he's always a comedian. That's Somebody not easy. Thing you do you do you do? Constantly. Well, let me tell you, you, see, you something. The last time you uh, introduced me to your lead singer, uh -huh. and Josie's and you see, you sang, you told me and me that this guy was forever. Then you told me the other day, the other day you got a new lease. Oh, it's the same thing. All right, wait, let's stick on one topic. Let's stick on one topic. Now, you're saying in Nassau Community College. First of all, let me commend this guy because there should be no college teaching people how to pee in a mirror. All right, never heard you Leslie, please, please, Leslie, stick with me here. I need to get excited because I really got to get out of here. And I have to get to a point. Yeah, and you have to get to the point of the story. <laughs> when you were at National Community College, yes. you had a... There's a certain amount of things that you had to do. Oh, really? Uh, and, and one of them was you had to draw a picture of your genitalia. Right. And, you know, and, and give it into the teacher. But, you know, certain things to do, you have to you get to interview prostitutes, you have to interview certain people. What kind of experiences, though, did you have to have that you described? Didn't you have to, like... Well, you have to ask like girls, or you know, you have to go interview people on how do you describe who, who had sex in a car, who had sex with a prostitute. <laughs> how do you do it? I don't know how you put it in a piece of the edge of the edge of the edge of the Oh, wait a second. Just calm down. Wait a second. Watch the D word there. Nothing like the smell of burnt penis in the morning. All right, please, Leslie. Leslie, you're out of control. How he is. Whenever I, I see Leslie up the show, he's like suddenly Howard Stern. Just Never. calm down. He's my that. idol. What do you think? What do you think? All right. <laughs> oh, I'm getting no tired now. Now, Gary took this course, too. Yes. Oh, boy. Yeah. They, well, they, see, I thought that they had to do certain <laughs> things like, you know, um, masturbate in a hot tub and yeah, then come oh, in yeah. and describe yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, no, no, no. She, the, the uh, teacher would... would uh, would say to you that you know, it would be good for you to go yeah. home in a bathtub and discover your bodies. I don't buy the ears. Rub all, you know, and, 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 and get in and touch with your body. I'm not buying that at all. I'm telling you, she told us uh, that she did it. I, how much did you pay for this ear? Wait, I, I teach her actually. How I, much did you pay for this ear? Could the ear, of course. Are you serious? Are you serious? Are you serious? You're out of your damn ear. Me the ear, me the ear, me the ear. I don't care what you see. You're out of your ear. You're out of your ear. Me the ear. Me what oh. song did Josie sing, and when did he sing it? All right, come on, seriously. What? What is this? The guy got in a hot tub? No, no. The uh, teacher was a woman. Yeah. She even <laughs> and, and she even handed out a statue of her of her fantasy, which Whoa. was uh, her with two guys. She Going out with Josie, statue, you know, and, and, and showed around the class. <laughs> yeah. And um. <laughs> And they would tell you, you know, that we should go home and go in the you know, and, 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 and uh, get in touch with ourselves, you know, rub it. Get touch with your ears and yourself. <laughs> Grab it. <laughs> uh, you really want to ski your ski at school? Leslie just <laughs> married. <laughs> Leslie just Did married because really he has. I never graduated. I went to Leslie NYU, New York unemployment, all right? He just made because he hasn't seen his genitalia in years. I haven't seen it. I gotta, I gotta urinate to see it, okay? <laughs> Gary had a, uh, Gary had a duty in his family spaghetti. <laughs> no. Yeah, for the course, I'm saying. <laughs> a, yeah, a real duty? A duty? Oh, <laughs> All right, let's get to the point of the story. Yeah, the point of the story is that Frank Russo was now demanding to see a film that he considered pornography called hmm. Sexual Intercourse that is a part of this course, and the school had forbid him to view it. You saw that? I seen. Uh, a few, I seen. I I saw a few. Seen, I've I saw. saw. There's one. There's one films where I seen and I've saw. I'm gonna bang you over the head with a seesaw. You know that? There's one film where a guy um, masturbates and they show it the whole thing up until climax. And uh, and they play like the the, the, the first song is uh, you know uh, <laughs> uh, you know uh, you know that, that whole music and then he masturbates. Really? And then when he climaxes, they play dan 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 you're the greatest guy in the you know, What happened to your lead singer? All right, okay, now. Leslie, let's stay on the right, course. And, and, and let's stay on the course. And, and there's another film where they have a... Whoa! A, uh, <laughs> there's 
Another another film. Want to open for me a Sam I'd love to, man, because you should really check out. I haven't heard you play the guitar yet. Anyway, are you gonna let me finish this one? Go ahead, go ahead. What are you saying? There's this one film that that is uh, they have a. See what this thing is doing to me over here? They have a. <laughs> uh, they have two puppets, and, and one's a, Look, a, a penis, and one's a... One's a wait, let them say so say this, yeah? And, and one's a girl's thing, and they just hang out in bed and talk to each other, and then they, you know, you know, you know, you put, you, put their protection you, 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 on. You, you're jiving me. No, I'm not. <laughs> Are you telling me the, 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 the truth, the whole yeah. the, the truth, yeah, yeah, and, and the, the, nothing but the, 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 the truth? This is not the truth. God? <laughs> so the puppet penis It talks to the puppet <laughs> the puppet female organ and organ and, and they and they and they discuss protection and then they you know do the act I have the brains with the consistency of green peas and, it, it and they discussed, you know, premature ejaculation. And oh, all there it is. Things. For the, for the all, it's really funny, you know, but the, 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 there's some that are more sexual than others, you know. Well, you didn't see this particular film, though. It's called I, Sexual Intercourse. Yeah, we've 17 seen... minutes of Swedish. Oh, no, no. And uh, apparently there's Swedish, two Swedish, minutes Swedish, of... Swedish. <laughs> I can't understand English, let alone Swedish. There's two minutes of sort of educational sure material. Oh, wait a second, Leslie. And then yeah. the rest of it, supposed, according to Frank Russo, supposedly just so oh, pornography. Frank. He's the guy who took him to court oh. because he wanted to view this. So, but now the school <laughs> says it will appeal. Jesus Christ. I because they don't think they that he has a right to, to <laughs> oh, now they've got me doing it, to screen their material. <laughs> Meanwhile, they had to get rid of, because of this Frank Russo, they had to get rid of 80 slides they used to show of the male genitalia. Yeah, they, 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 they show slides and stuff. Too. What kind of is you the know, they included... <laughs> They included that famous picture, genitalia and hot dog rolls, genitalia hey, wearing sunglasses, and genitalia flying the American flag. Tell him about the time John, John got this homework assignment where he has to, like, uh, pick his button and eat pizza. <laughs> Tell them about that. <laughs> they make you go home. Are you kidding? Then they call you on the phone and they tell you to strangle your brother. <laughs> Russo says he'll continue his fight because they still teach adultery and wife swapping yeah. on a par with traditional marriage in this course. Hey, Leslie, you better hope that John never gets pictures of you with drugs. Oh, let me tell you. You're going to have a problem He told me that he installed my pickup in his guitar now. Yeah. I still haven't heard him play one little lick. I'm giving you, I have a tape for you outside. What are you waiting for? Howard heard the tape. I'm giving it to you today. Tony Iola, I heard it too. Tony Iola. Isn't that Tony Matola's brother? John, get with it. Oh. I'm not playing my gig, my axe. That's okay. And you don't want to play me uh, a little, a little, a little, a lick. <laughs> I'm too intimidated by the legend, Muzzy West. Oh, kiss my ear, to the ear, to the ear, took us. <laughs> and finally, this yes, morning, yes, Howard. Yes, yes, please, Robin. Kiss my black fat ass, okay? All right, go ahead, yes. I love the show. The mother of a Canton Township that's teenager, that's in Michigan? Yes, yes. Her son hanged himself, Howard. Oh, oh boy. And I suppose she's sort of pointing a finger at the Giants' tight end, Mark Bavaro. What did he do? Because next to her son was material in which Mark claimed that <clears throat> during training he used techniques like choking and uh, body punching to toughen him up for the sport of football. Oh, so she's going to blame him. Well, I don't think she's filed anything yet. She just went to the press and said, you know, this was next to my son when I found him. Patricia Briggs said uh, Wednesday she found an account of the training practices by Giants tight end Mark Bavaro near her son Douglas Briggs, who was a center on the Plymouth Salem High School football team. He apparently was, as she assumes, trying some of this stuff to toughen himself up mm -hmm. for football when he accidentally hanged himself because they have ruled <laughs> oh that his hanging God. was an accident. Oh, my God. Bavaro said Wednesday he does not use self-inflicted punishment to train. Bud McGee, who has helped train Bavaro, said some training involves stomach punching or putting pressure on the throat 
to strengthen it and accustom the athlete to such pain. Oh, God. Bavaro said such choking is not something any kid should ever do to train. I in no way practice any type of strangulation exercise. I know this tennis player who trains in a gas chamber. <laughs> and, uh, it works, but yeah, but don't try it at home. What kind of gas? <laughs> Cheese gas? Oh, man, no. no. <laughs> you gotta be kidding. But can you imagine this? A kid reads. I, I would ass you know, assume. I mean. Don't ass assume. <laughs> you know what happens? You make an ass of you, 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 well, you know, oh it's just that when what? you explain something like this in a book. Me, are you in the in national yet? <laughs> yeah, when you explain something in a book. When you explain something like this in a book, you should make it clear that you're not alone, number one. When you yeah, do this stuff, you have a professional trainer choking you. Right. You don't choke yourself. And number two, that this body punching shouldn't be done by yourself either. Fred. But uh, I knew there was something wrong with football. Robin, what else is in the news? Here's some good news. Oh, good. Connie Francis is singing again. Oh. But badly. No, no, no. That's, that's just stretched that. out to 12 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Think of Connie Francis singing again. Oh, wait a second. If you're doing Connie Francis music, we, yes. I mean, Connie, Connie Francis news. Yes. She sold more. Doesn't she sell more records than any other female singer ever? I think you're like right. Yeah. yeah. Like that. Do we have any Connie Francis, Fred? Everybody has Connie Francis. There was a guy at the corner selling Connie Francis albums coming up here. Well, I don't think this is Connie Francis or somebody else. Ladies and gentlemen, the best dressed man in show business, what? Liberace. Oh, that's not Connie Francis. Hey, who played a cool joke and put a Liberace record in? Uh, the Connie Francis <laughs> bin. A nut. What kind of nut does that to me? Well, look me over. You're all right. Could you imagine what's going on bedside over there? Oh, the relatives all piling into Liberace's house trying to get on his good side before he passes out. Oh, I man, think was... the will has been struck. It's you think too so? late now. Yeah. I'd be able to, Lee, please, for Christ's sake, don't leave it to the dogs. Leave it to some people. Don't leave the money to the dogs. I think wouldn't it be great if he left you a kept. big chunk of it? <laughs> That'd be beautiful. Oh, jeez, would that help Ooh. your reputation? Oh, man. <laughs> my dear friend Howard Stern. That's what he's going to do. He's going to get yeah. me back He'll for all the bad things. i leaving you. Who you know for all those wonderful years? I'm leaving all my money to Howard Stern. And I really think he should have married. I forgive him. That's it. That would be interesting. Be great yeah. for your career. How can I do a Connie Francis story if I don't have Connie Francis music, Robin? I don't know, Howard. We don't. Have I any? just sit here. I do the news. Play some uh, piano music. Man. Piano music. We don't have any Connie Francis. Oh, I got the Connie Francis medley, I think. Oh, David, great. I have to apologize. Yeah. No, no, play it. I, I played it this morning before I came over. That's what gets play you up it. in the morning. Yeah, play it. Now, Howard, come on. Ah, oh, here it is. Oh, there it is. Thank that's you so all much. You can These see. things that's should Connie be at your, be your fingertips. Yeah. Oh, we got another. One. This is Kenny Francis. I think so. Oh, there it is. Well, that's when she was in the mental uh, home. Her father committed her to. What is that? <laughs> All right, a second. Give me a chance, will you? All right, Connie Francis. Oh. Some distance. There it is. Hey, okay, so I'm a little nervous. Connie Francis News. Yes, and that's very apropos because that's exactly the song she sang. She, uh, of course, has had her bout with uh, mental illness over the last couple of months. <laughs> now, through uh, lithium treatments. <laughs> lithium crystals, Robin. <laughs> she's much better, and she's out and about. She was down in Florida visiting with someone, and she took... Uh, it was a... A Bobby Darren impersonator, as a matter of fact. She no. Was, <laughs> she was running around with... No. Yes. Well, she wanted to marry Bar Bobby Darren, but her father wouldn't let her. That's right. And it made her crazy. Yes. Well, she took no. Ron Langell, a Bobby Darren impersonator, <laughs> to some kind of a cabaret show down there. And uh, 
They were so, oops, oh. boy, oh boy, Howard. They invited, you know, this show director invited uh, Langell up on stage, and he performed so well he invited him back the next night to become a member of the troupe. Yeah. And uh, as a special surprise, they had Connie come up and introduce the guy. <laughs> and when Connie came up on stage, yeah. they asked her to sing, of course. And this was impromptu, and she broke into where the boys are, yeah. and apparently she's back and better than ever. Does that mean I have to go see her? <laughs> well, I think if she comes to this area, we ought to. You think it's a good idea for Connie Francis to be hanging around a guy who thinks he's Bobby Darren? I mean, quite frankly. David, what do you think? <laughs> I can't imagine why this guy... Uh, I mean, there's so many people it could have been. I yeah, know. Why would you want to be Bobby, Bobby Darren? Darren. Yeah, Bobby fun, but what motivated? Like, he's sitting there one day and saying, you know, I know, see, I could be... Uh, could be Ronald Elvis. Reagan, right? I could be Elvis. <laughs> you know, I could be Sting. You know what? Bobby Darren. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like a weird decision. Yes. Yeah. Career decision. It's a strange commitment. Yeah, it is. It really uh, is weird. Like, I bet you his agent's pulling his hair out of his head. <laughs> Schmanky could have been Elvis. Yeah. I could have booked you. Big. But yeah. this is the thing. She's running around with a Bobby Darren impersonator. So, uh, why what does can she I go say? With, why doesn't she go with, like, an Elvis impersonator? I mean, don't you, don't you think Connie would uh, be better off with an Elvis impersonator? Too many of them. Yeah, that's right. I mean, she couldn't choose, I guess. Yeah, I mean, how many whenever. Bobby Darren impersonators do you that's think right. there are? That's true. There's, yeah. there's only one of a kind. That's yeah. the guy, maybe that's how he made his decision. Like, what <laughs> the, isn't, does not exist? But how much <laughs> money could I mean? you make lip syncing to Splish Splash? Or Mac the Knife. Or Mac the Knife. It's not That's too much right. demand, is it? You ought to book that guy on your show. <laughs> really? You ought to find this guy. With the blue suit and the open white shirt? Yeah. I think it'd be pretty good. Yeah. I mean, people have been demanding this. Maybe he'll bring Connie with him, though. That's right. David, that's something to think about. Hi, David. I'm a, I'm a Bobby Darren impersonator. I'm pleased to be on your show. Of course, there is another book about Elvis. This one written by his stepbrother. And I always thought it was... Uh, Jethro, you mean, his stepbrother? No, David Stanley. This was uh, his stepbrother, the woman who married um, his father, Vernon. Yeah, had Vern. three sons, I think, and this is one of them. He became a good friend and confidant of Elvis's, started working for him, and of course now he's uh, written down his experiences. <laughs> yeah. And I always thought you were joking when you said Elvis had this uh, fixation on police and, and running around performing patrols and so forth. No, Elvis was he a actually, real nut. He tried. He, he got in touch with uh, J. Edgar Hoover. Got in touch with him. He asked to be on the uh, drug uh, squad, you know, to be oh, yeah. a, And uh, they gave him a badge. Yeah. Nixon gave yeah. him a badge. Yeah, they yeah. came. He or brought him to Nixon the White House. Gave, yeah, and yeah. gave him a badge. Maybe. Nixon gave him a gun and a badge. And Elvis, <laughs> Elvis, would be, Elvis would drive around Memphis. But even before this, this guy actually writes that Elvis, before he went to the White House, yeah. you know, he would go to any local community and say, make me an honorary cop. And, you know, he'd have his little badge and stuff, and he'd get into his Ferrari, <laughs> and he would patrol the streets. He'd put a little bubble on the top of his car. It's like the beginning of Miami Vice. Yeah. He was way ahead of his time. Right. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> you know, he's way ahead of himself. <laughs> I'm going to reenact Elvis going through the streets of Memphis. It was in Memphis, right? Yeah. Right. That sort of sounds like Elvis with his sort bubble, doesn't it? Sort of. Let's see. Sir, ladies and gentlemen, pull over. This is Elvis. This is Officer Elvis, ladies and gentlemen. Please pull over to the side of the road. Why, look, it's Elvis. <laughs> look, it's Officer Elvis. Imagine that, getting pulled up by Officer Elvis. But he was. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Get out of the car with your hands up over your head. Thank you. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. And that's what he would do. He would go riding around in his Ferrari, yeah. see somebody speeding, and he'd pull him over, yeah. walk over to the car. Excuse me, hands up over the car, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. And he'd say something like, uh, we got laws around here that we're pretty proud of. We got laws around here we're pretty proud of. You know, don't you know we got a drug problem in this country? Matter of fact, the problem is I can't get any drugs. <laughs> so if you see Dr. Nick, you get in touch with him for me, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.
And he would just come up to her and say, you know, we, we really uh, like our speeding laws around here, and we'd like you to stop breaking them. And then he would uh, walk away. I mean, before the people even had a chance to react, he'd you get back like a, in the car and drive off and find somebody else. Like a big, fat Elvis in his karate uniform and the eagle cape. <laughs> and getting out of his car with a badge and a gun. Why, yes, Elvis, we'll abide by the law. Those dumb hillbillies pulling over to the side of the road for Elvis. Yeah. How'd I cook? <laughs> but he would he would do this, and then after he got that uh, thing from Nixon, yeah, he he started carrying a gun all the time because he really took this seriously. He thought he was a drug enforcement officer, <laughs> and he had all of the Memphis mafia carry guns too. You boys better carry some guns. You got to push some people up. But I think the frustrating thing for Elvis was he couldn't like he couldn't lock people up, and he couldn't right. He couldn't actually arrest them. Yeah, or give them a ticket. Yeah, he could just walk over to the car, and, and Elvis Presley walked over to the side of your car <laughs> in his karate uniform and just sort of pulls you over yeah. and but gives you a lecture. But one time, one time, this guy, this uh, <laughs> David Stanley, Elvis told him to go take care of Lisa Marie. Lisa yeah. Marie was with him in Las Vegas or something, and all the other guys were going to go out, and he just told him, you, you go play with Lisa Marie. And the guy had his gun with him. Yeah. And so he figured, well, i got to entertain this kid. I'll show her the gun. Yeah. So he takes out the gun and he tells Lisa Marie that uh, he, the gun is empty and he could point this gun at her and shoot her and nothing would happen. Yeah. So Lisa Marie, of course, she's a little kid. She says, do it. Yeah. And the guy says, no, you never point a loaded a gun at anyone, even though it's not loaded. Yeah. And he says, see, here, I'll show you. And he pointed the gun at the ceiling mm -hmm. and he fired it and the gun went off. Oh, that's great. <laughs> And just then Elvis was coming out of the elevator, of course, so everybody burst into the room with their guns drawn. Oh. Oh. <laughs> this is Hamburger James. I mean, this is Elvis. Yeah. That's pretty cool, man. Law enforcement Elvis. <laughs> like this that. poor child must have been so traumatized by this point. Yeah. It's incredible. Pull over the side of the road. This is Officer Elvis, ladies and gentlemen. Please, pull over the saddle. Don't you know you were doing 55 in a 50 mile zone? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. But the guy says, even after he got that little drug thing from uh, President Nixon, that Elvis didn't realize that he was a drug addict himself. You know, he had yeah. all these prescription drugs from doctors, and he had no idea that he was really addicted. He, you mean when he pinned that badge on his cheek and walked out of the White House, he had, <laughs> he no, had idea. no idea? Hey, David, you must have known Elvis. Uh, no, I just, no. You, you never said, did? No, I got a note from him one time. Yeah, you got a note from nice, Elvis? Very nice note, yeah. Yeah, really? a complimentary note, yeah. That's nice. That was what do you say? I never met him. You know, he's a fan and all that kind of thing. You got, did you save it? Uh, yeah, I got it somewhere, yeah. Huh? That's great. That's you got a little scrapbook that's somewhere. That's my Bobby Darren letter. <laughs> You're listening to And That's What's Happening, a Stern Show News Retrospective. I didn't want to plan anything. I knew what I had to do. I just relied on the other people to know what they needed to do, and Robin knew what to do. Uh, and that's why, to me, Robin was always with the show and key. Now playing on Howard 100, Howard 101, and SiriusXM.com. Uh, speaking of AIDS, you were mentioning AIDS a little while ago. Remember when I went to Chippendales and I said I couldn't believe how those guys were running up and kissing all these women and so forth and so on, and they weren't worried about disease? Well, guess what they do? If I was the women, I'd be worried about disease. We are, these women are crazy. Yeah. <laughs> the male dancers who entertain women at Chippendales gargle with antibacterial products before and after their performances. Oh, yeah, that'll uh, get rid of everything. Well, I'm wondering, what do they use? You know, what could be so potent that it would kill off all of those germs? Lysol. <laughs> And uh, they also have a ban on open mouth kissing. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe that. Because you've you know, seen it. I've seen it. And uh, those were penetrating kisses I, I saw. Yeah. 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 There was a lot of lot of exchanges going on. Do those on guys there. get erections while they're dancing? Like what, if they start kissing women? I think they're supposed women? to come out with them. They are. Yes. So they did come out with them. They have these these uh, little g-string type things that are stuffed with something, Howard. It's money. <laughs> no, no, you, no, no, no. Is, it just, they... is it just that they have a big bulge, or that they actually? Because you can tell the difference. I don't know about you, Robin, but well, I don't. Maybe you you're. Don't know. Yeah, you're more. Um, I'm saying though. Uh, educated. In are they subject. aroused when they come out, or are they? Are they? All I know is there was lots to look at. There was. <laughs> I mean, it was a big bulge. Yes. But it wasn't, uh, 
like everything wasn't like standing straight out. Eh, yeah. It yeah, was? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. Hmm. And I'll, also, I'll have to go there. <laughs> now, in order to, uh, you know, sort of screen the people that uh, you might encounter, there's a social card that you can get from a Denver health clinic. They will um, run a blood test on you. And then they'll give you a card that shows what you don't have, I guess. It lists the results of tests for sexually transmitted diseases on this card. So you could just flash your card whenever the question came up. Mm -hmm. And the question is, when do you ask a person if they have a sexually transmitted disease like AIDS or herpes or whatever? And the experts are now saying, well, first of all, you shouldn't be jumping into bed on the first date because that's certainly no time to uh, ask and find out how trustworthy these people may be. So the... Uh, common uh, advice these days is to wait a while and sort of bring it up in terms of, oh, I saw this thing in the paper today about, you know, whatever, and then to ask them, well, you don't have, you know, just sort of coyly, uh, you know, sneak up on the subject, and that should be after you've known this person for a while and find <laughs> out that they're trustworthy. What are those purple welts on your body? <laughs> yeah, really. But anyway, that's, that's life in the dating game. It was hard to get a disc jockey to talk to you about anything that had nothing to do with music, so his interactions were welcome. Robin has informed me that it will be a problem doing the news because there are so many stories. Well, so many different things I'd like to mention. Go ahead, Robin. Do it um, like a, a montage of events. A montage yeah. of events. In other yeah. words, just, just inundate us. Bring us up to date. All right. First of all, let, you know, like I made a list of things that uh, were going on while we were away. So, in other words, this was a working vacation. No, you know, you just while you're laying there in bed, you might as well do something. You jotted a few things down. That's right. right. And the first thing on my list is, of course, Kathy, Kathy Lee is pregnant. She and Giff announced while we were away, Howard, that they are expecting five months after her miscarriage, where she scooped her baby out of the toilet. Yeah, yeah. And like anyone believes that. You know what happened? She had to write a book, right? <laughs> Kathy Lee Gifford, they hired her to write a book. Yes. Someone said, hey, we'll, we'll have a Kathy Lee Gifford book. So she had to come up with stories. She had to have some kind of hardship in her life. Right. So the biggest hardship in her life, get this, is she had a miscarriage. Well, there were two. Remember, the first husband couldn't make love to her? Oh, yeah. And that was real. I'm sure the first husband really appreciates being in that book. <laughs> I would have no trouble making love to her. What was his problem? I don't know. <laughs> and I'm, sure he, I'm sure he was really pleased. He's probably a private guy, religious guy. Never said a word about her. Kept it, you know, even yeah. after she became very famous, yeah. never stepped up and tried to get any of the limelight. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, she has to write a book, so she, she writes, the guy couldn't. So she's trying to protect him. She says, he could never really make love to me. <laughs> and what does that mean? All right. So you have two ideas, right? right. Either he was impotent. Yeah. Or he was homosexual. Right. Now, I'm not saying he's either one of those. I don't know this guy. But this is what you start to think. Yeah. I mean, he, how, many, how many reasons could you give for not being able to make love to Kathy Lee Gifford? Because the biggest jerk as she is, she's pretty hot like him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, you can't, you can't argue with that. That's what you guys say. Yeah. Oh, believe me, she is. <laughs> Them little chicken legs of hers. Uh, yeah. yeah, I watched uh, Regis and Kathy Lee a lot, and I really? don't and I don't watch it for Regis. I watch it just to look at her different outfits. Mm. Let's think about Gif climbing on top. The Gif. Boy, what a life he's having! What a charmed life. Well, like I said, now he can't have sex with her for four months, according to the tabloids. Yeah. So that she can uh, carry the baby full term. She should get himself a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, he has a right at his age. Should he have to wait? I think a guy who's like uh, approaching the the last few years of his life, sh four months could be an eternity. That's, could be the end. Right. <laughs> I think he has a right to go out and cheat. Uh, he's here to have sex, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Well, so anyway, they're having a baby, and they made the big announcement so that we're all in on it, and we can have Kathy's pregnancy with her for the entire time. Al Michaels. She's supposed to slow down, though. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh. She said, well, she would stop all of her other commitments, you know, all of her commercial endorsements and her singing <laughs> engagements. <laughs> how, much, and... <laughs> how much energy does it take to do a commercial? <laughs> well, when you're doing so many, it's just getting from place to place, oh, I, I see. suppose. She has like a, well, I'm sure she has people who keep her involved schedule uh, simple. <laughs> So she's going to cut back on all of those other extracurricular activities and, and devote herself only to the morning show. Al Michaels ought to put on a wig, a female wig, and, <laughs> and try to seduce Frank Gifford. <laughs> That's, I'm going to call him up and tell him that.
<laughs> yeah. Um, oh, hi, Frank. <laughs> I heard you can't have it for four months. Uh, well, you know what would be great? I was watching a lot of horror movies on my vacation. Because yeah. all I did was rent movies. That's all I ever do. I saw this cool movie where aliens impregnated this woman. I saw that movie. It's with, um... The Unborn? No. It was, it was called, uh... No, that was another one. Okay. It was a different one. I don't know what it was. Aliens impregnated, huh? Wouldn't it be cool, like, if... And I saw one... I saw Omen 4 where Satan impregnated a woman. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if Satan... There was an Omen 4? Yeah. This is amazing. And I rented it. That's even more... What's more amazing, that there's an Omen 4 that I rented it? You are incredible. Yeah. So, uh, there's this, um, you know, sort of plot line where Satan impregnates this woman. Uh -huh. She doesn't know. Wouldn't it be great if Satan impregnated... Impregnated Kathy Lee? Yeah. Uh -huh. That it was the demon seed inside of Kathy Lee Gifford? We can only hope. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> like Would thing... she talk about it? Would she bring it out on TV? Yeah, I think, like, you know... Um, Reed, this is my... <laughs> this is my, my son, Cody, and <laughs> here's the devil. <laughs> Mother. Things not working any better than it used to. <laughs> it's, uh, you're right back at the same old place. <laughs> you can say that again. It's funny because, uh, I know that Kathy Lee said she and, and her love for GIF has helped her refine her way to her religion. Is that right? What religion is that? Jewish, isn't it? <laughs> no. <laughs> isn't her religion Jewish? Well, don't, you didn't read the book? No, no. Her father, I think, was a non-practicing Jew. Oh. And the mother got into, you know, started watching those TV evangelists and got real religious. Yeah. So then she converted the whole family. So the father became a minister. A Jew became a minister. Yeah. And so now they're all Christians. Yeah, because the way she's going around trying to prove that she's Christian, you wouldn't <laughs> know there was any Jewish background there. <laughs> I mean, she's, she's out Christianing everyone. That's right. So she uh, was very religious and married a religious guy the first time around, and then she became a wild woman after he couldn't satisfy her. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? Is that that's in the book? The story of the, that's her story. So who did she uh, get it on with? She uh, got it on with many people. I forget all the names. You know, some of them were famous and some right. of them weren't, but all of them were wrong. Jackie Martley on that list? <laughs> <laughs> that's drunk. too wrong. Two-legged <laughs> two, That's the real long, wrong list. <laughs> She'd get that wild. <laughs> Uh, then you could verifiably say she was a wild woman. But Kathy Lee, that. you can go around with all the Christmas trees and all the Christian crap and all that stuff. But you know what? You're a Jew. <laughs> a Jew, a Jew. Kathy Jew. And you know what? Her name is no longer Kathy Lee Gifford. It's Kathy Lee Jew. <laughs> and that's and that is what you call her when you see her. When, Anyone, you see her on the street. when people see her in the street, you say Kathy Jew. Oh, it's Kathy Jew. Oh, Kathy Jew. I saw you on TV. <laughs> Kathy Jew. Kathy Jew. Jewess. Kathy Jewess. <laughs> Kathy Lee Jewess. I'm doing all this good material, and this Spanish guy in L.A. is getting my <laughs> getting rating. getting the credit. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy Lee Jew. Should she be Kathy Lee Jew or Kathy Jew? Kathy Jew Gifford. Kathy Jew Gifford? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Like that one. Kathy okay. Jew Gifford. Kathy Jew Gifford. That's the way she gets to keep the three names. <laughs> it's Kathy Jew Gifford <laughs> for Carnival Regis Cruises. slips one day. Yeah, and like, even if he'll get back to Regis, and he'll go, well, uh, Kathy Jew, I uh, Kathy Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy <laughs> Jew. <laughs> Kathy Jew Gifford, because she's so... Embarrassed by her Jewish identity, <laughs> as most Jews are. Uh, she is now Kathy Jew Gifford, so she won't forget it. All right. And everyone should refer to her as Kathy Jew Gifford. <laughs> Especially you people in New York who get to see her and say, hey, Kathy Jew, enjoy yeah, the show. Yell that at her you know, from across the street. <laughs> Kathy Jew. <laughs> You're a Jew. Just when you thought she couldn't hate us more. Right. <laughs> Kathy Jew We're Gifford. Back. Kathy Jew Gifford with you. <laughs> and Cody, that's like the most non-Jewish name you could think of. Right, Cody. Cody Jew Gifford. <laughs> no, not the child. <laughs> right, yeah, leave him alone. <laughs> he can't help it. Yeah, he can't help it that his mom is Kathy Lee Gifford. <laughs> I mean, Kathy Jew Gifford. That's right. Get right. her name right. Right. We love flying by the seat of our pants without a net. Is Woody Allen out there? Yes. Say that again, please. Yes, and he's got a. Um, he has to come on now because he's got an appointment at nine o'clock. Oh my! Bubba and Bowie. he said, "Please, he's having a little trouble breathing today, so please be gentle." Why does he have? I'm really surprised. Well, obviously, he's under a lot of stress. Why don't yes. you bring in Woody? You Allen? know what that's like, Howard. Uh, Robin, uh, briefly tell us, Woody Allen. Woody Allen was in court yesterday. They had another hearing for some reason. Or other, he's in a continuing custody battle with Mia Farrow over three of their children, uh, one natural child and two adopted children, and. Uh, Mia weighed in yesterday with more allegations of wrongdoing by Woody, one of which was that Dylan and Moses, 
I think, or Dylan and Satchel, one of the, those combinations, had seen Woody and Suni. Yes. Making love. In fact, Dylan said that she saw Daddy putting his penis in Suni. Oh, oh. Whoa. While she and Satchel wow. were visiting at Allen's Manhattan apartment. Wow. Uh, Dylan also accused him of abuse. She claims that he tried to push her <laughs> face into a hot bowl of spaghetti. I love that. And he also allegedly threatened to break Satchel's legs. Oh, come on. I can't believe any of this, Woody. Is this true? <laughs> tell me about uh, your relationship with the Chinese woman, Soon Yi. Tell, me, tell us once and for all. Give us the definitive statement, Woody. And tell us uh, what you think about all of this. Go ahead, Woody Allen. Uh, by the way, good to have you here. I give, uh, I give Sun Yi an allowance that would make other gooks drop their fortune cookies. <laughs> <laughs> well, Woody, uh, let me just say how unfortunate it is what you're going through, and uh, I, how are you feeling? Are you, are you feeling any better? And the last time we spoke to you, you were real upset. I feel great. I have been humping Sun Yi quite regularly. <laughs> I see. <laughs> well, that always makes a guy. I uh, feel good. Oh, dear. Now, um... It seems to be easier for Woody to talk to the press now. You know, he used to be so shy. Now, I notice, uh, Woody, yeah, now he's opening up a yeah. little. Woody, I noticed that today you're not wearing your trademark uh, Woody Allen glasses. Now, well, now, why is that? With my glasses off, I can pretend that Dylan is even younger. Oh. <laughs> With your glasses off, you can pretend that Dylan is younger? I see. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me uh, about uh, some of the things that you've learned from this experience, if you would, Mr. Allen. I, I would appreciate to know what you've learned. I'm amazed at the sexual favors I can get in trade for a Hershey bar. Oh. <laughs> you know, he's so soft-spoken, oh, isn't he? Oh, my goodness. Oh, <laughs> Tell me some of the things that, uh, now that you're not working on a movie presently, tell me some of the things that you are uh, doing during your day. What does Woody Allen do during the day? I like to go to Dylan's brownie meetings with no underwear on. <laughs> <laughs> you go to brownie meetings with no underwear on? <laughs> uh, let me ask you something. Let's turn to another uh, topic. New Year's Eve, you obviously uh, must have spent a quiet evening alone. Is that true? Yes, I see. And uh, what did you make a New Year's resolution? That's something I would like to know. Aren't you curious, Robin, if you made a New Year's resolution? Yeah, what is his New Year's What resolution? is your New Year's resolution? My New, my New Year's resolution is to photograph a topless eight-year-old in a calico skirt. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And, um... <clears throat> I guess he's done everything else. <laughs> <laughs> Be honest. What do you, seriously, Woody? What do you do all day? What, what, like, what is, like, what did you do around Christmas time? Oh yeah, the kids weren't there. Right. What did you do at Christmas, Woody? Seriously. <laughs> he doesn't want to answer. He's very He's, upset. Uh, asking his lawyer if he should answer that question. <laughs> Woody has walked in with a lawyer. And uh, come on, seriously, Woody. Definitely Martling. <laughs> He's asking Martling whether or not he should answer the question. Now, uh, seriously, what do you do around Christmas? Be honest, Woody. I love to sit, I love to sit in the dark with at my... All right. It's Woody, hard for him it's to say. very hard for him to say. <laughs> I'll leave Woody alone. No, but seriously, Woody, why are you so upset? Are you lonely? Is that the problem? Are you a lonely man? I'm lonely. I haven't got a dry pair of underwear. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> and the Sunni, why does. Uh, it's an amazing thing what's going on. Here you are, an older man, and yet you're with a younger woman. Isn't it amazing? 54, right? Right. Somehow soon he enjoys my old Jewish penis. <laughs> <laughs> but the soon he is so much younger than you. What do you do all day? I mean, this How do you talk to her? Yeah. I like to feel up soon he while she stirs the wok. <laughs> <laughs> And why is it that all of a sudden you're out of love with this Mia Farrow? You were with Mia Farrow for so long, Woody. Why, why all of a sudden are you no longer in love with her? Mia has such small boobs, I have to stare at the children. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you know, Woody, I do want to thank you. You are the only, We are the only radio station that I know of. Yeah, we've has, never had Mia on the show. No, Mia never comes on. 
Although uh, I, I wish you would. <laughs> I wish you would respond to some of these things. But you've been open and honest in this uh, forum of ours. Yes. And I want you to uh, to know that you are welcome here anytime on this radio program, Mr. Woody Allen. I enjoy the forum. This program gives me girls under 12. Please call and ask for Uncle Woody. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Robin, I don't know about you, but I find this unbelievable. you have any questions? Well, I think it's ridiculous that he's making requests for 12-year-olds to call. You can't do that on the radio, Woody. Yes. It's really true. Woody, what do you have to say to that? Once you go Oriental, you never go back. <laughs> <laughs> so are you going to marry Suni? That's what I've been reading. Some of the, the uh, tabloids have been saying you've got a big surprise in store. Yeah, what about that? What is the big surprise? What what a party it was to dump that load, Mia, and bed down her kid. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, don't you think that was rather malicious? Wouldn't yeah, really. Uh, t tell me something. What, what, what goes on in that Mia Farrell household? She has so many children. I, I'm yeah, dying do you have to any know. accusations about her? Right. And, and, and more importantly, what do you do there all day? What do you do at Mia Farrow's house all day? I kiss Dylan on her fanny while she reads the weekly reader. Oh. <laughs> Ever heard of Nintendo? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, Woody, I got to tell you something. Uh, your relationship with the Soon Yi is unbelievable. And um, certainly I, you never made love, though, with her in front of the other kids. Yeah, what do you do with that Soon Yi? I like to lick Sunya like an Elvis stamp. <laughs> <laughs> Woody, come on, say something of substance. Say something about the whole case and how you're feeling. Go ahead. I'll give you an open microphone. Say whatever you want. I ruined so many pairs of underwear while watching Sesame Street. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so I guess we can't expect you to be dating any women your age. Right. Is that true? Will you be dating any women of your age? What, are you still with us? <laughs> Mia and uh, Dylan have the same build. <laughs> Mia and Dylan have the same build? <laughs> so I guess it really doesn't matter. <laughs> what about the allegation? Let's get down to the serious stuff. Yes. Uh, Woody, a, an allegation has been made about you that you forced Dylan's head into the spaghetti. Is that true that you did that? I put Dylan's face in hot spaghetti as a sex exercise. <laughs> So I guess it's true. You're admitting to that. Oh. What kind of sex exercise is that, though? <laughs> now, what about uh, the idea that you broke the legs? Or you threatened to break his legs. You, you threatened to break the legs of your uh, son, Satchel. Satchel yes. now, now, I can't believe that. What about that? I can't wait to have children with Sun Yi. I've never broken the legs of a newborn. <laughs> <laughs> I see. And um, uh, Sun Yi wants to have children with you and uh, have a life with you. Has this been discussed, this uh, oriental girl? I love to eat chow mein off of Sun Yi's bare ass. <laughs> Well, you know, they say she's a young, naive girl. She had never had a boyfriend before. Don't you think this is taking advantage? <laughs> yeah, really. Hey, Woody, Robin brings up a, a good point. You are taking advantage of the situation. What is your big news? Are you going to marry Soon Yi? Is that the big news? Is that the big news you have for us today? Are you going to marry Soon Yi? Why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, Woody, that's an old saw that really just doesn't cut it anymore. Well, I think you ought to uh, stay away from Dylan, and uh, you ought to stay away from Soon Yi. No, he says he wants custody, Howard. You want custody? How dare you? Make, uh, what about the, your relationship with the young child, Dylan? Now, what about all this? Uh... I taught Dylan to put a condom on with one hand. <laughs> Boy. Wow, this is unbelievable. Well, if you're saying all this stuff, how can you then say that Mia is coaching the little girl on the videotape? <laughs> well, you know, Woody's a comedian. I think he's making jokes here. Oh, I you hope think he is. so? Oh, huh? yeah. I mean, I, I can't imagine that. Well, he's let's hope they don't subpoena this thing. I know. If they subpoena you, you're in big trouble. Um, I hope you. What you're saying is a joke. 
I, I certainly do, Woody. I really do. I like to play nude twister with five-year-olds. Is that so wrong? <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, Woody, I got to say goodbye to you. If you really seriously make a serious comment about uh, this whole this whole situation. Dylan is the right height to wash my genitals in the shower. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Oh, what is that? That's it. Oh, that's the my. lowest. That's the worst You're thing you've really ever low. said. Uh, come on. That's no joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, he's poking fun at the whole society. Uh, saying this is absolutely ridiculous that anybody uh, thinks that he would do such a thing. Absolutely. Uh, I think you're right, Robin, when you say, uh, ask a question. You're a newswoman. You ask all right, a serious question. All right. Uh, my final question this morning. Final question. Yes. Why do you think you should have custody of these kids? You've never had kids around. Robin, don't rain on my kitty bread. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, I guess he's uh, determined. Yeah. What'd you do for Christmas? Seriously. I I'm being serious. What'd you do? I went caroling with Dylan's friends and felt their, their <laughs> little asses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Well, that's going to be some custody case. I tell you, you better not testify like this in uh, court. You know, Woody, you have asked that uh, both you and Mia Farrell undergo psychiatric testing. Is that right? What do you think it'll show about you? <laughs> he don't know. Believe me. It's unbelievable. You know, seriously, if you did go for, um, if you went for psychiatric counseling and they asked you about Soon Yi, the Chinese girl, what are you going to say to the psychiatrist about Soon Yi? When Sun Yi starts to sweat during sex, I only feel 10 to 15 years older than her. <laughs> All right. Listen, I want to thank uh, Woody for stopping by. <laughs> thank you, Woody. Oh, boy. Did you have fun here today? Was that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you have to write that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you can ad lib there. As I'll tell you that. But anything you want to say, uh, Woody, before uh, you go? Anything over there? Go ahead. What do you want to say? Say something, please. Say, say a final word to us. We love when you talk so much, Woody. It's such an audio. You give so few interviews. Uh, there must be something, something that you want to sum up with. We love having this access to you for the yeah, first really. time. One last thing. Grace us with uh, some more of your humor. Oh, I see. All right. He doesn't want to say anything. Okay. He said enough. <laughs> he said enough. I think he did. <laughs> I think he said I think too he much. cooked his goose. I certainly do. I don't see you winning that case. <laughs> Well, of course, that is not the real Woody. That's, of course uh, not. That's Steve the engineer. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Steve. Good job. What is that? What is that you want to say? Uh, Howard, you are king of all media. <laughs> all right. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> all right. We got to go and uh, take a break. And then, Rob, we should do the uh, rest of the news. All You've right. covered the Woody Allen thing pretty yeah. thoroughly. He'll be back right after these words. <laughs> When she would do the news, she knew the right stories to get me going. You know, she knew how to hit my butt. Guess what? Mark Goodman and Alan Hunter soon Fired. to say goodbye to MTV on a regular basis. They say the parting is amicable and each is expected to sign contracts to come back and do special things. Special, yeah, just like Martha <laughs> Quinn's back for special things. <laughs> But they're both leaving to uh, pursue their acting careers. What acting careers? <laughs> Mark Goodman was a disc jockey in WPLJ before he got that job. He has no acting career. And uh, certainly Alan Hunter, I never heard of him before. Well, he doesn't even know how to act. Goodman is developing two TV shows he hopes oh, to syndicate. He's crazy. And Hunter yeah? is making a movie with Robbie Benson. Yo, oh, boy. <laughs> what do they play? <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, Alan. Yes, Robbie. <laughs> they play sisters, I guess. I think so. <laughs> Alan Hunter's like, I hate to say this is a pretty nice guy, actually. I, I did meet him. That's yeah. the problem in this business. I meet people, then I can't make fun of them. <laughs> but Mark Goodman I met twice, and I still think the guy's a real dick. <laughs> I don't like him. I don't like him at all. I'm glad he's out of a job, but uh, Alan Hunter I'm kind of sad about. Well, it's time to move on, I suppose. Hmm. You know, they must have seen the handwriting on the wall. 
Yeah, I think it's a little too much with that MTV. I mean, you know, really, what is that MTV? You know, I used to think, man, that's a really good job. That's really, they're really going to become famous from that. But all they are is DJs on television. Mm -hmm. It's not all that big a deal. So maybe this acting thing yeah. will pan out for them in a better way. I thought Mark Goodman though, was a pretty good VJ. I thought he handled the job pretty well. I never actually got to see Alan Hunter uh, all that much, so I really didn't get a feel for him, but I always heard good things about yeah, no, him. No, I'm saying Mark, Mark Goodman, I thought, you know, as much as a silly guy as he is, I always thought he was a pretty good VJ. I really? guess, you know, who, who, who can evaluate what's a good VJ? Hey, Gary, that could have been your job, you moron. Boy, did you blow it. Now they're looking for two permanent you know, VJs. Yeah. You know, yeah, but it's not over yet, because when I went for the interview, they were looking for one. Now they're looking for yeah, two. You. you know something? You are so You'll delusional. You'll probably get called back, right. Your, your audition tape was so bad. <laughs> Where is your audition tape for that MTV? I want to hear pack, it. It's packed away. Go get that. Go it's get packed. it. Packed. Get it out of the box. I don't know which box it's in. You was. imbecile. But, but, but the point is, you know something? Yeah. If I, now, if I, were to get that, if I was to get that job, yes. I would stand in the same spot, and you would say, what a crummy job. You only get $50,000 a year. You're not going to be famous. I was like, I can't win thing. You're not, don't worry. You don't, have that, you don't have to worry about me making fun of you getting a job. <laughs> you know, they got a guy over there. God bless him. Um, Steve Lees. Steve Lees, the program director at MTV. He's a wonderful guy, but he's got some kind of cockamamie idea. He's going to go out, and he's going to hire young VJs. He's going to hire us like 16-year-olds, like Dweezil or something mm -hmm. like that. Now, I'll tell you something. What makes you think? What makes you think? Like, they got a young VJ in there, Carolyn uh, Hellman. Hellman. Uh -huh. How old she's, is she? She looks older than Martha Quinn. She's about she's about 23 or 24. And she looks older than Martha Quinn. Yeah, oh, yeah, a lot older. I don't get the point of hiring young VJs. I liked Martha. I, and thought, I thought she was Martha great. was good. She was very good. I thought Nina was good. <laughs> she can wrap her around my bedpost. Once again, ah. I never saw Chain her no. down, I swear to God. I'd like to chain her down to the bed like <laughs> Reverend Heidnick. Make her my slave girl. I swear to God. I swear. You are I swear I You always think such nice things you want to do to these people. Yeah, too. nothing nothing romantic. Just <laughs> chain them down. Well, you know, a girl, you know a girl like that doesn't want to be in bed with me. I have to chain her down. And then I could do stuff to her, and then she'd learn to love me. Yes. But, you know, they, they were. Uh, I spoke. One of the guys that works on the TV show has a friend that works at MTV, and he said mm. that they were. That they did not take my audition tape lightly. That they considered it yanking, very seriously. He's yanking your crank. I'll tell you something. Steve Leeds is such a groupie of mine. The the the, uh, <laughs> the guy who runs NTV is infatuated with me. <laughs> he's in he's in love with me. There's no question about it. He's a groupie. So he hears Gary on the show. He figures, oh, then we'll put Gary on MTV. But there's no magic with you unless I'm at your side, you idiot. What's wrong with you? You have no personality. It's my personality that allows you to come through. <laughs> you're, absolutely, you're absolutely right. Do you think like if once a week we could go down a tape on like Sundays for a whole week, would you come with no, me? No, just get out of here. Uh, <laughs> you make me sick. You, you repulse me. You know what repulses me about you? I don't know. Most, man, obviously. All right, your breath. But do you know what second repulses me most about you? That you went to MTV and you didn't even tell me about the audition. You didn't even tell me about the job. <laughs> because never going to get over there. I can't believe it. You were hiding from me. You know why? Because you, would, you thought you were going to... You were going to... I thought you were, were going to be able to. Dump him. Yeah, and you were going to come in in that office and go, Howard, uh, by the way, I got to hand you my resignation. I think I'm going to go be a VJ at MTV. Well, look, your dreams didn't come true. You know why? <laughs> I'll tell you why your dreams don't come true. You're a loser. Get out of here. I'm so, I, You're an idiot. That's why. Plus, I really have sorry. You had one big chance to be something in your life on your own, and you blew it. That's it. <laughs> you need me. You're, I'm like your daddy. I'm better than your daddy. I'm your sugar daddy. I'm your ticket out of the, out of that slum you live in, Uniondale. <laughs> That's what you are. I'm sorry. I irritate. I can see this is like obviously a hot issue. Aren't you supposed to be uh, packing boxes in the office? We're moving the station, and you're supposed to be packing. Yeah. I, I, isn't it true that you're marking those boxes with your breath? No, no, that's not true. The mozzarella scent, of course, is books. Anchovy scent is records. Pasta scent is script. <laughs> and the green stain means Gary had an accident. Oh. Man, you're an outrage. I didn't do anything today, boss. No, that's just it. Why don't you do something? I'm paying you. <laughs> you don't do anything go. every day. Get out of here. Oh, my goodness. One final story. Well, let's save it for after the uh, spots, Rob. What, are you in a rush? <laughs> that guy's an idiot. He is. He's an idiot. And you know what he's making now? I figured out what he's earning. <laughs> he's making about... I can't about, wait to hear this. I think he's pulling down. How much is he making on the TV show? I don't know. I'm embarrassed to not say. Much, not much. What do you mean, not much? I don't think he's making that much. Not like he's making... He's making a few hundred a week, isn't he? At least. Maybe three. Maybe three hundred a... No. What? How much do you have me down for? Aren't you making like 300 a week? From where? On the TV show? 
Okay. They want to give him like 400, but oh, I said, no, no way. No, no, no. 400, forget it. He's a bum. <laughs> so 300 a week. Don't worry, they didn't want to give you 400. 300 a week. <laughs> he's bumming out over there. No, 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 no. He's very upset. 300 a week. And here he's making what? 525. 525? Yeah. An hour? No, a week. Oh, a week? <laughs> uh, 525. What's that? I'm going to add this up. You gotta, you 300. Gotta... Wait, don't add it up. I Don't right. add it up yet. Just wait a second. All right. 525 a week. He's doing... Personal appearances. Yeah, okay. He's cooled out on those a little bit. I'd say he's good for... Ten grand a year on that? No, not quite. But I am doing two next month. Oh, you're good for yeah, ten two grand a, a year. Two a month, he does. He makes about so, ten thousand. About a thousand a, a, a month. All right, I just want to give everyone an indication <laughs> of how much money this guy's making off of me. Oh, I hate when you do All that. Right, and plus the perks of getting girls and stuff like that. Mm. Let's see. That's five right. to eight hundred twenty-five a week. No, I'm not counting the extra ten grand. All right, and that's times fifty-two. Two times five is ten. Carry the one. Two times two is four, and one is five. Two times eight, sixteen. Five times five, twenty-five. Carry the two. <laughs> five I'm times already two ahead is of ten. You. Eleven, twelve. <laughs> Carry the one. Five times eight is forty, and one is forty-one. All right. Grand total. Seventy. Seventy-eight million dollars. No. <laughs> no. Five, zero and zero is zero. It's forty-two thousand. Wait a second. Nine hundred dollars, about forty-three. Now add ten thousand to that. Add ten thousand. That's fifty-three. Fifty-three thousand dollars a year is what you're making. Yeah. Hold on a second. What? Okay. Hold on a second. What? Fifty-three thousand. I have a defense here. A year for doing nothing. Yeah. I have a defense here. Yeah. This, and there's a reason why. Yeah. First of all, you drive me crazy. Hold on, I made that. I made that three hundred dollars a week for only the last five or six weeks, and after this week, I won't make it anymore. So you adding that in as if I made it for a whole year? I only uh, made it for six weeks. All right. Well, keep it down. Wait a second. You were working for uh, my syndicated radio show. You were making big money on that. Oh thing. yeah, buck and a half a, a week, man. I was going nuts. Uh, you can. He's he making. That. Yeah, but Howard, he was man, doing a lot more personal appearances. You're ruining this for me. You don't understand. I keep making big money for you. Yeah. You're ruining this for me because I'm about to. to to hit uh, Tom up for a raise, and you're ruining it for me. Oh, yeah, you should hit him up for a raise. Because, you know, we're... You, you deserve it. Don't you think so, boss? Get out of here, you <laughs> idiot. Before you get a raise, no one's getting a raise here. I'm getting a raise before you... Get out of here. How dare you? I shouldn't talk for four hours. Till I, till I, 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 I can't even talk to my family at night, and he's going to get a raise? You're out of your mind. You Dingleberry think? breath. Oh, 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 wait a second now. What? Wait, here we are. Here we How are. dare you? We're in Philadelphia. We're really hot. Show we the, are in we? Philadelphia. Well, I think I helped. What do you mean, we? Yeah, we. White man. Yeah, we. <laughs> I think I helped too. Just get out of here before I get sick. Sick to my stomach. <laughs> Don't argue a case. You know what he does? He likes to argue his case on the air, and then when he goes to Tom, because he, he's a worm in front of Tom. <laughs> Why don't you go pedal ice cream like your old man? Oh, man. You want our raise. <laughs> There's a good second job for yeah, you. Yeah, go work on the ice cream truck with your father on weekends. What's he got now, uh, Hagen dolls? No, Steve's. Steve's. Steve's, yeah. Go in the Steve's truck with him. <laughs> well, yeah, you should get a, a little something. Tom should give you a little something. Just a little bit. I'm not greedy. You know what he does. He comes in here, he doesn't have the balls to ask Tom for a raise, so he does it on the end. I've been working up to it for like a month now, and every time I get along with him when I'm about to do it, Something goes wrong. Well, he always finds something that I'm doing wrong so that I can't ask him. That's the whole thing. You've got to surprise him. Let me hear you go ding a ling, ding a ling. Ding a ling, ding a ling. Yeah, for the ice cream truck. He yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm All beginning right. to feel sorry for you, Gary. It's been pretty tough today. <laughs> sick of you. I think we're sick. I make sure at the TV show my friends can get in. What's the problem here? Oh, oh, oh. What's the problem While here? While we're at it, for $53,000 a year, you think my friends could get into the TV show? Who couldn't get in? A friend of mine, Tim. Tim the trainer? Yeah. He couldn't get in? They, could they start, Because he showed up at 5 o'clock. They, they got, the security that's, guard, that's the they wouldn't let him in. And I, I said, well, if people who are on my list should be able to get yeah, in. Yeah, but this, at that point, let me tell you something. They when they Get let, out of here. You're no, making no, sick. No, no. Don't, don't, don't give me that. Just get out of here. The security guard doesn't know. He doesn't have the list. The person with the list closed You stay up. with the security guard. How dare you? Oh, get out of here. How can I stay with the security guard and hold your water at the same time? You just do it. <laughs> you just hold your water, my friend. Because when I get through with you. Oh, boy. 
Oh, 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 man. Oh, you you oh, enema bag face. Oh, oh dude. <laughs> enema bag breath. <laughs> ah, just having a little fun, Robin. I hope so. Yes. I feel like I get my hands on I don't know how much fun Gary's having. Well, I can't stand him. It's like an albatross. I wish MTV, I'll pay MTV to give him a DJ job. Take him off my hands for $53,000 a year. I could hire myself a full-time professional secretary for that kind of money. Oh, I could hire two full-time secretaries for that sure. kind of money. You could hire that dancer. You could hire a personal secretary. You have her follow you around all day. Fifty-three thousand dollars a year, and he doesn't even come to my house. They have somebody like Fawn Hall. Oh man! <laughs> I mean, someone who could type. Yeah. Gary doesn't even know how to type. And keep secrets. Gary can't keep secrets. If I ask, if I ask Gary to type a letter, he gets angry with me. Yeah, because it'll take him all day. You know, I don't know how to type, and you know, there's no interns around to type for me. That's I not my job. Oh, I could have a full-time secretary handling all my affairs. Answering my mail, everything. You should. You know how when I get like requests for stuff, like from police guys who want me to come help out one right. of their buddies and I can't do it? I never even They have a... never get a nice letter. No, I don't know what to send them because I know Gary can't handle it. I could handle it. You, you never couldn't asked me handle to. it. You can't even type. <laughs> I want you going to typing school. <laughs> I'll pay for it. <laughs> That's okay, boss. That's I couldn't gonna accept. be what you're going to be doing. I couldn't accept that. I'm going to pay for your training. Oh, come on. Oh, man. He's paying you too much already, Gary. I, d I went to typing school. Yeah, he's once. going to typing school. Yeah. I'm sick of this. Then learn to take shorthand, too. Yeah. I type pretty good. Do you take shorthand? Of course not. <laughs> well, $53,000 a year, you should learn. I like to see in the New York Times that there's a listing for $53,000. For twenty grand. I could get... Th for that kind of money, I could get three girls who could do sure. steno and, um, and oh, typing. Oh, they could do everything. Who needs you? What do I need you for? What the hell needs you? <laughs> You're worthless to me. Even... And people say, be nice to him. Be nice to him? How much nicer can you be? And I figured by now he'd have another job. <laughs> I didn't know he'd be hanging around for a lifetime position with me. Have you noticed me, though? I've been networking myself in with your mom, so you might have a tough time getting rid of me because she kind of well, likes I me. I wouldn't get rid of you because I don't like firing you, but I really think that, I mean, I know you're looking for jobs and stuff, but, you know, I'm going to call over to MTV. Maybe I can get you something. <laughs> Get you a, 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 a weekend VJ thing. Would you leave for that, or would you would still be here? Oh, well, if you give me on the weekends, that would be great, because then I could do this and still. No, work no, no. I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for you full time over there. <laughs> Crazy. I know I'm never gonna get rid of you. <laughs> who's gonna pay him fifty three thousand dollars? Nobody. Here? Oh come on, man. Who's gonna, oh, this is like the best job. I know. You get got to go, made. Go and to you all see the, the women, and you see the women he gets from this. Oh, he is ridiculous with this whole woman thing. Oh, man. Ooh. He just sometimes goes out to make sure it still works, you know? You know who still gets me angry? <laughs> that one that we had on dial a day. Oh. Which one? Who's that? Oh. The one that you nailed. Which, which, which one? He nailed, um, you know her. Because he nailed a bunch of them. Well, none of these. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not. T and also, you know what else gets me? That little, uh, that rich girl. The little rich the girl. That bunny, was the yeah. funniest the ski one. Ski bunny. Oh, God. Oh, man. That I rerun that one every once in a while myself. <laughs> man. And then he got this one girl who. <laughs> got the loony. Yeah, that loony one. But man, was she nice. <laughs> you nailed her, right? <laughs> Much wait a chagrin. second, hold on a second. That was before I met my girlfriend. No, I don't know. And she, wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. Girlfriend. And she doesn't live in this town anymore. Yes, yeah. I did. Much to his chagrin. You knew yes. your girlfriend during that. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I did not. Oh, yes, you did. No, I didn't. No, you didn't. You didn't. I know that for a fact. <laughs> <laughs> you and your girlfriend. It's another thing. He's got a nice girlfriend. Yeah. She, uh, I gave her a nice uh, kiss when I saw her at the uh, TV show. Oh, thank you. She was yeah. pleased. She gave me a little tongue. Oh, come on. Oh. I jammed my tongue down her throat. She loved it. She liked you. Yeah, I like her, too. <laughs> but, uh, I can't believe it. He gets all the tukey. Oh, goodness. Because Fred don't take it. Fred don't want Fred it. Fred runs away from it. He, yeah. He's in a cart with it and won't Fred's take afraid it. of tukey. <laughs> yeah, sure. Jackie, of course, is spoken for. Yeah. Although he is thinking about, uh... Oh, no, he's not. Yes, he is. He is? Yeah. Don't, don't write Fred off, man. He was kidnapped two weeks ago in that car with nah, those little Nah, Fred doesn't do any of this. Fred's a virgin. Fred's never had sex. I am. I swear. 
<laughs> Fred's yeah. going out the way he came in. Yep. Yeah. Thank God. Thank God. Fred's afraid of, of body contact. That's it. You're but right. I heard, Freddie, Freddie, you would be having, you know what you're talking about? You're talking about this wonderful experience? Yeah. I read an article uh. the other day that says Freddie should be having the world's greatest experience. If it's that good for you, yeah. because Freddie is still intact. Oh, because he's not circumcised. And I he wish be to much God. more sensitive. I wish I could get a hold of my mother. I feel like slapping her <laughs> silly for having me circumcised. <laughs> it's an outrage what she did to me. I tell you, had I had a son, had my wife given me sons, I would not have had a one of them circumcised. Really? That's right. And even though my father says, well, you know, you don't want the boys looking different uh -huh. than, your, you know, than the dad. I said, that's okay. They ain't going to see their dad. I'm not going to embarrass myself to show my boys what I got. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm just a... Uh, oh, God, God, God forbid I bring his son into the world and he's got the same curse I have. <laughs> Six foot five, big long hands, big 13 inch, 13 feet, size 13 feet, and I got no wiener. Got the wiener of a nine-year-old. <laughs> For God's sake. I'm telling you. Oh, goodness. I'm telling you. But Freddie should be having some experiences, and he's no, not no. even taking advantage I'm of it. Well, you know why he doesn't? Because he's embarrassed. He's embarrassed by the sight of that uh, disgusting ant eater in his pants. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. It's not true. That's what it is. No, it is. I'm, I'm, I'm donating right. my foreskin to science. All right, just uh, just play commercials. You're disgusting. <laughs> you and Gary. I'll be back after this. I am a big fan of Robin's news. Um. Sorry, I have a cold. Could you make that out? I said Robin's news. Bill Wyman is getting married. Of the of the Rolling Stones. Yes, to Mandy Smith. Oh, really? Yes. That thirteen year old. The thirteen year old. Well, she he started dating her when she was thirteen. She's now nineteen. Hmm. And uh, apparently, there are rumors running rampant. You know, her family is saying that they're getting married. We have tape of her. Uh, that's why you guys brought in this tape, I guess. Yes. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. You're kidding. This is this 13-year-old, this little snotty, stuck-up, snooty <laughs> bitch who uh, we had on our show and wouldn't answer any of my questions. She apparently has never spoken about their relationship to the press. How oh, smart girl. This girl is beautiful. This girl is stunning. But she knows it. She was 13 years old living with Bill Wyman. Yeah. Who's 50, right? He's 51 now. Yeah. And when we interviewed her, what was she, 17? Yes, yeah, something like that, because it had to be a couple of years ago, right? Yeah. But she'd already learned that, you know, what a CT, okay? <laughs> I mean, she had already learned the ways of a CT. Oh, dear. Would you say she was a CT? She was a real, yeah, bitch. But her sister was also, was, remember she had her sister with her? Yeah. And was as awesome looking as she was and like only a year older. All right. So he says he's going to marry her. Well, listen to, uh, I don't know what you pull, what'd you pull off here. Just listen, you'll love it. All right. This is me trying to interview Bill Wyman's future wife. Mandy Smith, yeah. So what's the deal? You were dating Bill Wyman? Is that right? Yeah. Oh, did you hear that? That's what I heard. God. You... you know how uncomfortable I get when all of a sudden they act like this, because it's just like so embarrassing. <laughs> oh, is that right? Oh, you, you mean... And here's a guy who can get any woman he wants. I guess he just wants that, you know, that young stuff. <laughs> that, uh, uh, yeah, prepubescent stuff. Right. That hairless <laughs> stuff. Or <laughs> whatever. I tell you, get me guitar lessons because I'm in the wrong business. A 51 year old with a 17 year old. Sort of basically delivered by her parents. Glory to rock and roll. Any guy you ever see with a guitar in his hands, especially an ugly guy, you will know. She was born, and they took him over, took her over to Bill Wyman's. Yeah. <laughs> Bill, what can you do with her? <laughs> and the parents don't care, you know what? It is, but so anyway, the whole point of her being on our show in England was that she had been with Bill Wyman. I mean, even she at thirteen had to realize that, or she was seventeen at the time when we interviewed her. Well, she, she should have been smart enough by then to realize. Yeah, it. I mean, she should be embarrassed to come on a show and think that I could possibly think up another question to ask her. <laughs> she thought we were having her on because she was a, she had done some modeling, yeah. and she had a record, and we were playing her record. You know, we were we were playing her record, a horrible record. Because, you know, just to talk about Bill Wyman, and then we then we got stuck playing this record and getting no answers. We were all no. upset. Let me just hear the rest of this. You certainly don't seem your age, and you certainly hang around with the wrong people. If you hear that? Oh, come on, you can tell the truth. Yeah. When you were thirteen, you were going out with him. You're joking. Come on. Did you hear that? Yeah, I heard that. Of course, I heard that. Did you hear that? 
I hate English accents. <laughs> I hate them. You think they could drop them? Yeah, I think they can. I think it's just an annoying... Affect. Yeah. <laughs> you certainly hang around with the wrong people. Come around with me. Can we third this girl is too cute. But I can see, you know. Come round with me. Come round with me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not 51 years old and I'm not a rock star. You mean you hooked up with Bill Wyman? Oh, man. Your mother let you do that? Who said that? You must be an orphan. And she's being, she's smart. She's like kind of being coy on the air. Right. But she left there, man. She wanted nothing to do with us. And I loved it. I loved it. It gets a little bit better. Okay. It kind of builds. Yeah, I remember her getting progressively more annoyed. Because, right. you know, we, we asked her once or twice, and she kind of handled it cutely. And then it was like, okay, why is this and guy badgering me? And it's like she couldn't get the uh, she couldn't get the hint. Who said that? Where's your parents? Where's your father? Hey, look, that's Who's that other blonde business. you came in with? That's none of your business. Who's the blonde you came in with? <laughs> Who's that, your sister? That's right, it's my sister. That is your sister? Mm -hmm. How old is she? She's 19. Well, get her in here. I'll talk dirty to her. <laughs> <laughs> No, seriously, come on. How did you meet Bill Wyman? I'm curious. You said I met him. You were going out with him. What are you talking told about? You. I read it in your... I read it. You read it where? In the paper. And wh what papers? Well, you met him. You knew him. Yeah, right. Oh, I see. So you, you don't want to talk about it. That's right. Oh, man. <laughs> this is wrong guy, I suppose she's writing the book. <laughs> are you writing a book about it? Oh, come on. Let me tell <laughs> you Give something. me some credit, <laughs> Let me tell you something. Give me some credit? For what? I don't know what that means. What's the big deal? She's denying even knowing him. Yeah, it was embarrassing. It was just like, oh, what am I doing with this dumb <laughs> You know, sometimes I got to interview some real dummies. <laughs> and like, like, what? why show up at a radio station and put me through the misery of sitting and talking to you about uh, uh, modeling? And, and whoever saw her in a magazine? Not me. <laughs> Not in the magazines I read. At least Koo Stark was nice enough to say that if she came, she wouldn't talk about the royal family. Right, so and we said, no. don't, then we said, don't, don't show up. Come. No one wants to talk to you about some bad porno movie you once made. It wasn't even that good a porno movie. You didn't even do everything in it, honey. Who ever heard of a stuck-up broad in a porno movie? <laughs> oh, no, I don't do that. Jewish I don't porn. do that, and I don't do that. Jewish porn. Yeah. So, uh... So they're engaged. Koo Stark. Oh, I don't do that. What kind of porno movie is that? You gotta do it. <laughs> she makes an uh, interview with Kimberly Taylor, that penthouse pet, a dance in the park. <laughs> <laughs> see, I mean, why show up to a radio station? This is a classic dumbo. Why show up to a radio station when your claim to fame is sleeping with Bill Wyman and you won't talk about it, and then get annoyed with the interviewer when he asks you about it? He wouldn't stop, she said. Yeah. He, who, who is that man? He wouldn't stop. Oh, I'm just a man who had to get by on my brains for a living. I didn't have to. I didn't spread my legs at 13 for some rock star. Your legs become unglued at 13. What's to look forward to by the time you're 20? Well, she's lived a full life now. Yeah. She might as well like check out. She's handling herself like she's a 30 year old. For God's sakes. Yeah, she doesn't sound like a kid, does she? No, of course not. <laughs> with with uh, the ancient mariner, I'm Bill Wyman. <laughs> In fact, if she was coming on to you, I'd have taken that as an insult because yes. you must look old or something. Right. I didn't have a cr enough crow's feet. <laughs> Do you know how much money you could make if you wrote a book about being with Bill Wyman at 13? Is that right? You would make a fortune. Yeah. Let me represent you. I'll make a I can I'm trying to do something. I get her into it. Can't get her into it. You a book deal. <laughs> i tell you one thing. It's not worth my life. I've got so many more interesting things happening. Have you ever, oh, here's, oh, there was the rap about yeah. uh, we're I've ignoring. so many more things. That was her cue to me that, hey, ask me about other things. Right. Letterman? How did you meet him? Seriously, come on, answer my question. No. You want to tell private. me how you met him? No, I what do you mean private? What do you mean private? That's private. How did you meet Bill Wyman of the Rolling Stones? None of your business. It isn't. That's right. It's not. I'll I didn't ask you about your private life, do I? Go ahead, ask me a question. I don't want to. <laughs> ask me anything you I'm want. I'm not know. interested. Yes, you are. I am not. You want to know? I'm not. <laughs> Never met a guest who won't answer a question. <laughs> yeah, she was real annoyed with me. But you know, she was such a dumbo. I was annoyed. <sighs> and then we threw her out of there. I remember. We were, and then she was like mad because we threw her out of there and we never asked her a question about herself. But who cared? My well, audience. We did ask care. her questions about herself, herself and Bill Wyman. Yeah, well. <laughs> she didn't like that. How much life experience has she had at 13 that I could ask her other than the Bill Wyman story? Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty major experience. Yeah. And then I asked her about her parents and where were they during all this?
Because I've always wanted to uh, interview Priscilla's parents and oh, say, yeah. you know, hey, she was 14, you animal. How do you let her go to live with Elvis Presley? Yeah, how do you 14? sacrifice your daughter to Elvis? Because the guy can play the guitar? And pretty badly, actually. And you, you mean to tell me you would actually sacrifice your daughter to a guy who plays guitar? Were you tired of raising her at, at yeah. the time she was 14? So, yeah, you want her, take her. Was it too overwhelming? <laughs> I mean, you were that anxious to get rid of her? <laughs> you had seen enough, had enough, and done enough by yeah. then. <laughs> I would like to. Uh, I would like to have interviewed uh, Priscilla's parents. Oh yeah, because it's a fascinating story, and of course, this girl Mandy's parents. But I mean, you can't get a hold of them. No. I'd love to interview her mother. Bill Wyman was too old for her mother. B Bill Wyman is twelve years older than her mother. Really. See, he could have dated the mother, <laughs> but he's a little too old. <laughs> and That's What's Happening is signing off. Thanks for listening. And That's What's Happening continues tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. East on Howard 100, 6 a.m. Pacific on Howard 101, and online at SiriusXM.com. This has been a Howard Stern production. The Tapes. Get your truck on! Test